السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد All praise due to Allah We praise Him abundantly the way He deserves to be praised We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exalt the mention, grant peace, and send His blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, as you know, I've been, I've been in the field of da'wah for many years by Allah's grace and mercy. And I've been teaching aqidah for as many years as I have been in da'wah. And if anything... The aqeed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is something that I am well versed in, walillahi alhamd, and something that I have studied thoroughly, and something that I have taught thoroughly as well. And throughout the times and the days and the years, I've come across all types of individuals. And each individual requires a particular type of treatment. This new kid on the block, I don't know who he is, where he came from. Brother John, Zalla Khairan, had forwarded me this video, and I think a few other people also, uh, bring into my attention some of the problematic statements that this individual has made. And I went through his video, and I prepared a lengthy refutation, probably will be the longest video I intend on recording, insha'Allah ta'ala, because the amount of Deception and lies is painful. Now, to be fair to the brother, he is definitely more respectful than uh, most of the Ash'aris uh, and the Maturidis that I've come across. He's definitely more respectful, so we give him that. Jazakallah khairan wa ghafara lah. On the flip side though, he is also one of the most I don't know what term to use. Deceptive? It's a little tough. But he's surely one of the trickiest individuals I've seen. And if you don't have knowledge, you can easily be duped, deceived, and tricked by this individual with his selective quotations and misrepresentation of the Salaf and the way of the Salaf and Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So as part of defending the deen of Allah, enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil and exposing the people of bid'ah, wal dalal, wal ahwa, this video, inshallah ta'ala, serves to fulfill that purpose and objective. Begging Allah Azza wa Jal to make it reach wide and far and to deliver satisfaction and uh, uh, ease to the hearts of the Muslims who have been confused by individuals like him and many others who are very well versed in lying. As big as a word as it is, but as you will see and as I will display again and again in that hour 40 minutes of his, how many times he lies is painful. It's absolutely painful. And having a baby face and pretending to be sincere and supposedly wanting to follow the truth should not deceive you and should not trick you either. As I know you know better than that. Alakulihal, we don't want to turn this into a scuffle, but we know that whoever is seeking the truth sincerely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide that person to the truth. So if he's not willing to uh, comply and submit, then maybe the listeners who are truly sincere in finding the truth will. So I will play his video and I will respond to technically every point he makes. And I will highlight the double standards, the lies, the misquotations and the deception that he will 
involve himself in li literally from the first second of the video until the last. And to Allah we complain about the affair of the Muslims and that we even have to do something like this in this day and time. So without any further ado, let's see. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Salafis or the Salafiyyah or the Wahhabis or Wahhabiyyah or Ahlul Hadith. So we begin with this uh, common misconception that all of the deviant sects have agreed upon. Just like at the time of the Prophet وسلم, when they were the Kuffar of Quraysh and the Yahud of Al Medina and elsewhere and the Nasara of Najran and elsewhere, every time a person would become a Muslim, they would say, Saba'a Fulan, Fulan meaning left his religion, he became deviant. Fulan deviated. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, Bada al Islamu gariban wa sayaudu gariban kama bada. Islam began as something strange and it will go back to being strange just like it started. So one of the methodologies and approaches of the people of innovation and deviance is that they come up with titles and they call us by these titles which we ourselves do not even agree upon or do not acknowledge. At least they will invent additional terms. For example, Wahhabi. What is a Wahhabi? Tell this individual, I think his name is Umar or something. What is a Wahhabi? Are you really this ignorant? You don't know that Al-Wahhab is the name of Allah Jalla Jalalu Taqaddasat Asma'u? Are you really this silly that you will use one of the names of Allah and attach it to a, a group and call them by that, by that name? You're calling a group of Muslims by one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal because of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab? So if there was another Sheikh whose name was Muhammad bin Abdul Ghaffar, you would have called them Al Ghaffaris? Or Muhammad bin Abdul Majid, you would have called him Al Majidis. This, brothers and sisters, shows you that those individuals who claim to be protecting Allah from tashbih and protecting Allah from having a direction and protecting Allah from having a physical being are the people that are the least interested in actually respecting and venerating and honoring Allah Azza wa Jal the way He deserves. What is the matter with you? You have no honor and respect and veneration for Allah. Any Muslim on earth who calls another Muslim Wahhabi is by default an idiotic individual who does not even deserve to be given a microphone or a PC or a channel or nothing. This person should be put in a cage, uh, in a dungeon where he could learn Islam from scratch and then he should be allowed to go out and look at the sun and the moon and the clouds and say, okay, I apologize. I apologize for using such name. You're using the name of Allah Azza wa Jal in vain. This shows you the jahl, the ignorance, the compound ignorance that those individuals are in. So Wahhabi, Salafis, Ahlul Hadith, whatever, there's different names and titles to this group of people that came about a couple of hundred years ago. And a couple of hundred years ago. <laughs> Allah al -Azim. If anything, we follow the companions and the tabi'een, atba'a tabi'een, uh, all the way to, you know, uh, until today. So the fact that you're claiming and alleging and deceiving the people to think that we're only Wahhabis because of Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, as though... There wasn't scholars before him that taught exactly the same thing about Tawheed is one of the biggest lies that the Ash'aris have put forward. And people who don't have knowledge, they will believe them. And I wanted to talk specifically about their claim to be followers of the Qur'an, Sunnah and Salaf. And this is something you'll commonly hear them say. That, Ya Akhi, we follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, upon the understanding of the rightly guided generations after the Prophet wasallam. This is something you'll commonly hear them say. And because of that, I need to make it extremely clear before I say anything, that we don't have a problem with following the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Salaf. Uh, or upon the... Un you don't have a problem? You claim that you don't have a problem. You have every problem with the, the uh, way of the Salaf. So uh, the, the Ash'aris and the deviant sects in general, because these Ash'aris are really Jahmis. They're really a manifestation of the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila uh, with a different flavor and different color. But regardless, 
All of them make that claim. Oh, we don't have a problem. Even the Shia. The Shia will tell you, MashaAllah, Quran, Sunnah, Sahaba, yeah. Select Sahaba. Nevertheless, we follow the Sahaba. They will follow select Sahaba that they have chosen. Everybody makes that claim and everybody claims that they have no problem. But words are cheap. Words are cheap. Forget about you claiming that you don't have a problem. We will prove how you have every problem with the way of the Salaf understanding of the Salaf al-Salih and in fact every single Muslim who is an adherent to Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah right should be following the Quran and Sunnah and Salaf and this is something you know it's incumbent upon every single Muslim to do so however the problem is in the understanding of the statements of the Salaf just as it is in the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah what I mean by this is when they say we and we say also when we say that we follow the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, it's because some verses of the Quran and some ahadith may have more than one meaning to them. So we take the, the, the rightly guided generation after the Prophet ﷺ and his own generation and their understanding of those verses to understand them correctly uh, and to take one meaning over another meaning. Wait. Now, what happens when these... No, guys, check this out. First of all, it is well known that Ash'aris and Maturidis love to claim that they follow the Salaf while by Allah they don't. You will see throughout this video that this brother will fail in quoting a single companion. He will not quote a single companion or a tabi'i or one of the atba'u tabi'in. Yani neither sahabi nor a tabi'i nor from atba'u tabi'in. He will resort to quoting Ash'aris the whole time or people he will try to deceive you into thinking they are Atharis while in fact they are maybe Hanbalis. And Hanbali does not equate Athari. A person can be Hanbali and follow and still deviate in a matter of Aqidah or Fiqh. This is all he has to substantiate his innovative deviant belief. Now, he claims that the way of the Salaf is applied due to some verses have multiple meanings. Like really? This is why we follow the way of the Salaf. The way of the Salaf is applied due to some verses having multiple meanings. That is an unsubstantiated claim. The way of the Salaf is because the Prophet ﷺ praised them. مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي Whomever Allah intends goodness for, He will give him understanding, fiqh of this deed. Then he's, and he also said, والسلام, الناس, قرني, The best of people is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ so if they are the khair of the people and whoever Allah intends goodness for, He gives them, whoever Allah intends khair for, He gives them understanding of the religion, so they understood the religion the most. So if you want to substantiate, I can actually destroy the entire Ash'ari Madhab and the entire Maturidi Madhab by asking you two basic questions. Was the Prophet ﷺ Ash'ari? Were the Sahaba Ash'aris? When did the Imam uh, uh, Al-Ash'ari come? and establish this aqidah that you follow now and how could that have been the aqidah of the Prophet ﷺ and the aqidah of the Sahaba? Do you understand how ludicrous that is? To claim that all of them were lost and confused until Abu, As uh, Abu Hassan Ash'ari came about and he laid down his principles which happened to be philosophical which he happened to depend from. <laughs> like that is really, uh, that if I just said that and stopped the video right now it would be enough. Wallahi it would be enough because you could never claim with your mouth that the Ash'ari is the way of the Prophet ﷺ or the way of the Sahaba or the Tabi'een. And that's why you will not be able to quote a single one of them this entire video of yours. You will be quoting people that came way after. Way after. And what is it that the Ash'aris are famous for? They're famous for favoring intellect over intellectual evidence. They give precedence to the, the Aql over the Naql. They use their mind to assess the, the uh, evidence. If the evidence according to their feeble minds is illogical, it doesn't add up in their little brains because they cannot help but thinking that Allah is like His creation, then want to save Allah from being like His creation. So they fall into the tashbih that they are criticizing us of. And then they wind up falling into ta'til and tahrif, which is denying and distorting the meanings of the ayat. As you will see in another video I saw of him just recently responding to someone. He claims that the hadith about the nuzul of Allah, the descent of Allah Azza wa Jal, is, is, is referring to an angel. <laughs> Where did you get that from? Where did Prophet ﷺ say that? Nowhere. This is how you deny the Quran and the Sunnah and, and the way of the Salaf and come up with your own invention. Why? Because you're using your brain. In your brain, you're thinking, you know, every minute 
somewhere in the world is the last third. So according to this logic, you're, you're applying the physical laws that Allah created on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the laws that Allah created do not apply to him. And Allah is not like his creation. Therefore your whole paradigm is bogus. Your whole paradigm is distorted. Your whole paradigm is deviant. Because you're trying to understand Allah Azza wa Jal the same way you understand the creation of Allah. And we Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah say no. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ There's nothing like unto him. There's nothing co-equal to him. Therefore we don't understand Allah and we don't apply those limitations on Allah Azza wa Jal because he is unlike his creation. Something y'all can't do. And not only that, they will reject a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim if it opposes their logic. Imagine to what point the Ash'aris are deviant. A hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the famous hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of the Jariyah, the slave girl, who points to the sky and says that Allah Azza wa is fis sama, they will reject that hadith. And they will claim, we will come to that later, inshallah. I don't want to uh, get ahead of myself. Type. Salaf make a statement that holds the possibility of more than one meaning. They can hold two meanings or three meanings. What happens when that's the case? Who do we go to to understand the statements of the Salaf such that we can say that we, under, that we are following in the footsteps of the Salaf of Salih? This is where the problem comes. Now, in order to answer this, I want to make um, a few points. The first point is the preservation of the Quran is the same way the Hadith has been preserved and the same way that Islam as a whole has been preserved for, for over 1,400 years. That preservation of the Quran is mentioned in the Quran itself where Allah says inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun that we have revealed the book Allah saying that he revealed the Quran and he takes it upon himself to protect the Quran now what is the method by which Allah protected the Quran and preserved the Quran all this time that same method is actually the same method by which uh, the hadith literature and the statements of the Prophet wasallam have been preserved and that exact same method is how the correct understanding of the statements of the Salaf al-Salih have been preserved. When the student sits with the teacher and says, I learned X, Y, and Z from my teacher. And I learned that from my teacher. And he learned it from his teacher all the way back to the, uh, the, the scholar that they're taking from. So well, See, he cannot say, he cannot say all the way. <laughs> I'm telling you, this brother will expose himself so many times. He will be forced to twist his words and carefully select them in order because because as a as a deviant as a de as a rejecter of the truth you have so many hurdles and so many thorns that you have to avoid during your path you're forced to avoid so many things to justify your deviance that you are you will you cannot it is very similar to the the claim of the disbelievers that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote the quran or that he, he, he came up with the Qur'an on his own. And we respond to them by saying, over the path, over the, 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 the span of 23 years, it is impossible for you not to contradict yourself, to be consistent and coherent the whole time. So the, the, those people, they don't have that confidence that we have. We don't have to duck and avoid and you know, shun anything in our path and, and our explanation, our principles, they do. That's why you see him selecting words so that he doesn't dig his own grave. But because we know what's going on, we know what's behind the scenes, we know what these people come from, how they think, we will be able to expose those, those, uh, uh, the shovels and the holes that they are planting for themselves, that they are digging for themselves, I'm sorry, before we bury them in them. So look, look now, he's saying, you know, that's how it's preserved. From this scholar to this scholar. To, he cannot say from the Sahabi because no Sahabi taught what the Ash'ari Aqidah teaches. <laughs> Plain and simple. No Sahabi taught what the Ash'ari Ash Aqidah. So he had to stop. Second of all, he's using this ayah. This ayah is actually a refutation against him. The Ash'ari Aqidah is a direct negation of the ayah. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. By you asserting that up until Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari and Ibn Maudud al-Maturidi, the belief of the Muslims was not preserved and available to the common people is absurd. It's absolutely absurd. So to claim that until those two came along, 
there was no proper preservation because whatever they are, whatever they will say is not in line with the Sahaba. They don't have a Sahabi to quote to justify what they're saying. No Sahabi said to the Prophet ﷺ, what do you mean by the last third of the night that Allah descends to the lowest heaven? What do you mean by the hand of Allah? What do you mean by the eyes of Allah? What do you mean by the face of Allah? They never had this discussion. They accepted them as they are. Who has this philosophical discussion? They do. They will give you a distorted interpretation that they come up with on their own. So this is a direct, direct negation of the ayah. So I ask you, find me a place where a Sahabi said Allah is not in a place. Isn't this your aqidah? Your aqidah is, you say, no, we, we're not, Allah is not above the throne physically. Allah himself, his essence is not above the throne. That's what they believe. They deny that, uh, that Allah is above the throne. They accept the word, but they say there's no meaning. Right? The, the words have no meaning. So, they, so basically Allah Azzawajal's speech is in vain. Allah's speech does not deliver any useful information according to them. Because there's, you, you cannot say the meaning behind it. Affirming the meaning makes the appearance of the Quran kufri. يعني أقسم بالله another level of junoon. على كل حال, find me a single sahabi who said the word Allah is not in a place which is something that you guys say comfortably day in and day out. يلا let's شوف. Or find me a sahabi who said Allah is not a physical being. Also, you are refuting yourself. If the meaning is not preserved, then what is the use? If the meaning is not preserved, then what is the use? So all your tafweed is in vain because that is exactly what your belief is about. Just contradiction. You know, the authors of different, you know, great books from the past, the Salaf al Salih, the, even the Sahaba, you have the chains of narration, etc. And it goes, you know, essentially all back to the Prophet. So, this method of preservation is how the Ummah and how Islam has been preserved. And one thing I'll say is that Allah says He'll protect and preserve the Quran. What use and benefit is there in protecting the wording of the Quran if the correct meaning of the Quran got lost? So, if the meanings and the correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah got lost, then the Quran itself has not been preserved. So that means that the that exactly they did not get lost. They've always been there. And you claiming that the uh, that Abu Hassan al Ash'ari and Ibn Maudud al Maturidi had to come around to establish for you the principles of belief is suggesting that whatever Allah revealed was not preserved in those early generations. By this verse itself. That means that the correct understanding of the Qur'an and Sunnah will also be preserved. Now, the second point that I want to make is you'll always hear the Salafis when they try and you know, bring their ideas and they try and back it up with scholars saying, look, this scholar from this generation said this and that scholar said that. They mention scholars, famously, they mention scholars of hadith, scholars who specialized in hadith, muhaddithin. Now, take this example before I clarify my point. When you go to university and you apply for a course in biology, you're taking a course in biology. Your professor is going to be someone who specialized in biology, isn't it? When you take a course in mathematics, your professor is going to be a mathematician, is it not? Right? You take the field from those who specialized in the field. You take knowledge of that field from those who specialized in the field. The same goes with Islamic sciences. When we're talking about uh, you know, hadith and tafsir and fiqh and there's different, you know, all the fields within Islamic sciences, we're going to take each field from those who are specialized in that field. So if we're talking about the grading of a hadith or, you know, the, the ruling of a person or the biography of a person or, uh, the, you know, the life of such and such person, you take that from the muhaddith, no problem. If you're going to take the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, take it from that person who specialized in the field. Now who is... Now this is, this is very pathetic, wallahi. This is another, see, look, I'm, I'm gonna, just somebody count, somebody count the number of uh, d d deceiving uh, claims and statements that this brother will make through, throughout the entire video. So he's making it seem as though there is no such thing as a faqih who's a muhaddith or a muhaddith who's a faqih. He's making it seem as though we take our aqidah from muhaddith who is ignorant of fiqh who is ignorant of Islam, his only job is like a, a database. To him, he's treating the muhaddith as a database where he collects a hadith without any understanding of the hadith. And because we're taking our ilm and our deen and our aqidah from someone who is merely a muhaddith, this means by default we have been disqualified from the proper understanding because there's another group of people who are the fuqaha, or those are the only ones who understand, as though we have nothing to do with them. So this is a lie. 
And he claims that we take from the muhaddithin as though we restrict that. Please provide evidence for that. Provide evidence that the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, us, not you, because you're not Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as I will prove, inshaAllah ta'ala, eventually. Provide evidence, you as an Ash'ari, provide evidence that we Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, or call us the Salafis, let's just call us Salafis to make life easier for you for now, that we only take from muhaddithin. Who said that? Where and when? Who said that we only take from muhaddithin? What about uh, Imam Ahmad, Imam Ishaq, Wal Bukhari, Wal Shu'ba, Wal Qatada, Imam Al Sufyanin, Wa Sufyan Al Thawri, Imam Malik, Wal Shu'ba, Sa'id Al Musayyib, Wa Ayyub Al Sakhtiani. All these people, all these people that we take knowledge from, you're going to categorize them under one? One category of people and ignore all the ulama. You're going to ignore the aqidah of the four imams also, which you will also lie against to claim that they were ash'ari or, 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 or soft towards ash'aris. That is very cunning. And not only that, you're belittling the muhaddithin. Even though you will say that you're not belittling, you're actually belittling the muhaddithin and you're pushing the, the people away from them. We specialized in the field of understanding the Quran and Sunnah. That is the fuqaha. The fuqaha are the jurists, and their job was to understand. It come, you know, the word faqih comes from faquha, which means to understand, to have the correct understanding. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi din." That whoever Allah wishes or intends good for. He gives him the correct understanding of the religion. So uh, the, word, uh, the point is that the wording here is يفقهه. He, he gives him the correct understanding. Faqih comes from faquha, which means to understand. So the job of the muhaddith is uh, to grade the hadith, to tell you whether it's fabricated, to judge between this and that, to, uh, to know the biographies of the people, to memorize the isnad. His job was memorizing the matan of the hadith and the chain of names. He, he, he is the one who decides the job of the people. So he already decided the job of the muhaddith. This is your job. You memorize, you declare the hadith sahih, da'if, mawdu' ila akhiri. Malak alaqa bi shaytani. As if there was no people like Shaykh al-Sahab ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyya, and Imam ibn Kathir. All of these were fuqaha and muhaddithin and everything under the sun. And udaba. And they knew, the, they, they knew all the sciences of Islam. As though Imam ibn Baz rahimahullah was not a muhaddith and a faqih. As though Imam al-Albani was not a muhaddith and a faqih. This is even in modern times, let alone back in the day. So this is really, really low. It's a really low blow. And I'm, I feel very sad for your gullible followers or the gullible Ash'aris, the, those ignorant people that don't know Arabic, don't know how to research, don't know how to verify, and they just take your word for it and they believe you. I really feel sad and sorry for them. May Allah make it easy for them and guide them to the truth and save them from this deception. Narration back to the Prophet ﷺ. This was the job of the muhaddith. The job of the faqih is to take from the muhaddith. The muhaddith said that this hadith is authentic. So because this hadith is authentic, this is how we're going to understand it. In line with the principles that will allow for uh, a non-contradictory understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. So you'll notice that the, the, the four madhabs, the Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki and Hanbali madhabs of fiqh, they don't have contradictions within them. Why? Because they all follow the, a set of principles a set of principles that's unique to each one that allows for the understanding of some hadith over other hadith and allows for the understanding of hadith to be in line with the Qur'an. For example, the Qur'an says, wash over your feet for wudu. But the Prophet ﷺ wiped over his socks. So in the hadith, there, it seems, you know, on the apparent, there's a contradiction there. However, the scholars, you know, in, their, in part of their principles, they've derived, uh, you know, the way by which we understand the, the, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where it's not actually contradicting the Qur'an. Now, all of that being said, this was the job of the faqih. The job of the faqih is to look at all of the verses, to know, you know, the history of when each verse was revealed, to know... Uh, you know, the language of the Arab so that he understands and gets a complete and comprehensive understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. So when we say that the scholars of Islam have agreed on a certain type of aqidah, aqidah is all from the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. So when we say the scholars of Islam have under agreed on the understanding of a certain aqidah, we're talking about the scholars who are specialized in that field. Because... Who what is, what is this? When did the scholars ever agree on the Ash'ari Aqeedah? How in the world can you say that? How in the world do you have the audacity? Ya Akhi Umar, Kaif Billah Alek, Kaif Ma Tistihi Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi Ma Fiq Shwayit Hayat, Wala Shayt Qaleel, 
تستحي من الله عز وجل أولا ثم تستحي من الناس على الكذب والافتراء أي 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 اتفاق وأي agreement وأي unanimous agreement about the عقيدة that came hundreds of years after the صحابة يعني بالله عليك والله عيب يا أخي والله عيب ما يجوز يا أخي ما يجوز الضحك على الناس والكذب والافتراء والبهتان كله حرام تسأل عنه يوم القيامة يا أخي عيب والله what are you talking about what agreement because and this is no disrespect this is no disrespect no to the dis- muhaddith it is all the disrespect to the muhaddith because you're saying right now that you're selecting only the fuqaha and you're taking and you're claiming that they all agreed and wallahi by allah they never agreed on what whatever you're claiming and you're saying that those are the people from whom you take aqidah because the muhaddith is a is an absolute useless individual who has one job where he's useful and that is to uh, grade the hadith for you to study the hadith and the matin and the sanad uh, according to you actually not even the matin because if he's not a faqih why would he even discuss the matin he should leave also the matin of the hadith to the faqih so you're completely completely dismantling and and disregarding the muhaddithin even though it is known that the muhaddithin are the most senior and the most praiseworthy in terms of scholarship in terms of scholarly works in Islam. And then you say, oh, I'm not being disrespectful. Please. Or the great scholars of hadith of our past. There's no disrespect to them because it's the same as me saying to, a, you know, say for example, I have a professor in mathematics and he's a mathematician. He gives his opinion on, bio- on biology. He gives his opinion on something. And, you know, me being a biologist, I will say that's inaccurate. Uh, that, uh, that's inaccurate. And I'll tell people, don't listen to him. Uh-huh. So basically, according to him, the faqih says that, uh, the, the muhaddith says this should be the right aqidah because that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. That's what the hadith said. The faqih, who according to him, will be the ash'aris who will put their intellect before the hadith. They will say, no, no, no. I am an expert more than you. You don't know what you're talking about. Even though you're taking your aqidah from the hadith, I'm telling you this hadith will be overridden by my intellect. So the intellect of the faqih, the ash'ari faqih, is, is given precedence and importance and preference over the very words of the Qur'an and the very words of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If you can ever be more deviant than this, then tell me how. How could you be more deviant than this? How is that not muhaddatin lillahi wa rasulih? How are you not opposing Allah and His Messenger by, by allowing a jurist to judge and disregard the explicit uh, uh, apparent meanings of the Quran and the Sunnah. Don't listen to him when he's telling you about biology because he's not specialized in that field. That's not his specialty. Listen to him when it comes to mathematics. Take from him when it comes to mathematics. Why? Because that's his specialty. So when I tell people that, am I disrespecting the mathematician? Yes, you are. Yes, when you tell the people don't take from him, you're disrespecting the mathematician because that mathematician would not have spoken about the matter of biology unless he knew what he was talking about. And that's, it, that's the, the failure of your analogies. You're comparing some, some teacher in school and you're failing in understanding that the muhaddith is qualified and capable. He's capable of discussing matters of aqidah and matters of fiqh and matters of uh, understanding of the deen. He's not just a muhaddith. It's the biggest lie I've ever heard. That all the muhaddiths, Imam Ahmad has the musnad of Imam Ahmad. And he was a faqih of the highest order <laughs> to the point that there's a madhab named after him. And he's a muhaddith. So how? How? What kind of lie is this man? Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, all of them had knowledge. Maybe Imam Abu Hanifa was the least in terms of their knowledge of hadith. All the other ones had their own collections of hadith. And they were fuqaha. But you know, lying goes a long way. Not with us though. I'm not disrespecting him. I'm simply saying that this was not his, you know, maybe there's something that he misunderstood. Maybe there's something that he missed. Maybe he didn't get a comprehensive understanding because this was not his field. MashaAllah alayk, MashaAllah alayk. Ata'an, ata'an fi ha'ula, ata'an fi ha'ula. Hisabuka inda rabbik. He didn't dedicate his life to specializing in this field. He dedicated his life to specializing in mathematics. Now, now that that is, that is, you know, clear and clarified, when you see the Salafis, you know, trying to prove their positions and say, look, such and such scholars said this, the majority of who they quote is scholars of hadith. Liar. 
Rabbil Kaaba, you're a liar. Ya akhi, wallah, I'm sorry that I have to treat you this way, but I am, I am disgusted by the amount of lies that you will utter throughout this video. You lie against us like you're having tea, and every sip is a lie. And you will drink 15 liters of this tea, lying constantly from the beginning of the video till the end. So we base our aqidah only on muhaddithin. The aqidah which we get from Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, uh, from Zainab, from Muawiyah, and all these ahadith that speak about the sifat of Allah azza wa jal, and they, they took them as they were and they didn't delve into them, and we take them as they are, we don't delve into them. You're claiming that we don't take from any of those, we only take from muhaddithin. The four imams were muhaddithin, they were not fuqaha. And all those scholars who followed them in righteousness, they were not muhaddith, they were not uh, muhaddithin, they were only muhaddithin, that's all we took our deen from? Lies. Lying is haram. And the person will continue to lie until he is written with Allah as a kadab. And you know where that leads. They don't quote from scholars of the field, they don't quote from people who are specialized in that. I will prove to you, inshallah, in this video who we will quote and how they are the very much specialized people in this science. Don't believe this brother. Field, which is why when I go through this video inshallah and we're going to talk about what, what it means to say the majority of the ummah of the Prophet وسلم, is Ash'ari and Maturidi or Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the majority of the scholars or the majority of the, of the ummah has been Ash'aris. Means they agreed. The fuqaha whom we should be taken from agreed. He will not present a single agreement in this entire video of his, as you will see. Not one agreement. See now, look, pay attention to the words. Now he's telling you they agreed. The scholars agreed that it's the Ash'ari way. It's a unanimous agreement of the fuqaha. Not once will he, will he bring a single ijma'. He will not quote a single ijma' throughout this whole video. He will literally quote all the Ash'ari scholars that he could get pull up from his little research and claim that this is the ijma', not one ijma'. So I, I challenge you to bring the ijma'. As he's making it seem as though the Salafis, quote unquote, they, they were non-existent. They were like sidelined, like, oh, you don't even count. Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah is us, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, and you guys are just clowns. We don't even, we don't even acknowledge you. So when we make an ijma', uh, uh, it counts as an ijma' for the ummah. Ya akhi uksum billah aib ya captain or uh, you know, has followed a specific set of aqidah principles, what it means to say that is that the majority of the scholars who were specialized in the field of understanding the Qur'an and Sunnah, they have agreed on these principles. That's a lie, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, that's a lie. Where is the ijma'? Bring us the ijma' that those scholars have agreed on those principles in aqidah. Where is this ijma' that you are alleging? al bayyinatu ala man idda'a. The, the proof, the burden of proof is upon the claimant. Bring your proof if you are truthful. Where is this ijma'? And those are the people who we should be taking from. Now, the last point that I want to mention before we get into the actual video, the last point, which is extremely important, is I'm going to give the example first before I clarify. So suppose you are injured and you're in critical condition and you're in a hospital right now okay you're in the hospital you're in you know the emergency room you're in critical condition and you're you, you're about to die somehow you have enough time to and, and you're wealthy enough to call 20,000 doctors who are all specialized in uh you know in uh, performing surgery for example okay you call all of these doctors and they're all in front of you and every cringe alert Cringe alert. By the way, this is the most irritating analogy you will probably ever hear in your life. Bear with me. I had to hear it too. I was hoping, I don't know. I was hoping sometimes the electricity would go out so that I don't have to hear this, this absolutely useless analogy. But this is typical Ash'ari intellect. They think that they are uh, geniuses and they, they think that they have, they have it going on when, when these are like among the most pathetic examples that someone can give. But bear with me before I refute it. Bear with me single one of them does an analysis you know they, they do a whole you know check up on your body and they say you have a problem with your liver and if we don't operate on your liver and give you a transplant you're gonna die 
Okay, your liver is going to rupture and it's, it's, you know, you're going to die. So this is what 20,000 doctors who are all specialized in their field are saying that the problem is in your liver. So we need to do a transplant. And then comes one person who's not specialized in the field. And he comes and says, no, the problem is not in your liver. The problem is in your lungs. So you and know then what you have another say. person who comes say and say says right it's now, not sorry. in your lungs. He's trying to say right now that the 20,000 uh, 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 doctors who are specialized in, uh, specialized in surgery are all the Ash'ari scholars. And this one or 10 or 200 or 100 are the Salafis, right? Mustafa, go to your mom, please. Go to Atif, please. Thank you, Baba. It's in your back. And another person comes and says it's actually in your heart. And another person says that this, and another person says that. And all these people, a bunch of different people are coming and saying different things. And then suppose you have 30 people. Let's say 30. Let's even say 50. Let's even say 100. 100 people come to you and say the problem is not in your liver. The problem is in your kidneys, right? So they, you know, 100 people agreed on a different problem. However, you have 20,000 in front of you, and let's, we could even say 50,000 doctors who are you know, actually specialized in, in their fields, and uh, they're all saying that your problem is in your liver. Who are you going to trust when it's your life at hand, right? When it's your life, when it's a life and death situation, who are you going to trust with your body? You're going to trust the 20,000 and any... Okay, so this is the classical deception method by, of the Ash'aris. By claiming that the belief of the Atharis is based on small minority of scholars who happen to be muhaddithin with no fiqh. With no fiqh. How will you stand before Allah with such a false statement? Where are the 20,000 Ash'ari faqihs from the Salaf? You claiming there's 20,000 versus 10, 100, 200 of the uh, muhaddithin or the, uh, the Salafis. Where are those 20,000 Ash'ari faqis of the, from the Salaf when you will literally quote the same five to six scholars the entire video? You'll just quote them multiple times and multiple occasions with multiples, even sometimes the same statement because you don't have a pool of useful information to refer to. Anyways. Same person would trust the 20,000 doctors who are all, you know, top level uh, surgeons and they, they've all studied for so long and they, and they all come to an agreement every single one of them performed their own independent analysis on your body and they've all checked you independently and they all said that you have a problem in your liver you are going to trust them and b the reason why you're going to trust them is because you're in a life and death situation you're about to die if you don't listen to one of those opinions you're going to die and so you're going to say my best bet is with all of these super qualified scholars. Yeah, where are, the, where are all these super qualified scholars? Where are they? Where are these super qualified scholars that you're referring to? And what about all the other scholars who don't agree with the Ash'ari Aqeedah and the Maturidi Aqeedah? Where are they? And how come you're dismissing them? Why are you making the people feel as though they're non-existent? Why are you making the people feel as though they're non-existent? Independent conclusions and minds, they all have independent conclusions and minds, really? The Ash'aris all have independent conclusions and minds, they all follow the same principles. This is a calamity by Allah. Right? Scholars in medicine, with all of them saying that it's my liver, most likely it is my liver, so we're going to do the liver transplant and you're going to trust them and you're going to go with it. Why? Because this is your life at hand and you don't want to die. Okay, that's your physical life. What about your spiritual life? What about Jannah and Jahannam? What about the afterlife? What about when it comes to your deen and it comes to your religion? Why are you going to reject the majority of the scholars who have independent conclusions and independent minds? And Where are the majority of the scholars? Where are the majority of the scholars that have independent conclusions and minds? And also, so those, those scholars that you're referring to, they figured out what the companions did not? So you're claiming that the companions failed in figuring out those matters and it, we had to wait 300 years plus or 200 years plus for uh, Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari to come around and laid, uh, who was actually, he was first not even an Ash'ari, he was a Mu'tazili before he repented and changed his ways and I will d delve into that later on. So you're claiming that we had, the, the Sahaba didn't have it figured out? You're saying that those scholars who give precedence to their intellect over the revelation, this is deviance in essence. This is the essence of deviance.
And where is this unanimous agreement that you keep claiming? And speaking on that, you can see from just one madhab, the Hanafi madhab, for example, Imam Abu Hanifa, Abu Yusuf, Muhammad, and Imam Zufar. You have these, these great scholars within the Hanafi madhab, right? The, some of the top scholars of the early Hanafi madhab, and they all, some, some of them, they all disagreed with each other. They, they were still considered part of you know, the Hanafi madhab, but they all had their own individual disagreements. Why is that the case? It's because every single scholar had an independent mind of their own. There's no such thing as, you know, a bunch of different scholars adhering to one madhab for only political reasons. Okay? What are you what are you even what are you even waffling right now? What are you even waffling? You're con you're literally contradicting yourself and the very statements that you're making. First you're trying to claim that they all agreed. And now you're saying even the Hanafi and the students, Imam Abu Hanifa and the students did not agree. They all had these differences they, they all, because they, there's no such thing as everybody coming in an agreement for a political reason. That is contradiction. Now you just finished saying that there was a unanimous agreement and all of these scholars, the 20,000 agreed on Al-Aqidah and you're going to uh, accept 100 uh, opposing opinions? Okay. Be consistent. This didn't happen. When you're a scholar and you dedicate your life to Islam and you believe something is correct, you stand up for that thing. And this is what the great scholars of the past have done. So anyhow, when you have each and every scholar differing with each other on things that they believe are true, it shows that they had an independent mind. So now what that means is when they differ on each other and all these different things and then on one thing, they all come to a unanimous agreement. It Where is the unanimous agreement? Talk, talk about taking things lightly. Where is this unanimous agreement? I challenge you and you, you should not be allowed to record a single video refuting anybody or talking about anything until you substantiate this claim of yours about this unanimous agreement. If you cannot bring forward this ijma', then by Allah you are a liar, you are a kathab, you are a kathib and a kathab and everybody should hold you accountable for this allegation that you have put forward. Nobody should take you seriously, nor listen to you, nor acknowledge anything you say until you substantiate this claim of yours with evidence. Bring the proof with the numbers. The numbers you are alleging about this majority, the 20,000 Ash'aris, it's a, it's a, I know it's a, a random number that you came up with, but nevertheless, you're making it seem as though it's 99% to 1. The ratio is 99 to 1. Like the Ash'aris versus the, the Muhaddithin is like 99. Bring the evidence for that. Bring the evidence for that. Otherwise, you're just, you're just, you're claiming a unanimous agreement and you're deceiving your miskeen followers and Allah will ask you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah for this lie. Mark my words and remember what I'm telling you. Puts some heavy weight to that thing. That how is it that every single one of them had their own brain, looked at the Quran and Sunnah, understood it, you know, on their, in their own mind, understood it, and they all came to the exact same conclusion. Except if that conclusion is correct. This is the exact same way all those doctors performed the independent analysis and they came to that conclusion. So when it comes to your physical life and your, your, your life and death situation, you trust the 20,000 scholars over the few you know, hundred that are, are there you know, presenting different ideas and, and differing opinions saying that it's something else. You'll trust the 20,000 there, but when it comes to the deen, uh, people don't trust the, the majority of the scholars, especially the majority of the scholars who have specialized in the field of understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. So, because there's no such thing. Otherwise, everybody would have believed you. And now, Salafiya is prevalent and is, is dominant and is spreading and is, is giving you guys a hard time and sleepless nights because even the, the revert to Islam in his natural fitrah chooses Salafiya over Ash'ariya. The average revert is a Salafi by default in terms of Aqidah. And I'm using this term as an adjective, not as a pro pronoun. Not as a proper noun, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to divide and create sectarianism like you guys like to. You know, Ash, I'm an Ash'ari, I'm a Maturidi, I'm a Tablighi Jama'at. يعني هذا هبل اسمه. هذا اسمه هبل وتفرقة. وهذا شيء مذموم في الدين. Allah Azza wa Jal criticized. So I'm not for the names. I'm not for the names. But the, the average revert is upon the sound Aqidah that is instilled in his fitra. It is you people who are waffling around all the time. Yet you claim that there's a numbers. You have the numbers. So naturally you will save yourself. Nobody's saving anything with this nonsense of yours. This point has to be extremely clear. That the majority of the scholars is, uh, is something that is solid. It holds some serious weight to it. The majority of the scholars is something solid. 
the majority of the scholars is something solid. Very nice words, mashallah. Where are the majority of the scholars? No one knows. Uh, when it comes to um, an independent agreement, especially to do with things like aqidah, uh, to do with things with belief and especially when it comes from scholars who are specialized in the field and to this I want to mention a few different ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. and this will be the first the beginning of the first part of the video where I'm going to mention these different ahadith and I'll put them up on the screen over here so let me just make some space for that there we go okay the first hadith here is narrated by Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu where he says that the Prophet ﷺ said and I'm only going to recite the English because if I recite the Arabic and the English it's just going to take double the time for no reason so I'll recite the English. He says, Whoever separates from the majority by even a hand span has removed the noose of Islam from around his neck. This is self explanatory hadith. Listen to this. Uh, here's, uh, this is lie number four, five, six. I, I, I lost count. I'm, I'm counting on you to, to count the lies. He says, This is a self explanatory hadith. The hadith of Abu Dhar is actually quoted in the context of refuting the Khawarij. As the hadith in its context is speaking about obeying the ruler and not going against him. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَنَا آمُرُكُمْ بِخَمْسِ And I command you with five. Allahu amarani bihinna. Allah had commanded me regarding them. As-sam'u wa-ta'a. Listening to the ruler. Wa-ta'a and obeying. Wal-jihad and fighting in the cause of Allah. Wal-hijratu and migration wal-jama'a. And the group, the main group, the main body of Muslims. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةِ Because whoever separates from the jama'ah, qayda shibr, even if it's a hand span, فَقَدْ قَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنُقِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يُرَاجِعَ Then he has removed the, uh, uh, the hold of Islam from his neck, and we know this is the thing that is put around the animals as it will be explained. So he is actually quoting a hadith, quoting part of the hadith, to make you feel that whoever separates from the jama'ah, look at this, look at this wickedness. So the jama'ah to him is al-Ash'aris and the Maturidis, whom he says, yani, there's a small difference between them. So if you are a Sunni Salafi, you are, the hadith now applies to you. That you are separating from the jama'ah, so you're removing Islam basically from your neck. While the hadith is speaking about the people who fight against the ruler, because the hadith is telling you that you have to listen and obey. Listen and obey to who? Fight with who? Hijra to who? Jama'ah of who? <laughs> but he, these people, man, astaghfirullah, this, is not, this will be his first. He will have another 15, 20 incidents like this one. Weak hadith, misquotation, part of the quotation, anything, whatever is convenient to de deceive you into thinking that the Ash'aris are the dominant group in Islam. The noose of Islam is around your neck and when you leave yeah, the, the majority, you remove you that noose. Right? You remove that noose. In other words, you separate and, and step away from Islam. Okay. Another hadith is narrated by Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu where he says that the Prophet sallallahu said that verily shaitan is a wolf to mankind like the wolf of a herd. He takes the loner and the one who wanders and goes astray and goes to different, uh, goes different ways and differs, right? And he says that uh, beware of branching paths, different, you know, differing uh, sects within Islam. And he says, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْجَمَاعَةِ وَالْعَمَّةِ Weak hadith alert, weak hadith. By the way, the Ash'aris will reject a Sahih hadith. They will reject a Sahih hadith that is a hadith of Ahad. And they will accept a weak hadith that supports their, their deviance and their whims. So he is, has no problem quoting a weak hadith, doesn't even tell you the grading of the hadith, doesn't tell you anything what the scholars, even the Ash'ari scholars, if they had studied this hadith, if they have a grading on it, he will never mention that to you. So he will quote a number of weak hadith. By the way, I want to go back. The previous hadith which he mentioned, even if it were referring to what he's claiming, the hadith of the noose of Islam, then it really applies to the Ash'aris first. Because the main body, the jama'ah, when this hadith was made by the Prophet ﷺ, when this hadith was said by the Prophet ﷺ, is referring to the Sahaba. It was referring to the Sahaba. And the Ash'aris have actually left the Jama'ah of the Sahaba and came up with a religion on their own, a belief of their own, aqidah of their own. So this hadith applies to them before anyone else. This second hadith is da'if. That hold firm and stick firm to the majority of the scholars. Stick fir firm to the majority. And I say of the... His own... Uh, look, look, uh, by the way, he will conveniently interpret any hadith according to his liking. He will add words that don't exist in the hadith. 
He will add, look like right now he will say he's he look look what he will say scholars even though he didn't say of the scholars because when we say hold firm to the majority it's not referring to the opinion of the layman the layman who doesn't know anything who doesn't know any Arabic who can't you know doesn't have the qualifications to go into the Quran Sunnah he's not a by the way al amma does not mean the scholars the jama'a does not mean the scholars especially al amma especially al amma because in other hadith ad dinu nasiha and the Prophet was asked liban he said to Allah and his book and his messenger to the imams of the Muslims and the scholars understand this to be the leaders the rulers and the scholars and the laymen so the same wording al-amma is referring to actually lay persons and lay people but does he accept that nope he's going to make his own interpretation why because he's an ash'ari an ash'ari is qualified and authorized to look into a hadith that is explicit in meaning and tell you, nope, it doesn't mean that. As you will see him do momentarily. One of the craziest things you will ever hear in Ash'ari say is what this brother will say momentarily. I don't want to uh, ruin the surprise. But just, just pay, pay attention to the pattern of deception. A scholar, their, their opinion doesn't matter. So you know, it's not the majority matter. of the people, it's the majority of the scholars who are specialized in the field of understanding the Quran and Sunnah. When they say something and the majority of them say something, hold firm to that because most likely that is what is correct. Most likely, most likely, can you use the term most likely with that? If they all agree, again, he will continue to make you see, he will, the entire video, he will make you feel as though there's an agreement and this agreement, by the way, doesn't exist. So his entire, whatever is built upon and established upon falsehood is falsehood. This entire video of his, in fact, his entire aqidah is built upon falsehood. And therefore, it is all false. This whole thing is based on an agreement, an unanimous agreement that he never cited, never quoted, never shared, never expressed, never taught. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, اتبعوا السواد الأعظم Right, Asawad al A'zam is like the main body, the, the, the huge group, right? The, the, the large group of scholars. He's saying the problem. That's another weak hadith and it's another lie. Ya akhi, wallah al azim, ajib hadal insan. It's another weak hadith and it's another lie. Asawad al A'zam, he's again adding the word scholars. He is insisting on adding the word scholars. You know why? Because the average lay Muslim is on his fitrah. When he reads in the Quran, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, thumma istawa ala al-Arsh, he doesn't think all the philosophies that they think. The average layman doesn't think when Allah descends to the lowest heaven, but it's a third of the night in this part of the country, this part of the country, that country, that country, that means Allah is at down in the lowest heaven at all times. The layperson does not think like that. The layperson does not have imagery of Allah in his mind. So because he knows that the average person has a sound aqidah, sound fitrah in, in, in general, and only these philosophers who learned from Plato and Aristotle, brought this nonsense into Islam, he is assuming that those people are irrelevant and not important because they don't know what they're talking about. Even though the hadith that he's quoting, which not only are weak, even if they were some wordings of the hadith elsewhere that are sound, they're not referring to the scholars. Yeah, let him finish then I will reply. Prophet is saying, follow this large body, follow this, this main body, um, for indeed the one who separates from it will be separate in Jahannam, right? Whoever separates from this will be separate in Jahannam. Why is that the case? Because if you have the main body of Muslims who agree on something, and then uh, they, they're all saying that this is the correct aqidah, for example, and they're saying this is the correct understanding. Pay attention to the lie. They're all saying this is the correct aqidah. They all say, where's all? All, who is all? Who is all? Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Imam al-Nawawi. Then what about Ibn Kathir? And what about Imam al-Dhahabi? And what about Sheikh al-Sabib al-Taymiyyah? Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah? And what about, and what about all of these ulama? And I will cite them by name, inshallah, eventually. Where are they from this, all of them agreeing? And by the way, let me give you some news. In spite of the weakness of this hadith, uh, al-Barbahari said, فَقَدْ بَيَّنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ لِأُمَّتِهِ السُنَّةِ وَأَوْضَحَهَا لِأَصْحَابِهِ وَهُمُ الْجَمَاعَةِ And he made it clear, the Prophet ﷺ had clarified his sunnah. And he made it clear to his companions, وَهُمُ الْجَمَاعَةِ وَهُمُ السَّوَادُ الْأَعْظَمُ And they are the jama'ah and they are the majority. They are the vast majority. وَسَوَادُ الْأَعْظَمُ الْحَقُّ وَأَهْلِهِ And the, the سَوَادُ الْأَعْظَمُ is the حق and its people. It's the haq and its people. 
The Sahaba are the Sawad al Azam during that time. And similarly, the, the, those who followed them. لأنهم على الحق الذي بعث بعث به النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم because they are upon the truth which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent with وقال الإمام الشاطبي بعد أن ذكر الأقوال بعد أن ذكر ذكر الأقوال في المراد بالجماعة then Imam الشاطبي said after he mentioned the statements that were intended behind the term جماعة الجميع اتفقوا على اعتبار أهل العلم والاجتهاد سواء ضموا إليهم العوام أم لا All of them agree that they, this is referring to the people of knowledge they had Whether or not you add the, the, the عامة The majority, the, the layman Which he automatically disqualified Because not everybody agreed Of course the scholars are the most important people in this subject matter Because this is their field of expertise But that is not to disregard and, and ignore and neglect the, the layman And the lay people فإن لم يضموا إليهم العوام فلا إشكال أن الاعتبار إنما هو بالسواد الأعظم من العلماء المعتبر. Uh, so if you don't add those, then no doubt what is referring to is the the scholars, the سواد الأعظم of the scholars that are uh, considered to be uh, يعني that are considered that are uh, uh, of high value, that are elite and respected. وإن ضموا وإن وإن ضموا إليهم العوام فميتته uh, اجتهادهم. فمن شذ عنهم فمات فبحكم التبع Anyways, he's going to get into the details uh, لأنهم غير عارفين من الشريعة I want to make sure that not to quote things that will not be relevant إيه, المهم طيب وقال سليمان بن عبد الله ما يبعد وأما الإجماع المعصوم فهو إجماع الصحابة والتابعين وما وفقه As for the uh, إجماع The consensus that is infallible the infallible consensus is the ijma' of the sahaba and the tabi'een and whatever is in agreement with that. وهو السواد الأعظم and that is the سواد الأعظم الذي ورد الحث على تباعه uh, الذي ورد الحث على تباعه the one that you have been encouraged to follow. وقال ابن قاسم فإن الناجي من الأمم هم القليل ولكن هم السواد الأعظم. Those who will be saved from among the nations will be small in numbers but they are the سواد الأعظم. قد قدرا عند الله فإن because those people will have a higher uh, degree and level with Allah. وَإِنْ قَلُّوا Even if they were small in numbers فَلْيَحْذَرِ الْمُسْلِمِ الْأَعْظَمُونَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا أَقَلَّ الْقَلِيلِ فَإِنَّهُمْ وَلَا يَخْتَرْ بِالْكَثْرَةِ So let, let the Muslim be wary and pay attention to what is intended by Sawad al-Azam because they might be the smallest in numbers. They might be smallest in numbers and don't be deceived by the majority. Allah says, وَإِنْ تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you follow the majority of the people on earth, they will mislead you from the path of Allah. So the majority does not mean anything in this regard. Uh, there's more statements to the Al-Lalaka'i. Uh, Al-Sawad Al-Azam laqab muradif li baqiyat al-qab ahl al-sunnah. Fahum ahl al-sunnah wal-jama'ah wa ahl al-hadith wal-jama'ah wal-salaf wal-firqa al-najiyah wal-ta'if al-mansura. Fayuradu biha ma yuradu bihadhi al-alqab wa huwa ma ashar ulayh Abu Qasim al-Asbahani wal-Lalaka'i. ولا يجوز أن يفسر سواد العظم بأنه أغلب الناس It is not permissible for you to, to explain the سواد العظم to be the majority of the people or even the majority of the scholars because the, they were all saying that it's the, the, the saved and aided sect أهل السنة والجماعة the people of hadith the people of the salaf those are the ones that are being referred to and being taken into consideration uh, now, where is this? also they have the statements of Ibn Qayyim now Anyways, I'll get back to that later, inshallah. ...of the Quran and Sunnah when it comes to Aqidah and what we believe in Islam as Muslims. And then you have someone who separates from that majority and separates from that group. Essentially, he's saying that what you guys all believe is wrong and what I believe is correct. Now, if what the majority believes is correct, then actually what that person believes is incorrect. And the Prophet ﷺ is giving us, a, he's giving us, you know, in these hadith, he's showing us that the, 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 the correct understanding of the Qur'an and Sunnah is going to be preserved through, uh, through the majority of the scholars coming to an agreement. And he says this in this. The, major, uh, the, the, the same life for the hundredth time. The majority of the scholars come into an agreement. An agreement that he doesn't have. That he never quoted, not once. This next hadith here, where he says, "Inna Allah la yajma'u ummati," or "Aqal ummat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." That he says, "Inna Allah la yajma'." That the Allah will not. The fourth week hadith that he will quote. The fourth week hadith that he will quote. This is what this whole paradigm, their whole dawa, is based on foolishness 
lies and deception. Not even a single Sahih hadith, maybe only the first one so far. There's another wording of this hadith that is actually sound, but that particular one that he cited right now on the screen is not an, is not an authentic hadith. Cause my ummah to unanimously agree upon something that is misguidance. Ala dalala upon misguidance. So in other words, he's showing that Allah... The actual Sahih hadith is Yadullahi ala jama'a La yajma'ullahu hadhi al-umma ala dalalati abadan Wa qal فَأَنَّهُ مَنْ شَدَّ فِي النَّارِ شَدَّ فَاتَّبِعُ السَّوَادِ الْعَظَمِ This hadith which was uh, by, uh, what should we call it, Abdullah ibn Umar and uh, it was collected by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani um, and also uh, the, the hukum is da'if. The hukum is da'if. It was also narrated by Al-Tabarani and Al-Hakim uh, and al uh, the wording is for him and Al-Bayhaqi in Asma'u Sifat. So, thank you. Allah is in control here, right? Because Allah, Allah took it upon Himself to preserve the Qur'an. If that means that Allah took it upon Himself to preserve the Qur'an, means that He took it upon Himself to preserve with it the correct understanding of the Qur'an and Sunnah, then He also took it upon Himself to make sure that it gets preserved in a way that the ummah can recognize so that they know truth from falsehood. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here in this hadith that Allah will not allow the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ to agree upon something that is incorrect. Or ﷺ, correct. That's why the ummah never agreed upon the Ash'ari Aqeedah because it is the incorrect Aqeedah. And the Maturidi Aqeedah, the ummah never agreed upon it because it's an incorrect Aqeedah. You're very right. You're claiming that there was an agreement and here I am, I'm a living proof that there's no agreement. And through every era and every century, there were tens of scholars who opposed the Ash'ari Aqeedah, refuted it, authored books against it. All of them are living or dead proof that there was no such agreement. So this hadith is an evidence against you, not for you. Or to agree upon something that is falsehood. And he says, Yadullahi ala al jamaah that Allah's support and Allah... Ay, 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 ay. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allahu Akbaru kabira walhamdulillahi kathira. Listen, <laughs> look man, look man. Look, did you hear what the hadith said? No, not here. How do I go here? Allah's uh, so then he said um, to agree upon pause. something that is incorrect or to agree upon something that is falsehood. And he says, Yadullahi. Uh, 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 I caught you. Yadullahi ala al jama'. Huh? The hand of Allah is with the group. Now, what does he, how does he translate it? Check, check out a classic Ash'ari approach to Islam. Check out. A classic Ash'ari approach to Islam. That Allah's support and Allah's uh, you know, help and agreement is with the majority. Allah's support and help is with the majority. Allah's hand, Allah's uh, help and support. Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi, I'm going to ask you a very basic question. Huh? Are you more pious? And know better, and you know better, you know Allah better than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Hadith said Allah's hand is the with the, is with the majority, and he can even translate the actual word. He says support, help, and agreement. Are you better than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Are you more pious and know better than Allah? Do you think the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not have his vocabulary, uh, musaada, da'am? Or any other word, muwafaqa, nusra, all these words, the Prophet ﷺ could not have used them. He chooses to use the word yad, and you choose to mistranslate yad, which we all know what it means. So you're basically better than the Messenger of Allah. According to you, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ is also a mushabbih. He's a mushabbih. Who is likening Allah to his creation because he had no problem, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, using the word hand for Allah, just like Allah had no problem using the word hands for Himself. But you, my friend, <clears throat> the intellectual, not, <clears throat> and you follow Ash'aris who are far from being intellectual, think you are better than Allah and better than the Messenger of Allah, and you have a better uh, 
principle by which you can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes and dismiss the Prophet sallallahu so to the point that you have the audacity to change a word that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa chose to use for Allah. Ya dal ya mudil lak Allah Ya waylak min Allah Ya waylak min Allah Authority of the scholars once again and he says وَمَنْ شَذَّ شَذَّ فِي النَّارِ that whoever you know separates from this, whoever uh, you know leaves this 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 majority, um, is is going to be separate in Jahannam. This is what he's saying in this hadith. And then we have one more hadith over here, and this hadith is very important. And I'm going to tie this hadith into the end of this video as well, inshallah. Where the Prophet ﷺ says, "Inna hu sayakunu ba'di hanatun wa hanat." That after me, there's going to be some you know afflictions and evil you know evil. It says here uh, calamities and evil behavior. He says, "Faman ra'aytumuhu farq al jamaata." That whoever you see separating from the majority of these scholars, leaving the majority understanding, leaving what the majority of these scholars who are specialized in their field say. Look at this, look at all these insertions, man. That's even more than the biblical texts that have been added to the, the, the insertions that have been added to the Bible. That's more than Paul had added to the original uh, gospel. Entire books that are written by Paul, letters that Paul wrote, they incorporated those into the Bible and today they printed as part of the Bible. This guy is literally comfortably, freely adding words that the hadith does not even contain. I, I'm going to play it again because I am, I am, I can't believe it. When you see a person look, look, look. here, he says, فَمَنْ رَأَيْتُمُهُ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةَ That whoever you see separating from the majority of these scholars, leaving. This hadith, I will tell you the context of the hadith, by the way, but wait. The majority understanding, leaving what the majority of the scholars who are leaving the majority understanding, leaving what the majority of the scholars in field say, specialized in their field say, What are you saying? Where are you getting this from? How are you attributing this to the Prophet? Where did the Prophet say any of that? Yeah, Mahandis. When you see a person separating, or you see someone who's trying to create division amongst the Ummah, so you have that main body of Muslims, and you see someone who's trying to create division amongst them. Saying that, oh, you're not, you know, you're not from amongst us and whatnot. You see someone trying he's, to create... He's referring to us. Look at this, look at this deception. Oh, you're not from amongst us. Meaning, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah saying to those deviants, you're not Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is exactly what he's referring to. The Salafis telling the Ash'aris and Maturidis, you're not even Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in the first place. So now he's even applying this hadith, which was narrated by the Prophet ﷺ before Imam Ash'ari even came into existence. And he's claiming that this is referring to the current situation or the situation back then between the, uh, <laughs> the Ash'aris and their opponents. Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Create okay, division or you see someone separating, he says, Faqtuluhu. Uh, 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 uh. Now listen to this. Ya akhi, this is one of the fails. This is one of the biggest fails and proof how Allah, it's a proof how Allah disgraces these people by them exposing themselves. First, he uses another hadith that is used to speak about the khawarij and going against the ruler. He, every hadith that is referring to the khawarij with the rulers, he's bringing it and applying it to wherein the rulers are the Ash'aris and the Khawarij are the Salafis, the Atharis. For you to be this deceptive, you really had to be working under Iblis directly. This is some hardcore satanic stuff. To get the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ that were referring to the Khawarij with the rulers and apply them to the Ash'aris and the Salafis is one of the most ludicrous and cunning things I've ever seen. So you keep misquoting narrations that don't fit the given context to legitimize your deviant principles. Further, you mistranslate the words in order to further deceive the miskeen Muslims who don't know Arabic. Notice now, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَقْتُلُوا Kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَقْتُلُوا Why? Because this is in reference to the Khawarij. This is in reference to the Khawarij where the leader has the authority to kill that person. Look what he will do. Look what he will do, ya akhwan. Sorry, right? That, that kill that person. He says, man ka. Whosoever that person might be, kill him. We're not taking this on its, uh, you know, فَقْتُلُوهُ as in kill him. As in. Notice how the video was cut. I don't know if he referred to one of his scholars or one of his uh, deviant shuyukh and he told them, no, you cannot say on YouTube, you know, kill him. Uh, this could be misunderstood. So ch ch check, out check out what he did. Check this out. 
as in, you know, kill his, him and take his life. That's not what we're taking the understanding as. We're taking the understanding of this as because he's posing a threat in the field of knowledge, kill him with knowledge. Allahu Akbar! <laughs> Or because he's, he's causing fitna in the field of knowledge, kill him with knowledge. How do you kill someone with knowledge? You know, you shoot an arrow of, of, of ilm at him. You, you light up a book and you put the book in the top of an arrow and you, you throw it at him from the bow. So he burns to death with ilm. Ish al kalam al fadi ya Ish al kathib ya akhi. Ya akhi, la tattaqillah abad ant. No fear of Allah at all. Lying against the Messenger of Allah وسلم, you, you are really selecting, you know, your place in the fire. مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ أو كما قال عليه السلام. Whoever lies against me purposely. أخي, you're lying against the Messenger of Allah. The Prophet said, فَاقْتُلُوهُ And here you are denying the apparent meaning of the hadith and giving it an interpretation of your own. Man. Let me tell you, let me prove to you what a lie this what a lie this person is. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن ستكون هنات وهنات فمن جاءكم يفرق بين جماعتكم فضرب عونكه كائنا من كان يعني إذا كان أمر الخليفة قائما ومع this is the explanation of the علماء if the matter of the Khalifa is established ومعه جماعة المسلمين and then the majority and the the جماعة the group of Muslims are with him. ثم جاء ظهر شخص يقول then a person came about and said أنا خليفة he said I am the خليفة فضربوا عنق الثاني كائنا من كان and then strike the neck of that person that second person who's claiming to be the خليفة whoever he is وهذا عند العلماء بالإجماع كما نقله النووي وابن عبد البر وغيرهما الله أكبر وغيرهما <laughs> in your face يا كذاب Sorry, I'm having, and I'm forced to treat you this way. I wanted to be as respectful as I can, but I'm traumatized by the amount of lies, and I am offended by you lying against the Messenger of Allah and deceiving the Muslims. The Imam Nawawi, which you will love to quote when it's convenient for you, and Ibn Abdul Bar, there's an ijma among the ulama that this hadith is referring to a person who's trying to take over the existing Khalifa by claiming that he is the Khalifa and that his neck should be struck, i.e. he should be killed by the person in charge. إِذَا لَمْ يَنْدَفِعْ إِلَّا بِالْقَتْلِ If you're unable to remove him except with قتل. أَمَّا إِذَا أَمْكَنَ دَفْعُ بِغَيْرِ الْقَتْلِ فَادْفَعُوهُ بِغَيْرِ الْقَتْلِ وَيُحَرِّمْ عَلَيْكُمْ قَتْلًا But if you're able to get rid of this, this troublemaker by, without having to kill him, then do so. So you're, you're lying and deceiving the Muslims about the actual meaning of this hadith, the context of the hadith, the statements of the ulama, of the, including Ash'ari ulama, or ulama with Ash'ari tendencies like Imam Nawawi ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahumullah. And here you are. Here you are. Wallahi, first you mistranslate the yad, and now it says kill him, you give it your own interpretation. Kill him with, uh, you know, the correct understanding. In other words, refute him. Right? Get rid of these, these false ideas that he's presenting. So when, when, they, when they try and make a claim like this, you respond to that claim and, and, and disprove it and show that that claim is inaccurate and show that it's wrong so that the people stick with the majority and they don't end up following him. And That's what I'm doing right now, alhamdulillah. I'm exposing you, showing that you're lying so the people don't end up following you. That actually applies to you of anything. Because right now you are the one who's trying to cause this division by claiming and lying to the Muslims by suggesting that, you know, the, the Jama'a and the Sawad al-Azam and all this is the referring to the Ash'aris. And that's how you stay safe from this person who's trying to kill you or, or you know, pose such a huge threat to your religion and your relationship with Allah. And the same wording comes next where he says, فَإِنَّ يَدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْجَمَعَةِ That Allah's, Allah's uh, you know, support and His help and whatnot is... Again, Allah's uh, support and help and whatnot. Allah's whatnot. MashaAllah alayk. لا مرة حريص على على يعني تقدير وتقديس رب العباد. Allah's whatnot. with the majority of the scholars. He says, فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ مَعَ مَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةَ يَرْكُضْ That the shaytan is with the one who, uh, who separates from the majority, he's running with him, right? So the one who leaves, this is, this is the job of shaytan. He wants to create division amongst the ummah. Because when the ummah is united, the ummah is powerful. But when the ummah is separate, the ummah is weak. And the job of shaytan 
is to make the ummah weak. So he's, his, 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 his main job is to make us divided, make the Muslims divided, divide the ummah and don't let them agree on such and such things. So when you see somebody who, you, you, you see the majority of the scholars agree upon something and you see someone who separates from that, stick to what the majority did and don't follow that because when you're following that, you're actually following the footsteps of shaitan because he only inspired that person to think in that kind of way to separate him from the majority and create that division. So the majority of the scholars, because can we say Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, they were Ash'aris? Those Imams who came before Al-Ash'ari, they were Ash'aris? So if we, if we're going to apply your hadith verbatim or your statements verbatim and uh, with perfect application, then it all, it's all you refuting yourself. This entire video of you refuting yourself. Because surely none of these Imams was an Ash'ari. Ash'ari, Imam Al-Ash'ari came after them and he changed his ways, Aslan, which we will get to inshallah. So how in the world does that even apply, ya captain? Ya captain, taqillah ya captain. اتق الله يوم الحساب يوم طويل يوم طويل لمن افترى على الله الكذب هذا افتراء وهذا كذب على الله اتق الله يا عبد الله اتق الله لا تأخذ الأمور بالبزاح والتضليل so all of that comes from shaitan and the Prophet ﷺ is telling us to be aware of that and stick with the majority and again the majority of the scholars who are specialized in the field now what does this, what does this all tell us this tells us and this, these hadiths show us that sticking to the majority of the scholars is what's going to be the way to know the correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. So why don't you in this video quote the majority of the scholars? I am very surprised. I watched the whole video, refuted the whole video. I will proceed to refute inshallah. And I don't see those majority of the scholars. I see you quoting exactly five to six guys the whole time. All of which are Ash'aris. All of which are Ash'aris or people that had some Ash'ari lenience or Ash'ari uh, tendencies or whatever. Where are the majority of the scholars? You didn't quote any majority. You just talk about the majority all the time, but you don't have the majority. So what does this require from us? We being in the year, you know, 1400 after the Prophet Sallallahu it requires us to look throughout history that who has this majority been? Who yeah. has a sawad al a'zam bin? Yeah. Who has the majority of scholars who are specialized in their field, the fuqaha? What have they been saying about the Yeah, tell us those four Imams, were they Ash'ari? Tell us, brother. Tell us. Say it, say it. Spell it out. Spell it out. Spell it out. Sorry. Say it. Let us hear it. That those four Imams were Ash'aris. That the Sahaba were Ash'aris. That the Tabi'een were Ash'aris. And that the Prophet Sallallahu and his wives were Ash'ari. Say it, Akhi, say it. Let us hear it from your mouth. Yalla, ya Captain, yalla. Tell us that they were like you. The Quran and Sunnah. Where has their understanding and their intellects and their independent minds, where has it been? For 1,400 years, what have they understood from the Quran and Sunnah? And so this requires us to take a look at uh, some, of the, some of the great scholars in the history of Islam. And so for that, I've gathered um, a bunch of different uh, you know, cita uh, quotes from different books. of. It's pathetic. This is the most pathetic collection of citations that an Ash'ari will put forward that is, that is void of, of honesty, void of sincerity, void of transparency, void of uh, uh, what you would call it. Uh, academia, void of straightforward, uh, void of everything praiseworthy and full of, uh, full of lies and deceptions. Unbelievable. But don't worry, I got you. I'm right after you. Of, of the great scholars of the past who are specialized again in, in fiqh, they've specialized in understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. I'm going to start off with some of the more famous, some of the more famous scholars that almost everybody knows. And so I'll start off with Imam an nawawi rahimahullah. Now, <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> how convenient is that? How can, how can you start with Nawawi? What happened to all the scholars before Imam al Nawawi, ya Sheikh? Imam al Nawawi, who was born 631 after Hijrah, he was born the year 631 after Hijrah. By Allah, if you claim to be a Salafi and the most major scholar that you want to quote, the most major scholar that you want to quote to substantiate the claim that there was a unanimous agreement on the Aqeedah that you promote today. You had to push forward 600 years and ignore 600 years before him. And ironically, conveniently quote a scholar that is known to have had some Ash'ari beliefs. How convenient and how deceptive are you? 
where are those agreements 600 years before? Ya akhi, where was the year 500, 400, 300, 200? You have no one, no one from there to quote, to substantiate your belief. You had to begin with Imam al-Nawawi because that's the most convenient. Ya'ni, wallahi, it's pathetic. You gave us lectures about the majority and the Salaf, then you begin with him. He was born year 6300. Fear Allah, ya walad. We all know that Nawawi ibn Hazar agreed with some of the principles of the Ashairah. Not all, and they have been criticized for, for, for this all these years. So you're not proving anything. You are claiming that understanding the deen of Allah began with Abu Hassan, which is 260 years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when I say Ash'ari, it's, it's in reference to, uh, no, no, this is, this is me refuting him later. Listen to him. Now, before I say anything about Imam and Nawawi, the <laughs> Salafi sect that we have today that we're talking about right now, they like to attribute Imam Nawawi to themselves. Some of them say that Imam Nawawi was not an Ash'ari, right? He, they say that he... No, they don't say he's not an Ash'ari. They refuse to say that he is a full-fledged Ash'ari. Meaning he does not share the exact same belief of the uh, Ar-Razi, Wal-Ghazali, and some of the big, bigger heads of the Ash'ari creed. He does not share it with them. So in this sense, yes, we refuse to treat Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani and Imam Nawawi as the rest of the Ash'aris. However, we don't claim that they don't have problems with their beliefs. We're very clear about that. Some of those, some people burn their books because of that. He was not upon the aqidah of the Ash'ari uh, Ash methodology and the Ash'ari Ash principles. And some of them like to say that he was and he was actually a deviant. But the majority of them say that Imam al Nawawi was not Ash'ari, which is incorrect as we're going to show. That's a lie. The majority of them do not say that. The mi a minority of them say that. The majority of them say that he was an Ash'ari. So over here from Imam al Nawawi's own words. In Imam al Nawawi's book, Tahdeeb al Asma, right, he writes the biography of Imam Abu Ishaq al Asfarayini, right? Um, and there's a difference of opinion whether it's Isfarayini or Asfarayini, but our teachers and our shuyukh no have said that it is you the, the, correct, the, the correct pronunciation the is al -asfarayini. Al-Asfarayini. So take that as a He says under the biography of Imam Abu Ishaq al-Asfarayini that he was one of three who lived during the same time. That Ustad Abu Ishaq al-Asfarayini was one of three great scholars who lived at the same time. And he says that they stood together, these three, these three great scholars stood together in defending the aqidah of Ahlus Sunnah. Okay? He, says, he says, defending the methodology of Ahlus Sunnah in theological matters. So specifically talking about aqidah, these three scholars stood together in defending the aqidah of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And then he says, right afterwards, you know, to elaborate on that, who stood in defense of the madhab of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. So, the Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. So you're claiming that the aqidah and the deen began with the Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. Before that, everybody was lost. Methodology of and principles of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. Quoting Nawawi conveniently, 600 years after the Prophet alayhi salam. MashaAllah, Tabarak rahman Is what these three scholars stood for. And he names the three scholars as being Abu Ishaq al-Asfarayini and uh, Qadi Abu Bakr al-Baqillani and Abu Bakr ibn Fawraq. Okay, so you have these different, you have these three scholars and these were giants in the Ash'ari creed. In the early Ash'ari creed, these were some of the giants and the legends um, of the, the Ash'ari creed. And I want to make it clear that when I say Ash'ari creed, before... Listen to this waffle right now. By Allah, listen, look, I told you, remember what I told you at the beginning of this video? These people are forced because they have so many thorns and so many hurdles they have to overcome and avoid because of the double standards and the lies and the hypocrisy in their, in their claims. They have so much to avoid this. Like a, it's like a soldier going out in a battlefield against, against you know, uh, uh, mines, landmines and, and snipers and grenades being thrown at him and people shooting at him with all kinds of you know, weapons being dropped on him from, this, from the sky. That's how the Ash'ari has to move around in order to arrive at anything. So they constantly forced to make disclaimers and explanations and you know additions and deletions and playing around with things in order to avoid falling into a clear contradiction. And in spite of that, in spite of that, all they do is fall into contradictions. So here's another waffling of one of his common waffles that he waffles. Make a pancake with it. Let's have a great old time. Uh, not this one, yes, Sheikh. Or anyone misunderstands, I'm not talking about just a sect. Just as we have the Mu'tazilis and we have the Karami and we have the, uh, uh, you know, the different sects, uh, you know, the Shia, for example. There's different sects within, uh, within classical Islam. The Ash'ari, when I say Ash'ari, it's in reference to Ahl-Sunnah. It's in reference to... Uh, the 
<laughs> what the heck is that? How convenient is that? How can Ash'ari be equal to Ahl Sunnah? How can Ahl Sunnah, the people of Sunnah, Ya Kaddab, Ya Kaddab, Ittaqillah, Ya Rajal, they're called Ahl Sunnah because they are in reference to the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How could that be equal to Ash'ari, which is named after a man who came 321 years after Hijrah, or 300, 260 years after Hijrah? How can those two be equal? How can you make those on the same level? How can Ahl Sunnah be Ash'ari when the term in and of itself is, is named after a man? You are like all the other religions in, in the world. Christianity after Christ, Buddhism after Buddha, Hinduism after the Indy River, you know, Judaism after J Judah, Islam after concept of submission to Allah. You're just like them, Ash'ari. Your name is Ash'ari. You're referring to a man, a man who repented from this belief. One of the craziest things you will ever come across is that the Imam himself, whom they follow and they, they will die for until they meet Allah, they will remain upon this false aqidah, actually repented from this aqidah before he passed away. <laughs> this is insane. Wallah al azim shaghla ya shaykh. The aqidah that the Salaf were upon, it's in reference to the aqidah of, uh, of, of the majority of the ummah and in reference to the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So, Lies that cannot be proven. Well, that's that's what I mean when I say the. Nobody cares what you mean. You're just lying. You're just you're coming up with your own principles, and we're supposed to believe you and take you seriously. Really though, brother, come on now. You know when I talk about the Ash'aris or when I say something about the Ash'ari Madhab. That was Imam Nawawi talking about Abu Ishaq al Asfarayini, and he continues on to praise Abu Ishaq al Asfarayini, saying how how you know wonderful he was in knowledge. He says that he reached the rank of ijtihad, of independent reasoning. Right? He didn't require anyone else's statement. He was capable and qualified to go to the Quran and the Sunnah anjiz, himself anjiz, anjiz, and give the correct anjiz. understanding because of his immense knowledge and his uh, you know his his deep knowledge of yeah, uh, yeah. of Arabic language of fiqh of uh, aqidah and usul and whatnot. He says he had such such deep knowledge of these things. There was no aqidah, by the way, huh? There was no aqidah. It was said ulum and lugha and He fiqh. He added aqidah from his own mind. Adi, yeah, yeah, adi, 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 adi. Normal. It's normal for you to add, delete, add, delete. Typical Christian behavior from a Muslim. That he was, you know, he was at that level. He was, he was very high in his knowledge. And this person, Abu Ishaq al Asfarayini, was an Ashari, and so were the other two great scholars. And Imam, look how happy he is! Hey, hey let's clap for you, brother. Let's clap that you found the, uh, three scholars that no one knows and no one cares about that happened to be Ashari. And we had to learn this from Imam Nawawi, who came 600 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mashallah, like this, quite, quite, uh, quite a strong blow. Oh, we Ahl Sunnah don't know how to take it. Imam al Nawawi here is essentially praising both of them, and uh, sorry, all three of them. He's praising all three of them as saying that they were followers of the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and he specifically names the madhab of Imam Abu Hassan al Ash'ari. You have another, another quote. This is from Imam Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, in his Tabaqat, he wrote that uh, Imam al Nawawi says, Imam al Nawawi says, uh, over here, وَمَتَى أُطْلِقَ فِي كِتَابِ فِي كُتُبِ الْأُصُولِ لِأَصْحَابِنَا which means that whenever the word al-qadi the, uh, the word al-qadi is used in the books of aqidah from our scholars right and he says it's referring to abu bakr al-baqillani now abu bakr al-baqillani was an ash'ari this is imam nawawi saying when you see the word qadi in the books of aqidah from our scholars the ashabina our scholars so it shows that imam nawawi had this, uh, you know, he, uh, agreement with the Ash'aris that he was uh, himself, he believed the Ash'ari madhab was the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And Imam al Nawawi is somebody that we don't even need to mention how great of a scholar he No, we don't need to mention how great of a scholar he is, but we do need to mention that he came 631 years after the Hijrah. I think Muslims would be interested, those who don't know anybody, they'd be interested in knowing 600 years. 600 years. What was the aqidah of the people? Uh, how great of a scholar he was. You have uh, Imam Al-Hakim. Imam Al-Hakim, who wrote the Mustadrak, he, he's um, uh, you know, a great scholar in hadith of the past. And one of the things that happened with him is that... So look at the contradiction now. Imam, Imam Al-Hakim, he is a scholar of hadith, right? And he told you in the beginning of the video that the muhaddithin, their job was only to do the hukum. On the hadith, sahih, mawdu'a, da'if, ma'lu shughul fil fiqh. It's not his job to enter into the matter of fiqh. Fiqh, you refer to the jurists and the fuqaha, those were their job. 
So the muhaddithin, don't take your aqidah from the muhaddithin. It's like those doctors who told you that there's nothing wrong with your liver. Huh? Take it from the doctors who knew that your liver was going to rupture. If you don't listen. Now he's conveniently, he will contradict himself and oppose himself. And quote a, a scholar who's a muhaddith because it's convenient. Mind you, mind you, Al-Hakim was born 320 years after Hijrah. <laughs> this is the funny, I've told you, that's why it's the worst collection of citations. Because everybody he quotes, welcome hundreds of years after the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. Hundreds, hundreds of years after the Prophet That's all he has. He cannot quote a single Sahabi, a single Tabi'i, any of those. He doesn't have anybody where he can substantiate his deviant beliefs from. He's forced to refer to people hundreds of years later. And he's trying to sell us the idea that there's a unanimous agreement. And this is a sawadul adam And this is the jama'ah. Yadullahi ma'al jama'ah. The help and support and agreement of Allah is with the jama'ah. Ya Sheikh. Ya Sheikh. Istah. Istahi. People kind of slandered him for being a Shia, right? right. They slandered him for having Shia tendencies and whatnot. So over here in this book, Imam Tajuddin al-Subki in his Tabaqat al-Shafi'iyya, he writes in this book that in, in order to know a scholar and know his aqidah, the first thing that we have to do is look at you know his family, look at his teachers, look who he took knowledge from, who he sat with, who he studied with, etc. Look at these things and we'll be able to find out the aqidah of this person. So he says for, Haq, for Al-Hakim, he says, ثُمَّ نَظَرْنَا مَشَايِخَهُ الَّذِينَ أَخَذَ عَنْهُمُ الْعِلْمِ That uh, we looked at his scholars and his teachers, who he took knowledge from. But not only who he sat in the gathering of, and you know how a lot of people like to say, oh yeah, I studied under this person. Meanwhile, they didn't really study under that person. They kind of just sat in one of his, you know, uh, halaqat and they listened to something he said. They didn't really study, you know, one-on-one -on -one with him. He says, وَكَانَتْ لَهُ بِهِمْ خُصُوصِيَّةً that he had some type of a personal connection with them. That he had some type of uh, close relationship with. I don't know right? time for he this. says, and we found them from the leaders of Ahl Sunnah. And who are these people? From the core figures of the Aqidah of Imam Abu Hassan al Ash'ari. The Ash'ari Madhab once again. And these are, uh, he names them, and one of them is the exact same name that we just spoke about before that Imam al Nawawi spoke about. I told you, that's what I said, I told you. He has the same collection of like five, six guys. Five, six scholars who he will continue to recycle, recycle. And you know, it's like the ground beef. When you put it in the mincing machine, it minces it. And then you put it again so that it becomes thinner. Then you put it again. And by the time it becomes like, you know, I don't know, uh, another type of meat. That's exactly what he will do. He will keep recycling the same information, record the same people, the same scholars. And then lie and tell you the majority of the ummah, the majority of the scholars who were specialized in fiqh. All of them agreed that the Ash'ari Aqidah is the way. Unbelievable. About which is Abu Bakr ibn Furak. So Abu Bakr That's ibn Furak was Abu again Bakr, a hardcore, uh, top level, you know, Ash'ari scholar for, for from the Ash'ari Madhab. And over here he's saying that Imam al-Hakim had a close relationship with him, and he studied and took knowledge from him one on one directly. He had a close. Now, look at look at this look at this going around. You know, Fulan sat with Fulan, and they were best friends, and they hung out, and they ate pizza together, and he studied with them, and he was close to him, and he's a, the the way to substantiate Ash'ari Aqidah and prove and prove it to be valid is by going through this, you know, because Fulan said well about Fulan and khalas. He studied with him and he endorsed him, said, MashaAllah, he was, a, he was a, an asset. Now tell me, Imam Abu Bakr ibn Furak, would he have a student like this if that student, right, and that close of a relationship with him, if that student differed with him in Aqidah and was considered a mubtadi' because if you differ in Aqidah, you're considered a deviant, right? And so yes, you're a mubtadi' and you're a deviant by your own principle. Because you differ uh, in aqidah with, with, with the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. You're right, absolutely. But that's how you're going to prove the, the relationship. Yani how could he have a student? There are many examples of teachers with students where the students did not agree with their teachers on aqidah. But that's besides the point. I'm not going to waste time on this. That's evident up until today. And you're not upon the path of the, the, the Quran and Sunnah. So if you have a differing opinion, you know, if, if, if a scholar, a great scholar had a differing opinion to his student, in something as important as aqidah, he wouldn't have kept that close relationship with. We have, you know, different statements of uh, some of the great scholars and their teachers. You know, they, the great scholars they would sit in the gathering of their teacher, and their teacher would say, "Get out," because their teacher differ, differed with them on something. And the te the teacher would not sit with them and have that personal relationship if it was a difference on an issue that had uh, you know you know a lot of weight to it, such as an issue in aqidah. So he's saying over here that Imam al-Hakim. 
had a close relationship with these Ash'ari scholars, these core figures of the Ash'ari madhab. And he says, uh, That these are the people who he used to sit and study with. These are the people who used to, he used to. Uh, that is one of the weakest approaches I've ever seen. That he sat with these people and did bahath with them. Therefore, he is this or he is that. Let's hypothetically assume that he is an Ash'ari. So what? We never deny that there were many Ash'ari among the scholars in the Ummah. Durr. Tell us something that we don't know. We know that already. Why are you waffling and making uh, all this fuss over this, this pathetic claim? You know, you study with. And he says, oh. He used to speak with them in Aqidah. In wow. Aqidah matters. Usul okay. Usul became aqidah. Is aqidah matters. He says he used to speak with these scholars and this is who he used to have Aqidah. Diyanat, by the way, is religions. So it could be that he spoke to them about even da'wah to non-Muslims. Diyanat is one deen. In the deen and Allah al-Islam, the religion, the only religion in the side of Allah is Islam. So usul al-Diyanat is the fundamentals of religions. It could actually be them discussing uh, the matters of da'wah. Diyanat al-Yahud, deen al-Yahud, or deen al-Nasara. But adi, you make your own interpretation, translation, as per what's convenient for you. Qida discussions with. He used to study and learn aqidah from these scholars. These were his teachers. So this wow. is Imam al-Hakim rahimahullah. Wow. You have Imam al-Bayhaqi. Imam al-Bayhaqi. When was Imam al-Bayhaqi born, brothers and sisters? When was he born? 384 after Hijrah. Notice, uh, notice, not a single tabi'i, not a single sahabi, not a single, nothing. We jumped to 384. We started with 631, 321, 384. It's going to get only better. All the way from the year 458 is when he passes away. He says... Uh, he, he, he begins by praising Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari and talks about all of his you know, virtues and his knowledge and his lineage wow. and his, his, uh, his uh, piety and whatnot. And mm -hmm. then he says that uh, you know, he praises him for the, major, for, for the huge amount of following that he has from the Shafi'is and the Hanafis and the Malikis. He says, وَكَثْرَةُ الْأَصْحَابِ مِنَ الْحَنَفِيَّةِ وَالْمَالِكِيَّ وَالشَّافِعِيَّةِ the, the, the huge amount of, of scholars. So what does it mean that people that follow a, a fiqhi madhab are following a person in Aqidah? That's absolutely meaningless. That's absolutely meaningless that a person who follows an imam in fiqh, the, the usul al-fiqh of al-Hanafi madhab or al-Shafi'i madhab or al Maliki Madhab, he winds up following an Aqidah al-Ash'ari is absolutely meaningless. What is the connection between the Fiqh and Aqidah and this matter? Why are you trying to deceive the people that this, this uh, substantiates or this strengthens your position in any way, shape or form? Scholars who follow him from the Hanafis and the Malikis of Shafi'is, those who, uh, you know, liked and preferred to delve into aqidah fi ilm al-usul and this is something that also you see in the in some of the old books that when they say um, ilm al-usul they refer that means aqidah and ilm al-furu' is referring to fiqh so Amen. usul means aqidah and furu' means fiqh thank you in for that piece some of, of the old books next we have imam ibn kathir rahimahullah now there is no why are you even quoting ibn kathir to prove what look 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 again look how many times they have to avoid the hurdles and the thrones in order to deceive check this out unbelievable you know direct thing where he says that i'm ashari or something like this <laughs> there's no direct thing where he says i'm ashari huh? so you know a disclaimer but he will still quote him and make you feel that it, like he is and you know some of his statements in his books may be problematic to the uh, Ash'ari Madhab. However, uh -huh. some of his statements are problematic to the Ash'ari Madhab, of course, because he was not an Ash'ari. Imam Ibn Kathir, one of the most famous Mufassireen that the whole Ummah has accepted, according to you, he is one of those people who went against the Jama'ah, ah, and so according to you, he should be killed, as per the words of the Prophet Sallam, oh no, but what, what you mean by killed is that he should be killed with knowledge. He should be refuted, Imam Ibn Kathir. And that the uh, support and help and agreement of Allah does not include Ibn Kathir. Because he didn't go against, or he didn't go with the Sawad Al-A'zam. He went against the Sawad Al-A'zam. Look at the, the hole you dug for yourself. Tafaddal. And then you're quoting him. Oh, you're quoting a deviant Mubtadi'. How convenient. He acknowledges and recognizes the Ash'ari Madhab as being the Madhab of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. He's... Forget about this. Let me tell you what Ibn Kathir said about the ahwal of Abi Hassan al-Ash'ari. Qala Ibn Kathir, ذكروا للشيخ Abi Hassan al-Ash'ari thalatha, thalatha. 
they mentioned three conditions, three stages of Imam Abu Hassan Ash'ari. Awwaluha halul al-in'izal. Alati raja'a anha la mihala. First of all, the stage of being a mu'tazili. The stage of being a mu'tazili meaning someone who يعني, was next level in terms of rejecting uh, the Quran and the Sunnah and the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. And he abandoned that. And he left that, repented from that, no doubt. That's stage one. Walhalu thani, the second stage, Ithbatu Sifat al Akliya Saba. He affirmed the seven intellectually supported attributes. Wahiya al Hayatu, Wal Ilmu, Wal Qud Wal Wal Qudratu, Wal Iradatu, Wal Samu, Wal Basaru, Wal Kalam. And those seven that the Ash'aris uh, accept because they are in line with their brain is life. The life of Allah Azza wa Jal, the knowledge of Allah, the ability or the power or the qudra of Allah, the intent or the will of Allah, hearing, seeing, and speech. And that second stage that Abu Hassan was in, which is the state of the Ash'aris now, is the giving an, an alternative interpretation for the uh, sifat which are received to us or which are which have reached us by by way of khabar by information as per the textual evidence and that is the face and the two hands and the foot and uh, uh, the shin or the, the the shin of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the likes this is the second stage where he left i'tizal uh, from being a mu'tazili and he became what the ash'aris are now Tamam, which is accepting certain sifat that agree with their mind and giving another interpretation for the ones that don't agree with their mind. Walhalu thalith, the third stage, ithbatu thalika kullahu, aw ithbatu thalika kullihi min ghayri takif, wala tashbih, jaryan ala manwali salaf, wa hiya tariqatuhu fil ibana, alati sannafaha akhiran. The last stage is him affirming all of that, meaning the wajh, wal yadain, wal qadam, wal saq, min ghayri takif, without, without speaking about the modality, and without likening Allah to his creation, according to the way of the salaf. And that is his way in his book, Al Ibana, which he authored at the end. <clears throat> uh, now, so, th so this is Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, telling you that Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari eventually was on the aqidah of the Salaf, and he left the aqidah that he was upon, the Mu'tazila, and then even the one that the Ash'ari follow today. So Ibn Kathir did not accept modality, and nor do we, because this your whole issue is about the modality, the kayf. We don't speak about the kayf because we don't know about the kayf. And that's why Imam Malik, when the person act, entered the message and said, Kayf astawallah al arsh, how did Allah rise of the throne? Imam Malik became uh, upset and, and he started uh, sweating and, 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 and he, he kicked the man out. He told him, Al istiwa u ma'loom. The istiwa is known, it's known in the language. Well, kayf majhul. And how the modality is unknown. وَالْإِيمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبُ You believing in it is obligatory. وَالسُؤَالُ عَنْهُ بِدَعَ And you asking about it is innovation. And he commanded that this man is taken out because he's a mubtadi'. So what we believe is known. So why are you lying to the Muslim? Oh, because he's going to say that. Wait, he's going to say that. I, I'm, I'm reading ahead of the statements. I'm sorry. He says in his book, this is in his book, At-Tabaqat, he says, as for the methodology of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari in the attributes of Allah, in other words, in Aqidah. As for the methodology of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, he says, after he repented from the Mu'tazila school, because it's known that Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari used to be a Mu'tazili, and then he repented and came back to Ahl-Sunnah and refuted the Mu'tazila. Isn't that crazy? You're basing your hope, you're willing to meet Allah Azza wa Jal based on an infallible individual that himself had had the worst belief you could have as a Muslim? Don't you find it amazing? Isn't that a sign from Allah that the person right now, the, after whom you name yourself, and after whom you name your aqidah, and after whom you name your madhab, himself was deviant, and Allah guided him, and he repented from what you're upon today? Don't you find it as a sign from Allah that you are following an infallible person when you're supposed to follow the Prophet wasallam, who used the words that you refused to use? 
Uh, he says after he came back, to, uh, came to Baghdad and took from the scholars of Hadith, such as Zakaria Saji and others. He says then it is from the most authentic paths and madhabs, from the min asahi. What does it say? فَهُوَ مِنْ أَصَحِ الطُّرُقِ وَالْمَذْهَبِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ أَصَحِ الطُّرُقِ وَالْمَذْهَبِ That it is one of the best and most authentic and you know close. Quote, فَإِنَّهُ يُثْبِتُ الصِّفَاتِ الْعَقْلِيَّةِ وَالْجَبَرِيَّةِ Mention, translate, translate to the people what it says. He affirms the attributes that are that you find them intellectually uh, intellectually challenging. Closest, essentially close. وَلَا يُنْكِرُ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا all of these is, 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 is right there, brothers. It's not, it's not underlined in red. Uh, maybe he will say it. I don't want to oppress him. That, uh, that he, Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, after he repented from I'tizal, he affirmed the sifat, the intellectual ones, uh, and the Jabariya ones. وَلَا يُنْكِرُ مِنَا شَيْءٍ He doesn't deny any of them. وَلَا يُكَيِّفُ مِنَا شَيْءٍ He does not speak of the modality of any of them. وَهَذِي طَرِيقَةُ السَّلَفِ وَلَا إِمَّا مِنَا لِسُنَّ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ And this is the way of the Salaf. This is what we are upon. This is what we are upon. This is what we believe. Come, you don't believe me? Check out my, my sharh of Al-Aqeed Al-Wasitiyah by Shaykh Al-Salaam ibn Taymiyyah. The sharh of Muhammad bin Salih ibn Uthamiyyah alayhi rahmatullah. Go through the entire playlist and see what we believe. Instead of lying against the Shaykh as you will do at the end of the video. Closest to the Quran and Sunnah, you know, methodologies in Aqeedah that we have. He says, as he affirmed the intellectual and textual based attributes of Allah, and he did not reject any of them, nor did he accept modality for them. And this is something that we're going to talk about in, in future videos, inshallah, talking about the modality and, uh, you know, when it relates to Aqeedah, we'll talk about that. He says that he did not accept modality for them, and this is the path of the Salaf. And this is where he says, he says, وَهَذِهِ طَرِيقَةُ السَّلَفِ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ That this is the path of the Salaf al-Salih and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah after the Salaf. I exposed you because you only quote in this statement of Ibn Kathir and I quoted the other statement of Ibn Kathir where he believes that Al Abu Hassan Ash'ari went through three stages. Okay, so the path of the Salaf and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah after the Salaf was the Ash'ari Madhab. The Ash'ari Madhab was the, uh, was, uh, you know, the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, who, who directly praises the Ash'ari Madhab. Now, over here, you'll see some of the Salafis will like to say that, okay, hold on. Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh -huh. yeah, he knows. Yeah, you need to do another, another hurdle avoiding. Another hurdle, uh, uh, you know, stay uh, trying to protect yourself from another uh, hole that you're going to dig for yourself. Second. Imam Ibn Kathir mentions three stages for Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. Number one, he was a Mu'tazili. Number two, he came to Ahl sunnah but he fell into interpretation. And number three, he left interpretation. And they say that when Imam Ibn Kathir is praising the Ash'ari Madhab here, he's praising the Madhab, uh, you know, the last part where he rejected interpretation as well. That's not true. Wallah. Wallah, that's not true? Why? Because of the statement of Imam Ibn Kathir right after he ends off this paragraph. He says, وَعَلَى هَذَا الْمِنْوَالِ جَرَى الْأَئِمَّةُ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْأَشْعَرِي That upon this methodology, upon his... That statement does not mean by any stretch of imagination that you're trying to pre-impose on us that this is uh, proof that Ibn Kathir was referring to uh, the stage where he was still in between. Just because he's going to mention Al-Baqallani or Al-Ghayru. Number one. Number two, let me give you some more. Let me give you some more. What did Ibn Kathir really believe? Why don't you tell them? Why don't you tell them about the belief of Ibn Kathir? وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ أَنَّ مِنْ أَشْهَرِ مُؤَلَّفَاتِ Ibn Kathir هُوَ وَقَدْ سَطَّرَ فِيهِ مُعْتَقَدَهُ وَاضِحًا جَلِيًّا one of the most important mu'allafat or authors of Ibn Kathir is his tafsir. And in there he explicitly mentioned his aqeedah. Uh, wa, wa, the, and this is his tafsir. I'm just going to give you the English because time is not on my side. Uh, so, and yeah. Wallahi, the text is, is uh, upset. Wallahu rahim lahaza. فقال ملفظ والعين الأخبار صحيحة بإثبات السمع والبصر والوجه والعلم والقدرة والعظمة والمشيئة والإرادة والقول والكلام والرضا والسخط والحب والبغض والفرح والضحك وجب اعتقاد حقيقة ذلك من غير تشبيه بشيء من ذلك بصفات المربوبين المخلوقين. so ابن ابن كثير explicitly said in his اعتقاد in his اعتقاد what he believes 
that the eye and the uh, affirmation of the hearing and the seeing and the face and the knowledge and the ability and the greatness and the will and the intent and the statement and the speech and the pleasure and the uh, wrath and love and hate and happiness and laughter. All of this you have to believe in haqiqa, in reality. مِنْ غَيْرِ تَشْبِيهٍ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ بِصِفَاتِ الْمَرْبُوبِينَ الْمَخْلُقِينَ Without likening Allah Azza wa Jal in any way, shape or form to the created creatures, which is what we believe, what we Ahl Sunnah believe. We don't liken Allah to His creation in any way, shape or form. Affirming a face to Allah. And because we have a face does not mean that the face of Allah is like our face. The only common, uh, the only thing in common is the name. But we don't deny what Allah Azza wa Jal chose for Himself. وَالْإِنْتِهَاءُ إِلَى مَا قَالَهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَرَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنْ غَيْرِ إِضَافَةٍ وَلَا زِيَادَةٍ عَلَيْهِ And and that we end, we we stop with whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said and what the Prophet صلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ said without any addition, without any addition, وَلَا تَكِيفٍ and without the the modality, وَلَا تَشْبِيهٍ without likening or resembling Allah to His creation, وَلَا تَحْرِيفٍ and without distorting, وَلَا تَبْدِيلٍ without exchanging, وَلَا إِزَالَةٍ لَفْضٍ عَمَّا تَعْرِفُهُ الْعَرَبُ وَتَصْرِفُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَالْإِمْسَاكُ عَمَّا سِيْوَ ذَلِكَ and without turn twisting the 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 statements which the Arab were familiar with, everybody knew knew what was being referred to except those people. وَهَذَا كَلَامٌ صَرِيحٌ فِي إِثْبَاتِهِ لِصِفَاتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى عَلَى الْحَقِيقَةِ وَمَنْعِهِ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِهَا this is clear speech. About Ibn Kathir uh, doing affirmation of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and him rejecting anyone uh, interp giving him an, an alternative interpretation. Or that you change it or you liken it to the creation of Allah. Until uh, the end. There's a, it's actually a long statement. بصيها وإنما سلك في هذا المقام ماذا بالصلف الصالح which is مالك والأوزاعي والثوري والليث بن سعد والشافعي وأحمد وأحمد بن حنبل وغيره وأسحاق بن رهوي all of these people they said about إمرارها أو أمروها كما جاءت let it let it you know pass it on just like it came but anyways I need to find the other text let me play this video while I pull out the original word document because this thing is is uh, distorting my text upon imam abu hassan al ashari his methodology upon the tariqah of the salaf upon the understanding of the scholars of ahl sunnah after the salaf upon wait It's okay. There you go. All right, how am I going to do this? I'm going to do it like this. Oh, you guys are seeing this part though. We're going to keep it here. I'm going to play it on the smaller so I can see the thing. Tamam. On this methodology, did the scholars who came after Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, these scholars who were his companions, did they follow? These scholars who were his companions, and he mentions in there, Qadi Abu Bakr al-Baqillani, who is the same name as, uh, you know, the same one that Imam al we spoke about, who, sat, who, who was, you know, one of three, who, who was with Imam Abu, uh, Abu Bakr ibn Furak, and Abu Ishaq al-Asfarayini. These scholars were from the, you know, they were hardcore Ash'ari Ash scholars. He says, that, uh, he says that this is the same methodology that those Ash'ari scholars who helped codify the madhab and the methodology of um, the Ash'ari creed, these scholars followed that same methodology that Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari was upon. And these scholars accepted interpretation, no problem. These scholars accepted interpretation. And this is something that we'll talk about in many other videos in the future, inshallah. We'll talk about the, the, the details of interpretation, why you know some scholars said you're not allowed to interpret and whatnot. We can get into that when we're talking about uh, Aqidah in depth. We have over here Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, another sort of indication that he had, you know, he agreed with the Ash'ari Aqidah. He writes in his tabaqat over here. Another indication that he agreed with the Aqidah. I've already refuted all that. Malish, I jumped over myself. Uh, right there. Uh, subhanallah. 
أيوة ومن المعلوم أن من أشهر مؤلفات ابن كثير هو تفسير وقد سطر فيه معتقده واضحا جليا وذلك أعرض المؤلفان عن ذكره إلا في موضع واحد ولعل ذلك لما علم من إبطاله لدعاهيما في أشعريته إيه نعم المهم uh, I read more or less what I wanted to read I, I'm not going to be able to repeat everything and read it again unfortunately maybe I will just uh, I will put this in the description inshallah I'll put this text for you in the description so you can refer to it and so you can understand what's going on and so because this this is the work of a scholar who is telling you exactly the aqidah of uh, Imam Ibn Kathir which this brother is making you feel and suggesting as though Ibn Kathir يعني, you somewhat agreed with the Ashaira. And it's proof that he was extremely against the Ashaira in every way, shape, or form. Uh, and that he uh, followed the way of uh, Imam Malik, Wal Awza'i, Wal Thawri, Wal Layth, Wal Shafi'i, Wal Ahmad, and all those who I mentioned earlier in regards to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back to the guy. He's giving the uh, biography of this Shafi'i scholar. He says that he used to be affected by the Mu'tazila school of thought in Aqidah. He used to be a Mu'tazili. Okay? And then he says, ثُمَّ فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ That Allah, you know, honored him. Right? Allah opened his heart. Allah honored him and showed him the correct way. And he says, فَرَجَعَ إِلَى مَذْهَبِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ That he returned to the madhab of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. What does that mean? Imam Ibn Kathir, right? What we understand from this is that Imam Ibn Kathir is saying that this scholar came back to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. He titles this Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And then he quotes Ibn al Jawzi. Ibn al Jawzi was an Ash'ari. Okay? And he, Ibn al Jawzi says, وَكَانَ رُجُوعُهُ that this scholar's return to Ahlul Sunnah, his repentance to Ahlul Sunnah as well. So notice how both of them, and this is how we understand these statements of the scholars of the past, that notice how both of them are acknowledging that he came back to the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah. Look how hard he has to, look how far he has to go, look how much effort has to be put into justifying and proving uh, that this is a valid position. Look how he, he is ignoring the explicit statements and the explicit belief of Ibn Kathir and he's trying to bring it by grabbing his ear like this. So if you can go like this, he's going to go all the way here just so that he could prove to you that Ibn Kathir had that lenience or that tendency or that... Ya akhi, wallah aib ya akhi. Ya akhi, give him... The, I told you what Imam Ibn Kathir believes. Why don't you just tell him and save us the headache? Now why would Ibn al Jawzi? Say that he came to the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah if he didn't come to the Ash'ari madhab. If he didn't agree with the principles of the Ash'ari madhab, why would he acknowledge that he repented and came to Ahlul Sunnah if Ibn al Jawzi didn't believe that anything besides that was Ahlul Sunnah? Right? So it shows that this scholar, when he supposedly repented, in, in other words, his aqidah came in line with the Ash'ari madhab. His aqidah came in line with Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And this is what Ibn al Jawzi is saying. And Imam Ibn Kathir acknowledged that in the previous paragraph. So this is more indications. Of so anytime a Shaykh quotes someone, it's an acknowledgement and an approval. That's by, by this method, he is arriving at the idea that Ibn Kathir was okay, that he believes that the Ash'ari were Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ya akhi, wallah al-azim, I'm very disappointed in you, Ya Amr. Wallahi, brother, I'm really sad for you. Wallahi, I feel sad for you. Of Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. Now we'll get into some of the uh, other scholars uh, throughout history. Imam Tajuddin al-Subki, rahimahullah, he says, I'm, I'm going to only recite the English for the same reason that I mentioned before. He says, the Malikis are the most exclusive of all the people. Of all of the you know scholars, the Malikis are the most exclusive to the Ash'ari Madhab. Why is that the case? Right? He says, إِذْ لَا نَحْفَظُ مَالِكِيًا غَيْرَ أَشْعَرِي And here I am reciting the Arabic again. He says, because we don't know of any Maliki. And he says, as we don't know of any Maliki that is not Ash'ari. The Malikis are all Ash'ari. Now, one thing I'm going to make very clear is Imam Tajuddin al-Subki, some of the scholars of the past, right? They would have, you know, a sort of, they would use Ibarat, which means like different wordings and, and terminologies, and they'd use them loosely. Okay? So when Imam Tajuddin al-Subki titles a bunch of people Ash'ari, it means in agreement with the Ash'ari principles. And this is something that will be clarified by his own words later on in the video. At the end of, at the end of these screenshots, Imam Tajuddin al-Subki clarifies this. However, for everyone 
to know right now when he says that they are Ash'ari it, it means that they agree even if they don't title themselves Ash'ari when you look at their Aqeedah they're in agreement with the, the Ash'ari Madhab which is the you see you see the waff you see all the waffling and all the you know avoiding again the thorns that I keep that I keep, that I keep poking you that I keep poking you Wallah al azim something ajeeb وسأريد بعضا من أئمة المذهب المالكي الذين كانوا من أهل السنة والجماعة مبتدئا بإمامهم رضي الله عنه إمام دار الهجرة الفقيه المحدث البارع الإمام مالك بن أنس. So I'm going to mention to you right now this I'm quoting a scholar. I'm going to mention to you right now the imams of the madhab al-Maliki that were upon أهل السنة والجماعة not the Ash'ari, not the one that he's claiming the Ash'ari. Beginning with their Imam, the Imam of Dar al Hijra, the Faqih, the Muhaddith. <laughs> Remember, he was telling you in the beginning, jurists, Muhaddithin, Muhaddithin don't know what they're talking about. I told you, there's uh, as if there are no scholars that do both. Huh? He was a Faqih and a Muhaddith, Imam Malik bin Anas. Uh, he was, an, I'm gonna go to the English right away. He was an Imam from the Imam of the Salaf, of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, and the ones who are followed in this, in this regard. Uh, and he became upset when one of the innovators asked him about the modality of Allah's tran uh, transcendence over the throne. And Imam Malik became quiet and he said, Istiwa is known and the modality is unknown and believing in it is an obligation. And you you know, I see that you're one of these mubtadi'ah. And this is the jawab of the Imam is actually a principle when it comes to all of the names and attributes of Allah. This is one of the principles that we Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah follow when it comes to name, name and attributes of Allah. All of them, we say, look, the apparent meaning we accept. However, we don't enter into the modality. As for the students of the Imam, Imam Malik, who were from the Imams of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, who were not Ash'aris. Huh? He made you, he said that Subki said he doesn't know, he does not know of any Maliki who is not an Ash'ari. Imam al-Shafi'i is a student of Imam Malik who was not an Ash'ari. Abdurrahman ibn al-Qasim, Abdullah ibn Wahab, al-Ashhab, Asad ibn al-Furat, Abdul Malik ibn Abdul Aziz al-Masjoon, Bishr ibn Umar, Yahya al-Layfi, Abu Mus'ab al-Zuhri, Abdullah ibn Muslima al-Qu'nabi, Waki' ibn Jarrah al-Ruwasi wa ghayrihim. And also, uh, وَأَمَّا أَتْبَعُ مَذَبِي الْكِبَارِ الْجَهَابِذَ فَلَمْ يَكُونُوا أَشَاعِرًا بَلَا إِمَّا سَلَفِيِّينَ أَهْلِ سُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ And as for the, uh, his followers from among the major scholars, they were not Ash'ira. They were Imams of, uh, Salafi Imams from Ahl Sunnah Wal-Jama'ah. Like Imam Al-Malikiyya fi zamanihi, uh, Qadi Baghdad, Imam Al-Mashur, Ismail bin Ishaq, uh, Al-Qadi Ahmad, Ahfad Al-Imam Al-Thabt, uh, Hamad ibn Zayd. وَأَمَامِ الْمَالِكِيَّ فِي الْعِرَاقِ فِي زَمَنِ الْقَادِ عَبْدِ الْوَهَابِ الْمَالِكِ So I'm, I'm naming all of these who were all non-Ash'aris, non-Ash'aris. وَالْإِمَامُ أَبُوْ بَكْرِ مُحَمَّدْ بِنْ وَهَبْ الْمَالِكِي وَأَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ أَبُوْ عَبْدُ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْمَشْهُورِ بِإِبْنْ أَبِي زَمْنِينَ وَحَافِذْ الْمَغْرِبْ إِمَامِ الْأَنْدَلُسْ أَبُوْ عُمَرْ ابْنْ عَبْدِ الْبَرْ and also الحافظ أبو عمر الدائي and others and others والحمد لله all of the ulama of the Maghrib, they did not discuss uh, uh, speculative theology. They did not enter into ilm al-kalam. But they had mastered uh, fiqh and hadith. Uh, and Imam al-Zahabi said uh, they did not enter, they did not discuss the matters of, of the, you know, the, the logic and the rationales. And such were the Asili and Abu Walid bin al-Fardi and uh, Abu Amr al-Talamankai wa Makki al-Qaisi wa Abu Amr al-Dani wa Abu Amr Abdul al-Bar and all the ulama. This is in Seer Ulama al-Anbiya. All of these people, according to Subki, he did not. So everyone who attributed himself to the Maliki Madhab was an Ash'ari because Subki met Ash'ari ones and he used the term loosely. How dare you make such a lie? You clearly... Try to protect yourself by saying, oh, he was using a Lucy, meaning he didn't say they were Ash'aris, but in reality they agreed with some of the things of the Sha'ara. Ya akhi, wallah al-azim, it's something else. Ala kulli hal, this is a long time uh, recording. I'm going to have to take a pause, and inshallah I will uh, record the continuation of this uh, in a different session. May Allah Azza wa Jal facilitate. Wallah al-musta'an. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, for you, if you watch one video, it's probably going to be all together. We'll see, inshallah. All right, here we go. 
the, in agreement with the madhab of the Salaf al-Salih and the understanding of the Salaf and the Quran and the Sunnah. So he says, we don't know of any Maliki. إِذْ لَا نَحْفَظُ Maliki. And what does that mean? We don't know of any Maliki because Imam Tajuddin al-Subki was a historian and he was a biographer and his book is written uh, of, of the biography of a bunch of different scholars. And so he says, every time I come across a Maliki scholar, every time I see they're always a shari. Or they always, you know, I look at their aqidah and I write down whether they're part from Ahl Sunnah or they're not. And I have to look at their aqidah. When I look at their aqidah, they're in line with the Ashari Madhab. They're all Ashari, right? So he's saying that the Malikiyah, they're the ones who are most, you know, exclusive to the Ashari Madhab. And so I've proven to you, I've named all the other scholars that are Maliki that are not Ashari. And but to base this entire thing on a statement of Imam Subki is ob on his observation and to make the facts or the truth versus falsehood dependent on a, per a person's observation is absolutely ludicrous. There are others from different madhabs who have fell into, you know, a different sect, such as... Who have fallen into. I, I hope when you, you're, you can make a distinction between the present tense, the past tense, and the past participle. Yeah, so you have, they have fallen whenever, you, whenever fall comes with have or had or has, it becomes uh, fallen and not ha has fell. But you don't need the English class. You need a class in Aqidah. With the Mu'tazila sect or Ira Tashbih, which means the sect of the Mushabbiha, which uh, those who liken Allah to his, uh, who likened Allah to his creation. He says there are people from the different madhabs who have fell into that, but the Malikis, they've been safe from that. So what is this showing us? It's showing us that the majority of the Malikis, and this is Imam Tajuddin al-Subki from the year 770. So from, from, from the beginning, all the way till 770, everyone who attributed themselves to the Maliki Madhab in, 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 in their understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, that, you know, when the scholars, when they looked at the Quran and Sunnah and they came to a conclusion, they found that their conclusion is in line with the principles that Imam Malik had already put down. And they said, we agree with Imam Malik's principles of how to understand the Quran and Sunnah. So they call themselves Malikis. He's saying that every single one of them for this many hundred years has been Ash'ari. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> how does he know? How does he know? How does he know the aqidah of each and every one? He could speak about the people during his era. He can also speak about the scholars from the time of Imam Malik. Imam Malik, the Imam of the, the Imam who refuted the Ash'ari. The Imam who explicitly acknowledged istiwa and considered the one who asked the question about it to be a mubtadi' and then you guys follow the aqidah of those who question these matters of aqidah constantly and because of questioning them you are forced to distort the teachings of Islam in order to justify answers that are in line with your logic therefore going against Imam Malik rahimahullah tooth and nail how does that even work, Ya Umar? Ya Umar, Ittaqillah, Ya Umar. To say that Imam Subki was referring to all of these people and they were all taken from Imam Malik. Imam Malik, I've already quoted the incident when the man entered. So that is a lie against Imam Malik, Rahimullah. It's a lie against the Maliki Madhab. It's a lie against the ulama of the Ummah. And it's just one of the many lies that the Ash'ira have uh, made lawful for themselves very much like the taqiyya of the Shia. Just like the Shia find it permissible for them to lie in order to justify and defend their aqidah. So they have this in front of a Sunni, they say, la la, we Abu Bakr, mashallah, radiallahu anhu ardah, and radiallahu an Umar, but then between themselves they curse them. This is the same thing as these Ash'aris. They justify lying because it is more important for them to defend the false aqidah they have concocted than to believe what they are expected to believe because they have fallen into so much tashbih. And because they have fallen into so much tashbih, they're forced to come up with so many lies to prove that they don't have any tashbih and therefore they've created their own problem and they try to solve their own, uh, they try to solve the problem they created and they fell into a bigger problem. And then they accuse us of having all these issues which we don't have. Wallahi haja gariba ya amil haq. Or has agreed with the Ash'ari principles. So it shows, uh, you know, a good majority there. Imam Ibn A good majority there. Look at the choice of words of this brother, huh? Look how he tries to uh, uh, dupe you and deceive you. 
a good first it was all the scholars all the scholars from the time of Imam Malik until the Subki until the time of Imam Subki all of them that he came across were in line with the Ash'ari and now it's a good majority of them mm, that's that's a lot of change within three seconds Hajar al Haytami, rahimahullah, he says, What is meant by Sunnah, and this is coming way later, showing what I'm trying to show here is that for so many years, hundreds of years, the majority of the scholars and Ahl Sunnah has been the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. It hasn't been anything else. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. I don't want to reply to every single word. So, all these years, there were only Ash'ari and Maturidi, there was no one else. So, the Atharis, or, or aka the Salafis, were out of the picture. There was no one upholding the aqidah of the belief in Allah, His names and attributes without tashbih, without ta'atid, without tahrif. They, they were no such people. And without tamthil. They were no such people according to you. Everybody was on the aqidah of Imam uh, Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. And you expect the Muslims to believe you. No, really though. Really though. Even your most staunch Ash'aris will not make... Uh, uh, an, an exaggerated claim like this to claim that they were not existent in spite of the Prophet وسلم, saying that they would remain a group of the Ummah and that is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah the real Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah the one that you've dismissed from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah or conveniently you include them to make them the you know the add-on to the Asl and the Asl is supposedly you and the Maturidis that is a grave grandiose Lie. It's been the Ash'ari school and the Maturidi school. And we say Ash'ari and Maturidi as titles. Watch, watch, watch. Now watch the, the, the patching up. Every time he makes a claim, he realizes this is such an outrageous claim. Even, even feeble-minded people are not going to understand it. So he immediately catches himself and tries to do a little patching. Watch the patch. But they are, but they are both, both in agreement with each other in what is uh, in the principles of Aqidah, which we're going to get into. Uh, right no, we will get this, this. we will get into to show you the differences between the uh, the fundamental differences between the Maturidis and the uh, Ash'aris soon, inshallah. But that's coming. Section, inshallah. Ibn Hajar al Haytami says, "What is meant by the term as Sunnah? Right? What is meant by Ahl Sunnah uh, is is the Aqidah that the two Imams of Ahl Sunnah were upon, Shaykh Abu Hassan al Ashari and Abu, Su Abu Mansur al Maturidi. And he says, and bid'ah innovation is what the groups of innovators who deviated from the Aqidah of these two Imams and all of their followers. No. All right, let's stop over here. First of all, who is Ibn Hajar al Haytami? First of all, it's 974." <laughs> 900 years, 900 years, almost a thousand years after the Hijrah. Quoting someone from a thousand years after the Hijrah. Uh, a sheikh who had a decent effort, suppose, in refuting Shia, but allowed tawassul and was a hardcore Ash'ari, and he even criticized Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah. First, وسلم, he was of the, the opinion that it is permissible to. Seek uh, to make dua via the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to uh, to seek intercession through the uh, through the Prophet sallam make dua through the intercession of the Prophet sallam he says in Hashiyat al Idah and wal Jawhar at Tawassul bihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam hasanun fi kulli halin qabla khalqihi wa بعد خلقه said seeking Making dua to Allah through the Prophet ﷺ is good in every occasion before his creation and after his creation. في الدنيا والآخرة and the dunya and in the akhira. Secondly, he also had the aqidah of the Ash'aris when it came to the uh, false interpretation of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَوَصْفُهُ هَذَا الْمَذْهَبِ بِأَنَّهُ الْأَحْكَمُ وَالْأَعْلَمُ As we will discuss. And him claiming that this, he will say it later also, that this madhab is better and more knowledgeable. He said, وَجَبَ تَأْوِيلِهِ عَلَى مَا هُوَ الْمَعْرُوفِ مِنْ مَذْهَبِ الْخَلَفِ الَّذِي هُوَ أَحْكَمُ وَأَعْلَمُ خِلَافًا لِفِرْقَةٍ ضَلُّوا عَنِ الْحَقِّ وَارْتَكَبُوا عَظَائِمَ مِنَ الْجِهَةِ وَالتَّسْيِيمِ الَّذَيْنِ هُمَا كُفْرٌ عِنْدَ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءَ أَعَانَ اللَّهُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ بِمَنِّهِ وَكَرَمِهِ So, this individual he's quoting is a hardcore Ash'ari. He claims that those who don't do the ta'wil, like they do, some of the scholars even pass takfir on them and he is making dua that Allah saves them. 
So watch how he's constantly quoting Ash'ari scholars to justify Ash'ari positions. And that does, it does not work this way. Uh, if, if I want to get a testimony about the strength of the Mercedes car, I need the testimony of the other manufacturers. If, if the uh, Mercedes engineer is constantly praising and proving the, uh, the superiority of the Mercedes, then that, that really doesn't prove anything because you have to compare this to the competitors. You have to have something else to judge it against. Otherwise, it's all internal. So quoting Ash'aris the whole time, and not only Ash'ari, and Ash'ari who actually uh, he promotes seeking uh, and making dua to Allah through the Prophet ﷺ, which we believe is shirk in the first place, his opinion is useless and irrelevant in the first place. Notice how he mentions all of their followers because the aqidah is not made up of two people and it's like we're following these two people instead of the Quran and Sunnah. This is not what that means. That is what it means. Actually, you are following these two people. You are following Al-Ash'ari and Al-Maturidi and not even following Al-Ash'ari anymore because he does not even believe that. You're technically following the ex-belief of a man who was once a Mu'tazili and then you're following another individual and you're departing from the Quran and the Sunnah because you will not find, you will not find evidence to support that. Rather, you will find evidences from Ibn Mas'ud and others that clearly prove that Allah is above His creation. The hadith of Zainab bin Jahash, the hadith of the Jari and Sahih Muslim, the hadith of uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, all of them are explicitly mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal is above the heavens. What it means is these two people, you know, the, the, the madhab, the methodology, the school of... Listen to the funny waffling right now. Listen, listen how, for you to justify to the Muslims that they have to follow some two individuals that came two, three hundred years after the Prophet Wasallam and claim that this is what you need to believe so you can be saved by Allah. You need a lot of waffling for the people to believe you. So here it is. Thought is named after these two people and it's agreed upon by the thousands of scholars who came after them. They all had, again, again, I mentioned before that they all had independent minds. They all had independent minds. It was, look at the lie, the, 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 the lie. All thousands of scholars agreed with them and unanimously agreed on the aqeedah of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari and al-Maturidi. And by Allah, you know that you're not telling the truth. Even you yourself, you know that you're telling the truth. How? They all came to certain conclusions and when they found that their conclusions agreed with the principles of this scholar, they say, okay, he was the pioneer of, this, of these principles. He kind of put these all together like this. And so when their, when their understandings and conclusions agreed with them, then they titled themselves Ash'ari. And it's an attribution to, to that Imam. And that Imam followed. <laughs> they, then they titled themselves Ash'ari and it's an attribute. <laughs> Please, brother, please. I'm sorry. You don't, there, there isn't anything I need to respond with because even, even Ash'aris are probably thinking, dude, that is so lame. That is so illogical. Oh, like, they're, you know, they came up with their own aqidah and then, it, oh, it happens to agree with this guy over there. Okay, we're going to call ourselves, you know, we're going to name ourselves after him. Isha there, Sheikh. Followed the Quran and the Sunnah and gave the correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. And it wasn't just him, it's all the thousands of scholars who agreed on that understanding as well. Thousands so of scholars who agreed. I'm still waiting for your proof, Akhi. I'm waiting for the receipts. Omar, bring the receipts. I know you're, you're watching people making refutations against you, like at Damashqiyah, and you've refuted and you're, you're answering back. I ask you, spare us from all this and bring the receipts of this ijma' on the aqidah of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi. Bring the ijma' that you've been claiming from the beginning of a video. 41 minutes you've been repeating the same lie. It fits in line with the, the majority of the scholars who specialize in the field. This was, uh, this was the, the majority understanding. And mm. I just wanted to make that clear that when he says that, uh, you know, talking and saying that it's the aqidah of the two imams, it's not the aqidah of just these two imams. He also mentions and all of their uh, and all of their followers. This is Imam Azuddin ibn Amr. Yes, all of their followers, not all of the other scholars. This is the aqidah of the two Imams and all of their followers, not the two. So look, he said the, the Subki, the Haytami, 
The Haytham, he says something and you say something else. You're saying it was the Aqeedah of those two Imams and the thousands of scholars who agreed with them. And he tells you it's these two Imams and their followers. <laughs> Busted. Gotcha. He says, uh, he, he mentions that the Shafi'iyya, the Maliki, the Hanafiyya, and what's called Fudala ul Hanabila, the Fudala, the virtue. Mm. So listen, I just want to comment on the previous one. You can tell, by the way, by, you can tell he's lying by his body movement and his eyes. Look at this lie. All, all of the thousands of scholars agreed with Ash'ari and Maturidi. You, should, you, 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 uh, you admitted yourself he was a Mu'tazili. So you're making the aqeedah of the whole ummah dependent on a man who came hundreds of years later. Who you know is not infallible by virtue of him being a Mu'tazili at some point, which is clear-cut kufr according to many of the scholars uh, and who has he was a deviant and he repented how how could that be the case so now he's going to speak about imam ibn uh, abd salam now she let's see what uh, uh, what's going to happen here or the honorable the virtuous of the hanbalis were ash'ari right now again ash'ari over here means the the uh, you know there's there's uh, a little bit of loose usage of the the video was cut Allahu alam what kind of editing they had to do for the blunder that he made there because he's constantly trying to patch things up maybe the patch uh, uh, it wasn't patchy enough so they had to cut the video and now you know resume it you could tell by the editing that some blunder happened over there and because he's always trying to give you some logic logical uh, validation for why you should be called ash'ari or maturidi Knowing very well that that could not have been the aqeedah of the Prophet ﷺ or, or Ibn Umar or Ibn Mas'ud or Umar or Abu Bakr or Uthman or Ali or, any, or Abu Huraira. It couldn't have been the aqeedah of any of these uh, virtual sahaba. So how does he justify it? Waffle. The word Ash'ari here. It means whoever agrees with the principles of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari in Aqeedah. And this is going to become clear later on, but I'm just reiterating that. so that Yeah, you have to reiterate it because <laughs> you know that you're in trouble and that you're just coming up with lies as you go along. Or maybe you studied them. Um, you know, there's no confusion. This is, uh, this is what he says, that the Shafi'is, the Malikis, the Hanf Han Hanafis, and the, uh, the virtuous of the Hanbalis. The virtuous of the Hanbalis. Why? Because of, uh, a lot of the Hanbali scholars fell into the you know mistake of likening Allah to His creation. A lot of the Hanbali scholars fell into the mistake of likening Allah to His creation. There isn't a single Ham. Look, the Hanabila by Aqida, we are a, a part of our creedal belief and statement is min ghairi tashbih wala tamthil without likening Allah to His creation without resembling Allah to creation. This is part and parcel of our belief system that we teach. If you don't believe me, go to my playlist on al aqid al wasitiyah and see for yourself clearly and explicitly what I'm saying. We don't believe in likening Allah to creation. We are firm believers in laysa kamithli shay. There's nothing like unto him. Do you know anything or anyone that is like Allah? Absolutely not. The fact that we affirm what Allah affirmed for Himself and we affirm what the Prophet ﷺ affirmed for Allah does not make us mushabbiha. It makes us believers in the apparentness of the text, which is what is expected of you as a believer. Because if you don't believe in the apparentness of the text, you're going to fall into the very things that you fell into in this very video of yours. Where you came to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he explicitly said about the one who does khuruj, you said, kill him. You said, kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, kill him and you said, kill him with knowledge. You had to do that. You had to distort and, and, and deny and uh, mess up the hadith. You cannot take anything face value anymore. You're forced to go through this. You know, a uh, roller coaster of game playing to justify your belief. You can no longer take anything according to the apparentness because you're going to find a figurative explanation that suits you better. And this is, uh, you know, the mistake of the Hanbali. So he says that the ones who didn't fall into likening Allah to his creation and they didn't fall into that mistake, they're considered the virtuous of the Hanbalis. So he puts them with, he kind of separates between the two and says that they all agreed, all of these people. 
agreed with the principles of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. What he's trying to show is that the majority of the scholars, from the Hanafis, the Shafi'is, and the Malikis, and some of the scholars of the Hanbalis to show that the Hanbalis don't have their own Aqidah. It's not like if you're Hanbali, you have your own Aqidah, or if you know, you're Hanbali, you have to differ. He's showing, he's showing that you can be Hanbali in fiqh and have the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah as well. You can look at, the, look at the, uh, the twisting of things now. Notice this entire video, he's making you believe that when he speaks about the Madhahib, he is actually linking and combining Aqidah with fiqh. So when he says Malikis or Shafi'is or whatever, the entire time he's given you the impression that this is a, an agreement between Aqidah and Fiqh. Conveniently making you think that all of these people are from an Aqidah point of view are, are Shafi'i, Maliki and Hanafi. Now when it's convenient for him to make a distinction, which is what I've, the distinction I've held from the beginning of this refutation is that I make a distinction between Fiqh and Aqidah. And somebody could be Hanafi in fiqh and Athari in aqidah. He could be Shafi in fiqh and be Athari in aqidah. Or somebody could be Hanbali in fiqh and can still be an Ashari in aqidah. That's not rocket science, that's a given. You are the one who've been deceiving the, your crowd and, your, and the, the viewers into thinking that those two are one and the same. And now when it's convenient, you're making a distinction. Regardless, Imam Ibn, uh, Ibn Abd al-Salam, uh, one of the shuyukh of the Shafi'iyyah, he was another Ash'ari whom he's using to justify deviance. And we know the issues of Ibn Abd salam First of all, he was Sufi and he used to dance and listen to music. He was harsh against the Salafis. So by, by you quoting an Ash'ari who was known for being a, an amazing dancer and who enjoyed banging his head to music, you're really not bringing anything to the table by using another Ash'ari to justify the Ash'ari Madhab. That is pathetic, yeah, Captain. From the beginning of the video until now, you keep quoting Ash'ari scholars to claim that the Ash'ari way is the way to do. They are Ash'ari in the first place because they do believe that. And they're deviant because they believe that. And them th saying that everybody should believe the same doesn't ma make a difference because I am saying, and all the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, I'm not a scholar, but Ahl Sunnah scholars will tell you the same thing. Yeah, we are the truth. And we are upon the truth. And you're obliged to follow us and everybody else is deviant. You can have the Aqidah of the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. This is, uh, you know, he's showing the majority of the scholars essentially um, have this agreement. The same thing with Imam Ibn al-Hajib, uh, who was considered the Shaykh al-Malikiyah, the leader of the Malikis. And the one we just mentioned was the Shaykh al-Shafi'iyah of his time, the leader of the Shafi'is and this was in the year 500 the year 600 and the leader of the Hanafis over here um, in the year 600 as well you have uh, Imam Abdul Karim Ibn al-Hawzan al-Qushayri from the year 400 and he said the scholars of Hadith Qushayri is another Ash'ari scholar <laughs> Wallahi this is getting annoying yeah yeah in his time the scholars of Hadith have agreed that, Imam, that Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari was one of the leaders of the scholars of Hadith. And his madhab in Aqidah, right, his, uh, his Aqidah madhab is the madhab or Aqidah of the Hadith scholars. That he's showing that in, uh, in, the, in the year 400, the majority of the Hadith scholars have agreed that his madhab represents the Hadith and the Quran the best. The Quran and Hadith is what I mean. I would like to remind you that Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari repented from that uh, uh, اعتزال, and then he repented from Ash'ariyah and he became an Athari, full-fledged. So whenever you even hear those uh, uh, statements, they could be in reference to after his repentance or, as in this case, when it comes from uh, uh, Ash'ari Sheikh, then naturally he's going to agree with them and say that he is the Imam to be followed. Dur means Ashab al-Hadith, right? That, um, you know, the, the scholars of Hadith, the people of Hadith, his madhab is in agreement with, with the Qur'an and Sunnah. This is what this muhaddith is saying here. And this is from the year 400. You have Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi. He says, verily the Ash'ari, the Ash'ariyah, right? The, uh, the, the Ash'ari madhab are the leaders of Ahlul Sunnah and the defenders of the Sharia, right? So totally. This individual totally, this Imam al-Shirazi, he passed takfir on anybody who is an Ash'ari. According to this Shirazi, if you're not an Ash'ari, you're a Kafir. So technically, if, you're, if you follow any other Aqidah, other than the Aqidah of the Ash'ari is, not only he's a deviant, but he's also a Kafir. So uh, constantly quoting 
Ash'ari extremists to justify Ash'arism is the most pathetic approach to academia I've ever seen in my life. You should seriously consider retiring from this. I think you're new to the scene. You shouldn't be on YouTube. You shouldn't be making videos. You shouldn't be speaking about this matter. You should be right now sleeping with a pacifier next to you because that's what you belong, little baby. You're talking about matters that are far beyond you and far ahead of you and far greater than you and you're constantly lying and deceiving and uh, deluding others into believing that you're bringing something to the table just because you're able to read some of these texts in Arabic. And you're deceiving the people by not telling them that those are Ash'ari scholars that you're quoting in the first place. Praising, praising the Ash'ari Ash madhab all, all the way from, from early, early on, on and it goes, goes you know all the way on we'll, we'll get to a little bit later reports uh, in a bit he says and the defenders of Sharia so whoever tries to you know throw uh, you know blame to them or dispraise them or curse them out or refute them is trying to refute Ahlus Sunnah is trying to throw blame upon Ahlus Sunnah is trying to uh, you know smear the name of Ahlus Sunnah mm, mm. that's that's for whoever is trying to smear the name of the Ash'aris is trying to smear the name of uh, of Ahlus Sunnah. This is also Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi as well. He says, uh, he's talking about, he's talking about Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, the leader of Ahlus Sunnah, and he says, that the majority of the scholars of the Shafi'i Madhab are upon his methodology in Aqidah. Why? Because the Shafi'i scholars agreed with his principles. They, they were, they were Shafi'i scholars of Fuqaha. This is why, why is he mentioning why are the scholars, and this, this ties into what I said at the beginning, why are the scholars mentioning titles of fiqh? Why are they mentioning titles of fiqh? Saying that the fuqaha, because it's the fuqaha that matter. It's their understanding of the Quran and Sunnah that we have to take. It's, it's them who we look to, because they had the, the, the capability to understand the Quran and Sunnah in the correct and most authentic way. So he says that the majority of the scholars of the Shafi'i Madhab, they're all upon his Madhab. Uh, they're all upon the Madhab of Abu Hassan al Ash'ari. And he says, وَمَذْهَبُهُ مَذْهَبُ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ That his madhab is, is the, his, his methodology is the methodology of the truth. So, again, you know, throughout, throughout all of this, I'm trying to show this throughout the history of Islam, the scholars who are specialized in the field of understanding the Qur'an and the Sunnah have all agreed upon, the majority of them have held the agreement that the Qur'an and Sunnah is to be understood. They all agreed, the majority agreed. An immediate correction because he knows that he cannot claim that they all agreed. And especially when you're constantly quoting Ash'ari scholars. The principles that, uh, that are in line with the principles of the Ash'ari Madhab. Right? And we'll get to some of those principles uh, in a few, inshallah. And then we have from a sort of recent times, this was just before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab you know, and, his, and his whole da'wah you know, started spreading and everything. This is a How much does it hurt them, the da'wah of Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah? Wallahi, he is like a, he is like a, a, a thorn in the, th in, the, in the throats of these people. They hate him so much, so much hatred, so much enmity so much dispraise to this person because he destroyed their, their principles. He called them out for their kufriyat and shirkiyat. He destroyed the graves that they were worshipping and they continued to worship until now. He brought tawheed to the Muslims, brought them back to calling on Allah Azza wa alone, worshipping Allah alone, loving Allah alone, fearing Allah alone, seeking intercession from no one except through their good deeds or the legislated aspects of seeking intercession I've explained as I've explained in the lecture Tawassul which you could find on YouTube and you could watch my lecture about uh, uh, Wahhabism the horn of Satan on YouTube and you could watch my lecture Sufism about Sufis on YouTube because conveniently this person that he's quoting right now I will tell you more about it in a second but the Imam Muhammad al Wahhab is something that they cannot they cannot deal with because he destroyed them and, and his da'wah was so pure that Allah blessed it so much that it spread so much that they have, they have sleepless nights, those cowards. They have sleepless nights because of Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab alayhi rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar. Al-Murtaba al-Zabidi from the year 1205 and he says when the term Ahlus Sunnah is used it refers to the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. This is showing that for <laughs> قال عبد الحي الكتاني about الزبيدي الحنفي مذهبا he is Hanafi in, in jurisprudence القادري إرادة 
النقش بندي سلوكا الأشعري عقيدة هكذا يصف نفسه في كثير من إنجازاته التي وقفت عليها بخطه So this individual explicitly is نقش بندي in his طريقة of Sufism and his أشعري and his عقيدة So the continuous deception of quoting أشعري عقيدة who tell you that the right عقيدة is أشعرية Ya Captain. That long throughout the history of Islam. And every time he he repeats the same lie. That long throughout the history of Islam. All the Sahaba and all the Tabi'een, Mujahid and Ikrimah uh, 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 and all these Mufassireen among the Tabi'een and everybody, you know, who else uh, do we think about that comes to mind when we speak about those? All of these people were... Ash'aris. They all were Ash'aris. Before Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari was even there, somehow, some way, they were Ash'aris. When you see Ahlul Sunnah anywhere in the anywhere in the past scholars' books, you see Ahlul Sunnah, it refers to Ash'aris and Maturidis. Okay? This is what the this is what the scholars are saying all the way up until just recently. And he quotes from a book. Uh, that was written by a scholar from the year 800. So you have from 800 to 1200. And this book over here, he says, they, Ahlul Sunnah, are the Ash'aris. They, in reference to the Ahlul Sunnah, because it's a commentary of a shorter book. And in this commentary, he comments on the statement of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And he says, Wahum al Ash'ira, that they are the Ash'ira. Wahada hu al Mashhuru, that this is what is well known in the lands of uh, Khurasan, in Iraq in Syria and in most other lands. In, in most of the lands, the fuqaha, the scholars, right, they are a sha'ira, they are a sha'ira. That this is what Ahlul Sunnah is. That, you know, some, you know, somebody wants to try and criticize Ahlul Sunnah. It's like, well, this is what Islam has been. The scholars of Islam, this is what we have, uh, uh, you know, as Islam. So saying that, oh, they weren't from, uh, you're just trying to kick out, you know, the history of Islam. This is our history. That's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to kick out the history of Islam by claiming that everybody was Ash'ari and, and the, the Atharis were non-existent. It's as though the Atharis were non-existent and they were not considered, they were invaluable, they were not valuable, I'm sorry, they were, because invaluable because they have the opposite meaning. Uh, they, were, they were negligible, they're just, you know, they're, I don't know, they're like foam on the, on the surface of the ocean, on the uh, surface of the sea, on the wave. Excuse me, that's not a lie. That is not a lie. You're, you're literally doing this, the very thing that you're claiming is being done to you. At least we're honest. The difference between you and us is that we are honest, truthful people and you are a liar. I will, ele- I will, I will admit and confess that there has been many Ash'ari scholars from among the great scholars of Islam who happen to be Ash'ari and Aqeedah. It's a big problem, but we acknowledge that there was, there's always been the Atharis and the Ash'aris and the Maturidis and not always been actually up until they, they came into existence. So we don't dismiss your existence, but you're dismissing ours. You lie. You're deceiving the people into making it seem that it was always been the Ash'aris and the Maturidis and we were just not, on, not even on the map. We're not even on the map. By quoting an Ash'ari scholar who claims the same thing. History. This is who the scholars were. So anyways, this is what he's saying that in these lands, the Ash'ari are the more popular ones. And then he says, wa diyari ma wara Talking about like uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, these these areas, he's saying that uh, Ahlul Sunnah is the Maturidis. They are considered Ahlul Sunnah over there, and we'll get to it again towards the end that the Ash'aris and the Maturidis are one and the same. They they differ on very few things, but their principles are the same, and that's what we're talking about when we use the word Ash'ari and we use the word Maturidi. It's the principles that are behind these madhabs. And then we have Abu Abbas al-Hanafi, and he says that the majority of the scholars of uh, the Shafi'i madhab took from the madhab of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, and the Shafi'is wrote many books based upon the madhab of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, right? And and he says, uh, some of our companions, because Abu, uh, Abu Abbas al-Hanafi was a Hanafi scholar. طيب, so, uh, Imam Abu Abbas al-Hanafi, uh, actually, the, here we, he, we're going to mention the difference between the, uh, the Hanafis, I'm sorry, between the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. تمام? They differ 
Oh, or wait, let me let him speak first. And he says that some of our scholars, we, we took from Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari as well, but we believe that Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari was wrong in a few different matters. And he mentions, like, for example, the Taqween, which is something that is different between the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. They have this differing opinion. But like I said before, their principles are the same. This is what keeps them within Ahl Sunnah. So we'll get to just now, um, you know, why are we, why is the Ash'aris and the Maturidis and, you know, uh, the Ahl Hadith, why are they considered part of Ahl Sunnah? It's because their principles and their, you know, their usul is in agreement with each other. And they're no. So, first of all, they're not in agreement with each other. The Hanafis, I'm sorry, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis have a lot of common denominators and common fundamental principles that, that all are deviant, whereas Ahl Sunnah, the true Ahl Sunnah, the Atharis, don't share those, with, uh, share those with them. And therefore, that's why we consider ourselves to be the true Ahl Sunnah because we truly stick to the Sunnah and we dismiss and we uh, uh, excommunicate the Ash'aris and the Maturidis from that and plus you know that this is a proof against you the fact that you're acknowledging you're claiming that the aqidah you need to meet allah with is the, that of ash'ari and maturidi and now you're claiming and, and and i'm sorry you're admitting that there are differences between them is the biggest evidence that they are infallible and that they uh, the fact that there's a difference between the uh, Ash'aris and the Maturidis is the biggest proof against you that they're infallible, therefore they cannot be from the Quran and the Sunnah. They cannot be from the revelation because the revelation of Allah is infallible. Ash-Shari'a fiha al-Isma. Ash-Shari'a ma'asuma. So the very distinction between the Ash'aris and the Maturidis is the biggest refutation against you. Secondly, brothers and sisters, there are 12 matters which they differ on and uh, that they are upon uh, that they are uh, they are 12 matters which prove that they are not upon the way of the salaf as all of these differences are philosophical kalami nature kalami i.e. I, I, from ilmul kalam speculative, uh, speculative theology look at this man look at the difference between the, the ash'aris and the maturidis they differed on knowing Allah the intent of Allah the kalam of Allah. The Maturi disclaim Allah's speech cannot be heard. The Maturi disclaim Allah's speech cannot be heard. Rather, what symbolizes it is heard instead. Huh? You cannot hear the speech of Allah because if you said that Allah has a speech, you're likening Allah to his creation. Look at these fools, man. Look at these fools. If you affirm Allah's speech, you're likening Allah to his creation because we have speech. So therefore, there's no really speech. You're, you're hearing what symbolizes the speech of Allah. It's not actually the speech. Of, Allah's speech cannot be heard. Ya akhwan, uqsum billah. How does anybody in his right mind become an Ash'ari or a Maturidi is beyond me. Is beyond me. Ah, so... Musa السلام, heard sounds and letters according to them. He heard sounds and letters Allah created to denote his speech. He did not hear the speech of Allah directly. Ash'aris claim Musa, this was the Maturidis. The Ash'aris claim Musa heard Allah's inner speech and it happened by creating some means of acquisition in the listener. Meaning Allah spoke internally, not with sound. And Allah created a tool within Musa so that he hears. <laughs> you see what happens when you open the door of philosophy to understand the Quran and the Sunnah? Look at all this, look at all this, you know, uh, waffling. Look at all this uh, playing around with the deed of Allah. Look at, at the distortion. And the misinterpretation and the misrepresentation of the purity of the revelation of the Quran and the Sunnah with these, with these idiots. Excuse my French, those idiots that look into the revelation and then they use Aristotle uh, philosophy and Plato philosophy and they try to understand the revelation via their feeble minds, their illogic, which they consider to be the, the asal. And that which is given precedence over the naql, the aql is given precedence over the naql, the mind goes beyond and before the, the textual evidence. Yeah, jama'at al khair. They differed on taqween. They differed on burdening a soul beyond its scope. They differed whether Allah's actions have to be based on wisdom or not. And they differed on objective morality. All of these are differences between the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. And this brother, the entire video makes it seem as, Oh, Ash'ari, Maturidis, we're like, we're just a little difference between us. One has extra spice. 
One comes with bread. Uh, one, one you need to dip first in a, a, a sauce. Th these are fundamental differences between them. And all of these differences are against the usul of Ahl Sunnah. Therefore, you're not Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah to begin with. Neither the Ash'aris nor the Maturidis. Because you cannot be dealing with the speech of Allah and you cannot be dealing with the qualities of Allah in this manner. You cannot be doubting th these matters of Aqeedah that are, that are established from the time of the Sahaba moving forward. That's just ridiculous. The usul are in agreement with each other. That's the biggest lie under the sun. Our usul is Quran, Sunnah and Ijma'ah. Ash'aris are based on what is rational to them. Ash'aris, they base it on what is rational to them. Then they fetch for evidence to support their intellectual views. So when they come across an evidence that oppose their intellect, they will distort it. Misinterpret it or claim they don't know its reality. So they do this so-called tafweed. To them, khabarul ahad, which is the uh, hadith which is narrated by a single chain, is speculative. And can't be used as evidence. So if there's an authentic hadith, but because it only came through one chain, they will consider the asal is that this hadith is speculative and you cannot use it as an evidence. Even though there are more ahad ahadith than mutawatir. So according to them, all of the ahadith actually do not provide, uh, do not provide uh, certainty. All, almost all of the ahadith in the, Quran, in the sunnah are speculative in nature. And require injecting uh, and the, interve the, in the intervention of the mind to judge whether this could be th from the Prophet ﷺ or not. They believe the follow that following the apparent meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah is from the principles of kufr. You wish you were the people of the Sunnah. Rasul is no different, even if they differ on uh, other matters that are, you know, uh, minor, minor issues. We have Al-Aziz ibn Abdul Salam and he says the Shafi'is, the Malikis, the Hanafis and some Hanbalis. I wrote over here on this translation explained in the video, which is what I explained before, about what Fulbala al Hanabila refers to, the, the virtuous of the Hanbalis, saying that it refers to those Hanbalis who didn't fall into likening Allah to his creation. Now, now he's recycling, huh, Ikhwan? When you, when you make a video an hour 40 minutes and then you, you quote so many, you, you see so many quotations, you say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, yani the brother brought around what, 40, 50 scholars? It's actually like seven or eight that he recycles. He quotes him and then another 20 minutes later he quotes the same sheikh and another 20 minutes he quotes the same sheikh to make you seem that he's quoting so many different scholars. It's literally the same group of Ash'ari scholars that he's using to justify Ash'ariya. He says that they agreed. They agreed on following the aqidah of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. And then you have Abdullah al-Muwahibi al-Hanbali who was a Hanbali scholar to again show that the Hanbali scholars also held this opinion that the Hanbali scholars also believed the Ash'aris were upon Ahl Sunnah al jamaah This is something that is shown by you know, the, the, the Salafi sect that we're trying to make this whole video about and show um, that they're inconsistent with the history of Islam. They're inconsistent with the understanding of these scholars. They're inconsistent with... We're inconsistent. I will prove that uh, otherwise. I'll prove otherwise in a moment. Wait, let it, yeah, I'll let you finish. The understanding of the Salaf. What we're trying to show is that they will commonly say that we are reviving the Hanbali Madhab. That we are followers of the Hanbali Madhab. No, we don't say that we're reviving the Hanbali Madhab, the Hanbali Madhab never died for us to revive it. And we're not blind, blind followers of the Hanbali Madhab and when we speak about the Hanbali Madhab, we're speaking about fiqh. We are speaking about the usul, uh, al-fiqh according to the Hanbali Madhab. As for aqidah, our aqidah is straight from the source. It is straight from the source. It's from the Quran and the Sunnah. Whether or not Imam Ahmad rahimahullah or Imam Malik or Imam Shafi or Imam Han Abu Hanifa, whether or not they agreed with it is irrelevant to us because we don't follow anybody blindly. And if any one of these four Imams oppose the Aqeed of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah or oppose the Aqeed of the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Adba Tabi'een, we will immediately ignore and dismiss that opinion of his. We will still show respect and admiration and, and, and appreciation for his work, but we're not going to follow him on that. So stop lying and saying that we're trying to revive the Hanbali Madhab. You always see uh, Imam Ahmed said this and Imam Ahmed said that and they try and quote Imam Ahmed as if they are Hanbalis. However, if you look at just before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab came, the Hanbali scholars considered the Ash'aris and the Maturidis as part of the Sunnah. So he says in this book, you know, this is from the year 1000, only 400 years ago, which is only 200 years before Ibn Abdul Wahab came and, and started spreading his ideas. He says over here that uh, the, the groups of Ahl Sunnah are three. You have the Ash'aris, the Hanbalis, and the Maturidis. Why did he say the Hanbalis and he didn't, uh, you know, you know uh, add them to the Ash'aris as well? It's because he's being literal with his ibarah. He's being, uh, you know, literal with his usage of the word Ash'ari. That 
the Ash'aris are one, the Maturidis are one. Notice how before they said that the Hanafis were also Ash'ari. He didn't, he didn't mean the Hanafis were Ash'ari, he meant the Hanafis were Maturidi, but he uses the word Ash'ari because they agreed with the Ash'ari principles. The same thing over here, uh, sorry, not the same thing over here, where the Hanbalis <laughs> is using the literal term, Ash'ari and Maturidiya. Whenever he wants, they're using it literally, whenever he wants, they're not, he speaks on behalf of the intention of the speaker. Yani the person he quotes, he also enters into his heart and tells you what he's referring to and what he was thinking when he said this word or that word. Yani Allah, that's some next level uh, uh, firasa, ya Sheikh. And uh, you've already uh, entered uh, the hearts of the people. And you know what they were referring to and what they were not referring to. Ajib. And Hanabila saying that each of them have their own, they, they, you know, they differ with each other on certain things. However, he says, Tawaif Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that Ahl Sunnah as a whole includes these three because these three all agree on the principles. They don't agree on the principles. Now we have two possibilities regarding this uh, Imam al muwahibi al hanbali Either this man is calling the Shaykh by other than his name to deceive us. Either this man, Umar, is calling the Shaykh by other than his name to deceive us because I searched thoroughly for this. Or he's talking about someone else. But if he is, and, and there's a confusion with the name. But if he is talking about someone else, how can the name of the book be the same as per the other Shaykh? Meaning, let me go back here. Okay. Al Ain wal Athar. Al Ain wal Athar. That is not the name of the author. So when I did the research, the name of the author was something different. Yet that is the correct name of the book. So either he is lying or. There's a blunder. Because if he's talking about if he's talking about someone else, he doesn't mean Abdullah al muwahibi al hanbali How can the name of the book be the same as per the other Shaykh? Needless to say, it was said about him, Kana Mashuran Bilaqab al Athari. He was known by the title Al Athari. And he had a valuable book named Al Ain wal Athar fi Aqaidi Ahl al Athar. Uh, it was also printed in Jami'at al-Imam Muhammad bin Saud. And he said, Rahimullah, in that book, which ironically he's referring to, uh, to this book, and he's referring, to, to referring it to this man, but this man's name not, does not match the name of the author of the book. So there's the confusion. He said, يحرم أو يحرم تأويل ما يتعلق به تعالى It is impermissible. I'm just going to go to the English. It is prohibited to do ta'wil to anything that is related to Allah Azza wa Jal and, uh, and doing tafsir of that. Such as the ayah of istiwa, such as the ayah of Allah rising over the throne. Wa hadith nuzul and the hadith of the, uh, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal descending to the lowest heaven. It is haram for you to do ta'wil as this brother Umar does. Uh, you know, the nuzul, he says it's an angel who comes down. And you know, Allah rises overthrown. They have an interpretation for each and every one. They do ta'wil for each and every one. According to, according to the author of the book, Al Ain Wal Athar, there is no such thing. You're not allowed to do that. min ayat sifat and anything other than that from the ayat of the attributes of Allah. Illa bisadin min al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam or by the Sahaba, unless you have an evidence from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi or some of the companions. Wahada madhabu salafi qatiba. This is the opinion of the Salaf unanimously. فَلَا نَقُولُ فِي التَّنْزِيهِ كَقَوْلِ الْمُعَطِّلَةِ بَلْ نُثْبِتْ وَلَا نُحَرِّفْ So we don't say when it comes to trying to, uh, uh, you know, in trying to elevate or, or trying to uh, not resemble. Tanzih is when you don't want to liken Allah, when you want to raise Allah above any resemblance or anything that uh, uh, affects His greatness, His perfection, His majesty. So we don't approach that like the Mu'attila. Rather, we affirm and we don't distort. And we, we give the attribute, we accept the attribute as is, and we don't mention the mod modality, which is what we have been teaching and preaching all these years. And speaking about the attributes of Allah is a branch of speaking about the essence of Allah. فَمَذْهَبُنَا حَقٌ بَيْنَ بَاطِلَيْنِ وَهُدًا بَيْنَ ضَلَالَتَيْنِ So our madhab is truth between two falsehoods and its guidance between two misguidances. وَهُوَ إِثْبَاتُ الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالصِّفَاتِ And it's to affirm the names and attributes مَعْنَفِي التَّشْبِيهِ وَالْأَدَوَاتِ While negating, likening Allah's 
likening Allah to his creation and then ascribing the what they consider to be tasim. The idea of they say that Allah Azzawajal is a body using words that Allah Azzawajal didn't use, that the Prophet ﷺ didn't use. They want to negate this. So they say, you know, uh, uh, limitless and all these attributes they add and they attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah did not use. It's not from the language of the prophets and the messengers. And so we don't use those. So this is the, uh, the person that he's quoting. Uh, and also, he said, Rahmanullah, on page 60, uh, from page 59 to page 63, he said, Al Maqsad al Thani fi Masail waqa fi al Khilab and al Hanabila wal Ashaira. Another issue where there was a difference between the Hanabila and the Ashaira. Minha among them, Anna Nu'minu bi Anna Allah Mustawan ala Arshihi, Ba'inu min Khalkihi min Ghairi Tawil. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the throne, separated from His creation without giving it any other type of interpretation, without any other additions to this idea. Uh, then he quoted the hadith of Ummu Salama and, uh, and, and then he mentioned another thing. And such as the, the, the descent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night to the sama al dunya. We also affirm that min ghayri tajbih binuzul al makhluqeen wa la tamthil wa la takif. Without likening Allah azza wa jal to the, how the creation descends and without uh, saying how and without mentioning the modality. And this is where we differ with those people, ya akhwan. The way we differ with them is that we don't believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is limited by His creation. And we don't believe Allah resembles this creation in the first place. So when Allah mentioned that He descends to the lowest heaven, we accept it because we don't have to think about how could He be there and then it's a movement from one location to another. This is how you think about creation. This is not how you think about Creator. You cannot assess Allah according to the qualities of the creation because that's how you fall into tashbih. Don't you believe, Ya Umar, that any time you read the Fatiha, Allah Azza wa Jal responds to you? Don't you believe, according to the hadith of the Prophet Azza wa when he says, إِذَا قَالَ عَبْدِي الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَمِدَنِي عَبْدِي فَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَثْنَ عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي فَإِذَا قَالَ مَالِكْ يَوْبِ الدِّينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَجَّدَنِي عَبْدِي Do you believe in this hadith? How many people are reciting Fatiha? either simultaneously on one after the other all over the world. How is Allah Azza wa Jal responding to each and every one of them simultaneously? That's because you don't ask that question. Why don't you ask that question? Because why are you thinking that Allah is like the, your neighbor who can only hear one person at a time or two people at a time or he can only respond at one time? That's because you have fallen into tashbih. You've already fallen into the trap that you're trying to run away from. You've already likened Allah to His creation. And now that you've likened Allah to His creation, you're forced to do tahrif or ta'til of the text to come out of the problem that you created for yourself. Whereas we say, Laysa kamithli shay. It's none of my business. It is not none of my business how. I don't care how. I accept Allah's speech. I accept the speech of the Prophet وسلم, and I don't implore philosophy to understand them. Uh, the Prophet said, Allah descends every last third of the night and he asks, who is asking? So I may give him, who is seeking forgiveness? So I may give him, I say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Amantu Billah. Amantu Billah. I believe in Allah and I keep quiet and I don't delve into this philosophical gymnastics that your whole entire aqidah is built on. And that's why you are deviant. And that's why you are misguided. And that's why you cannot have a sound aqidah in any way, shape or form. Because you constantly force to distort, change and misinterpret in order to come up with something that agrees with your mind. Bearing in mind that minds are not alike. Minds are not alike. So he acknowledges that. And he also says beyond that. Uh, well, then he says, Aywa. Uh, so they, they, they transmit and they carry their meaning as it came to them. They shift it to the next person. They deliver it, they move it forward without get entering into the aspect of the howness and the modality because that's beyond us. وَكَذَلِكَ مَا أَنزَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ جَلْ فِي كِتَابِهِ مِنْ ذِكْرِ الْمَجِيءِ وَالْإِتْيَانِ مَذْكُورَيْنِ فِي قَوْلِ تَعَالَى وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا وَفِي قَوْلِ هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظُلَلًا مِنَ الْغَمَامِ So the ayat that speak about Allah Azza wa Jal coming, the coming of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
uh, the the Maji and the Etian, they also if we believe in that without the modality, without even speaking or asking how. If Allah had willed, if Allah had intended, if He willed to, to explain or to tell us the modality, He would have done so. So we, let, we end with what Allah Azza wa Jal had uh, uh, decided and decreed for us. And we stayed away from that which is ambiguous. Uh, Naam. And, and Muhammad at the end, he mentions also that Imam al-Ash'ari is in agreement, he became in agreement with Imam Ahmad rahimahullah in regards to those particular matters. Tamam? So let's go back to this guy. The Sunnah as a whole includes these three because these three all agree on the principles. Okay? Imam Ahmad al-Dardir from the year 1000. Oh, wait. Now here's a refutation uh, to this particular thing. So this is Al Imam Abdul Baqi. Oh, this is why the confusion is. Let, let's go back. Okay. So the the name of the Imam is Abdul Baqi Al Baali Al Hambali. The name of the Imam of the book Al Ain Wal Athar. His name is Abdul Baqi Al Baali Al Hambali. This brother here called him Imam Al Muwah Al Muwahibi. Alhambali. So earlier I didn't quote the name because I have it later down in the text. So that remains to be a major point of contention because we need to understand who is, is he deceiving the people or is this a human error? I will assume it's a human error in spite of him having shown the ability to be a, a, a professional liar. I will still give the brother Husnudhan and assume that he just made a blunder. But this citation is quoting has actually more to it. So let me actually give you the whole context which, which he does not give you. وَهِيَ أَنَّ طَوَائِفَ أَهْلَ السُّنَّةِ ثَلَاثًا أَشَاعِرًا وَحَنَابِلًا وَمَا تُرِيدِيًّا تمام؟ بِدَلِيلِ عَطْفِ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْحَنَابِلَ عَلَى الْأَشَاعِرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْكُتُبِ الْكَلَامِيَّةِ The reason why it is the case is because uh, of the uh, conjunction the scholars of the Hanabila are usually mentioned alongside the Ash'ira in many of the books of speculative theology. And whenever you mention something after wow, يعني the conjunction and, this denotes variation. Meaning you say, جَاءَ عَمْرٌ وزيد. عمر and Zayd came. So when you mention and, it's to denote a difference between the two. تمام؟ وكيف يصح إدخال حنابلة في الأشاعرة؟ He says, does it even show here? He, look, this is yeah, Allahu Akbar. Either I don't understand why he did not quote the entire thing. Now listen to this. He says, how is it possible to include the Hanbalis with the أشاعرة؟ مع أنه قد ذكر ابن السبكي في طبقات الشافعية أن الشيخ أبا حسن الأشعري ولد سنة 60 و 200 بعد وفاة الإمام أحمد ب 20 سنة How is he including that even though as Subki mentioned in the طبقات الشافعية that Abu Hassan Ash'ari was born uh, 200, uh, 260 years uh, the year 260 which is 20 years after the death of Imam Ahmed فكيف يصبح نسبة الإمام أحمد الاعتقادي يصح نسبة الإمام أحمد الاعتقادي How is it possible to ascribe the, the belief of Imam Ahmed to the belief of the أشاعرة when they came after Imam Ahmed and all this he didn't cite for you he only cited the part that is convenient for him to prove to you that a Hanbali is in agreement with the Ash'aris مع أنهم منذ زمن إمام الإمام أحمد إلى زماننا هذا لم يزالوا على اعتقاد إمامهم الذي هو معتقد السلف كبقية الأئمة الأربعة. Even though from the time of Imam Ahmad, meaning the أهل السنة والجماعة, the real أهل السنة والجماعة, until our time they remain to be upon the اعتقاد of their Imam, which is the اعتقاد of the Salaf, which is the like the four other Imams, من حيث تسليم آيات الصفات وعدم تأويلها from from the perspective of Submitting to the ayat of the attributes of Allah and not falling into the ta'wil which is the aqidah of the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. Do you, not, do you not see the answer that Imam Malik when he was asked about the istiwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the arsh? So this deceiver, 
this liar over here, may Allah Azza wa guide him. May Allah Azza wa guide him. Hadak Allah cites, uh, misquotes this Imam. He changes his name. He cites the same book, changes his name. And then he doesn't give you the full citation of why he's actually refuting the very statements that he introduced the sentence with. I will still assume that you made a mistake. I hope and pray that you did. Just to be a good brother to you. He says, Tawaif Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That Ahl Sunnah as a whole. And it's right there, brothers and sisters. Wa yasuhu itkhal aw yasihu itkhal. He, he is going to, he doesn't give you the rest. And this is the beginning of the sentence that I quoted afterwards. Includes these three because these three all agree on the principles. Okay. Imam Ahmad al Dardir from the year 1200, who we memorized his poem, Al Kharidat al Bahiyya. He says, the A Sufi. This Ahmad al Dardir from 1204, yani a couple of years ago. He was a hardcore Sufi. Imams of this Ummah who came after the Salaf, whom it is wajib on us to follow. They split into three categories. Number one, the, uh, the group of scholars who specialized in fiqh, the ones who specialized in aqidah, and the ones who specialized in tazkiyah, tazkiyah to nafs, purification of the heart. Okay? And so, as for fiqh, he says that we follow the four mothers. As for aqidah, he says we follow Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari or Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. And he's saying that this is, uh, notice the, the uh, clarification that he made where he says, um, they exhausted themselves in the field of aqidah that the Salaf were upon. Because for the... Quoting every deviant under the sun to justify Ash'ariyyah and Maturidiyyah. Really pathetic. History. This is from the year 1200 for the history of all of you know, Islam. And every time he quotes someone that is recent, he tells you for the history of all Islam. He repeats the same lie. Yani in one lecture, you must have committed, uh, I don't know how many sins, yaki, almost thousands of sins. Um, among the biggest sins in Islam is to lie. You've lied so many times in one talk. I really feel sorry for you, Allah. Wallahi, I feel sorry for you. Basically, the Ummah has agreed, the scholars who are... The Ummah has agreed, ya akhi attaqillah. Specialized in the field of understanding the Quran and Sunnah have agreed that the correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah is in line with the Ash'ari and the Maturi the Aqidah. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And all of it is in line with following the Salaf al-Salih. There's nothing wrong with that and all of it is in line with following the Salaf al-Salih. Yeah, tell me if Ibn Mas'ud was Ash'ari and uh, Ibn Umar was a Maturidi. Tell me, tell me they were. Tell me they were. Following the Quran and the Sunnah. This is Imam uh, Ahmed al Dardir. Then we have Imam al Safarini al Hanbali, who was another Hanbali scholar. Again, showing that the Hanbalis before Ibn Abdul Wahhab and the Salafi movement, where they try and you know kick everyone out of Ahl Sunnah, saying the Ash'aris are not part of it, the Maturidis are not part of it, only uh, only these people are part of Ahl Sunnah, etc. This is showing that the Hanbali scholars themselves have agreed that the Ash'aris and the Maturidis were from Ahl Sunnah. He's the Ash'ari scholars have agreed. Y y mm, stop lying. Stop lying. You quoting an, uh, an imam who's hanbali in fiqh, ashari in aqidah. Ya rajal attaqillah. And stop saying they agreed. This imam, al-safarini al-hanbali, and you're playing with the people's emotion by mentioning someone who's hanbali in fiqh while he's ashari himself, is a very deceptive low blow to be honest. He has all kinds of kalami and ashari statements in his poetry. Year 1188, you kidding me? He says in his book, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is three groups. He says Al Atharia, and their Imam is Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He's talking about the, the Hanbalis essentially. The same thing that the, the other scholar, Al Muwahibi, said that he said there's Ash'aris, the Hanbalis, and the Maturidis. Same thing over here, he's saying that you have the, the uh, Hanbalis, the Atharis, um, and their Imam is Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And this is not to get confused with the Salafis of today because they say that they are the Atharis. And they say that they are the followers of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. However, they came after. Uh, after Imam Safarini and Hanbali. So one Imam. What, what, what? They came after Imam Safarini and Hanbali. So you, what are you saying, man? What are you waffling about? What are you trying to prove? Imam Safarini and Hanbali is uh, saying Atharia and quoting and following the Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbali. He's not referring to them because it would be fine to call them Atharis if they agreed with the principles that the Atharis agreed upon. And these principles we're going to get to. Uh, I believe it's actually the next, the next slide. Yes, yes. So you quote one scholar and you make his statement. Uh, 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 you paint the entire ummah of scholars with the brush of one sheikh and you believe you are sincere before Allah you believe you're being sincere to the ummah you believe you're, you're doing an nasiha a deen al nasiha and including in that is li'a'immati al-muslimin wa'ammatihim you're being sincere to the laymen of Muslims by claiming that one person from the year 1188 who was Ash'ari his statements now refer and acknowledge or or encapsulate all of the scholars that came before him from the Hanbali madhab uh, and, and I, yani, I haven't seen anyone like you online except from among the disbelievers
It's the next one, inshallah. So, to finish off this, this statement here, Hanbali scholars saying and acknowledging the Ash'aris and the Maturidis were from Ahl Sunnah. In this last slide here, Imam Tajuddin al Subki rahimahullah says, Know that Ahl Sunnah has agreed on one aqidah in terms of what is necessary, permissible, and impossible for Allah, even if they differed on the methodology used to come to that conclusion. So he's saying, he's Imam Tajuddin al Subki is known to be an Ash'ari for the entire Ummah. The whole Ummah knows that a Subki is an Ash'ari. Uh, <laughs> Allah Mustaan. Explaining. That the Ash'ari and Maturidi and Hanbali Madhabs, right? The Ash'ari, Maturidi and Hanbali Madhabs, they're just a, a term that's used to explain how we derived such and such conclusions, right? But the conclusions are the same and that's what makes them Ahlus Sunnah. That's why he says that Ahlus Sunnah has agreed upon these principles. What are these principles? What is wajib for Allah? What is muhal for Allah? And what is ja'iz for Allah? These are the three things that all of Ahlus Sunnah has agreed upon. So, for example, the Mu'tazila school will say that it's necessary for Allah to do what is best for his servant. It's, it's wajib for Allah. It's, it's, it's mandatory for Allah to do what is best for his servant. Listen to the falsafa now. Listen to the philosophy. Servant. Ahlus Sunnah said no. Whether you're Ash'ari or Maturidi or Athari, we said no. And so that's why we agree on this. And the Mu'tazila, they're not from Ahl Sunnah because they differed on something that is that they claim is wajib for Allah. Same thing when it comes to something that is permissible for Allah. Ahl Sunnah says that it is, it is generally possible for Allah to create and to not create. If He wants to create, He can create. If He doesn't want to create, He doesn't have to create. The Mu'tazila, you know, another sect, they said that it's wajib, necessary, mandatory for Allah to create a prophet to send to us, to teach us uh, the way of guidance so that we can be saved in the next life. He said, they say it's mandatory for Allah to send a prophet, which means it's mandatory for him to create a prophet. So where Ahl Sunnah agreed that this is something that is equally permissible for Allah to do or not to do. Allah can choose to do it, He can choose not to do it. If He wanted... A lot of editing in this part. Allahu Alam, what kind of mistakes He was making, what kind of blunders He was doing. But there's this, this one minute has been cut and chopped Allah knows how many times. I know, I know. When you engage in, in philosophy, it's, it's a lot of trouble. I understand. I, I feel you, brother. He didn't have to send any prophets. Nobody's there to tell Allah what to do. This is the, the opinion of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. However, the Mu'tazila school rejected that. And they said it's mandatory for Allah to send, uh, to create and send prophets. Um, an example of something that is impossible for Allah is the example that Allah is... Uh, you know, a physical object, or Allah is within a time and a place. Allah being a physical, um, a physical God, or you know, God made up of physical properties and whatnot. This is something that Ahl Sunnah has always rejected. Wallah, you're a liar. Wallah, alladhi la ilaha ghayru, you're a liar. So Allah is not a physical being. Allah is not a physical being, and Ahl Sunnah have agreed and agreed to reject that. That we believe Allah will be seen. How will you see Allah if Allah is not a physical being? How will you see Allah? We believe we can point at Him. Because the Jariyah, the slave girl, pointed to the sky. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Khutbah uh, in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Hajjat al wada in his farewell pilgrimage, after he spoke to the people, he would point to the sky and then he would point to the people says, Allah hal balakh, did I not convey? Qalu bala, qala Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad. So all these are supported by textual evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So we have we point in that direction, and we know that Allah Azza wa speaks and He hears. Uh, he is a physical being, but we don't liken His existence, His essence, and everything that is of His attributes to those of His creation. But to claim that there was a unanimous agreement that Allah is not a physical being is a lie. Shaykh Al-Sahib ibn Taymiyyah said, Madhab al-Salaf annahum yasifoon Allah ta'ala bima wasafa bihi nafsah. The madhab of the Salaf is that they describe Allah with that which he described himself with. Wa bima wasafahu bihi rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described him with. Min ghayri tahreefin wa la ta'teel. Without distortion and without negating. وَمِنْ غَيْرِ تَكْيِفٍ وَلَا تَمْثِيلٍ And without speaking of the modality or likening Allah to His creation. فَالْمُعَطِّلُ يَعْبُدُ عَدَمًا The distorter, the one, the denier of the evidences and the attributes is worshipping a Adam, a non-existent. He's worshipping nothingness. وَالْمُمَثِّلُ يَعْبُدُ صَنَمًا And the one who likens Allah to His creation is worshipping an idol, a statue. A sculpture, which we don't do. And the Muslim, he worships the Lord of the heavens and the earth.
subhanahu wa ta'ala. You refer to my playlist of Al-Aqidah Al-Wasitiyahs to get educated more on the subject, Ya Umar. That, and you'll see this in, in the next part of this video, you'll see this where the, the, even the Hanbalis have agreed that the idea that Allah is made up of, you know, is a body or a physical body or a physical entity, this idea has to be rejected firmly in one's heart. And you cannot believe that Allah is something physical. This is, you know, this has been the aqidah of the Ash'aris, the Maturidis, and the Hanbalis. However, those who differ are the ones who step outside of Ahlus Sunnah because these are our principles. This is Ahlus Sunnah's principles and they've all agreed upon this one aqidah. And when you separate from that, you then separate from Ahlus Sunnah. And so, so an example of this is the Mushabbiha. The Mushabbiha, very simple. They used to say that Allah, uh, you know, Allah has a literal hand and Allah has a literal body parts. Those are not Mushabbiha. Those are Ahl Sunnah. Allah has a literal hand, a literal hand, no doubt. Allah has a face. Why are you denying what Allah used for Himself? But and why are you likening Allah to His creation by thinking of a creation? Why are you insisting of creating an image for Allah by thinking of the creation of Allah, thinking of the hand of a human being? or anything else for this matter, and then wanting to put Allah Azza wa Jal in that same uh, 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 understanding. You are the mushabbih. You are doing tashbih, and then you're forced to do ta'atil to get out of tashbih. Why don't you do what we do? We believe Allah has a hand. Don't ask any more questions, and it's none of your business. But don't deny it, because Allah used these words. Allah used these words, and Allah could have used other words if He willed. Are you going to tell Allah what to say, what to, what to use? لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون الله is not asked about what he does you will be asked if Allah wants to say uh, you know when he said to uh, Iblis ما منعك أن تسجد لمن خلقت بيدي who uh, what prevented you from prostrating to the one who I created with both of my hands يدي is in the Muthanna who are you to tell Allah not to use that word who are you to, to deny the statement of Allah بل يداه مبسوطتان rather both of his hands are, are stretched who are you who are you to, to deny the choice of words that Allah chose for Himself? Who are you? And who are you to deny the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and to distort it and to negate it? Who are you? It's because you're a mushabbih in the first place. So yeah, you're speaking about yourself the whole time. And that's why you're not Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. An actual, you know, literal body part. What do we know as a body part? What does anyone know as a body part? Everyone knows that a hand is a physical body part. Everyone knows that an eye is a physical body part. And so when they say Allah has a literal eye, it's attributing that physical body part to Allah. And that's something that goes against all of what Ahl Sunnah has ever said. Liar! So this is, uh, I wanted to use this slide to clarify Imam Tajuddin Asubki's usage. When he uses the word Ash'ari loosely, he's referring to anyone who's Ahl Sunnah. Refers loosely. Again, whenever he wants, once he's he's using it loosely. Whenever he wants, you know, he means the opposite. No, he means that. Ah, خذ راحتك حبيبي خذ راحتك لأنه أنت ب بملعب تلعب كورة أصلاً وجيب أهداف باليمين فوق تحت حارس موجود حارس مو موجود دفاع مو دفاع بلا أنت عايش عايش بكوكب خاص فيك. اتكلم بالنيابة عن العلماء وأضيف وأن إنس نسبة الكلام لهم شيء عادي جدا عندك واضح ما شاء الله عليك. Refers to this group of people, Aflaton, scholars who have held an agreement in their belief about Allah and uh, what is agreement impossible and possible for Allah. Now, what this shows us, what this shows us, is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ in the first hadith that I mentioned that he says, when you see a group of people trying to separate from the majority, <laughs> now you're gonna see a lot of waffling and lying. It's gonna hurt right now the amount of things that you will hear now, or create division amongst the majority then that's the person you should be aware of. You be aware of that person. Why? Because he's... The hadith says, فَقْتُلُوهُ And the English translation says, Kill him. And this miskeen, this deceiver, is unable to even respect the Prophet Wasallam's words. He's unable to translate them for what they really mean. He's unable to even cite the context of this hadith. And that this hadith is mentioned in the chapters that speak about the person who goes against the leader of the Muslims. And this is about the khawarij. And this is about the khuruj on the hakim. He doesn't have the credibility. He doesn't have the, the integrity. He doesn't have the, the academic integrity to be consistent and to be honest and to tell you, look man, these hadith have a context. And the Prophet ﷺ said, فَقْتُلُوهُ He tells you, be wary of him. Be careful of him. Kill him with knowledge. Kill him with knowledge. Yeah, captain. Or create division amongst the majority. 
then that's the person you should be aware of. You be aware of that person. Why? Because he's the one who's posing a danger and a threat to your religion. We should be aware of you because you are definitely posing a threat to our religion coming along after all these years and lying and making it seem that the uh, Ash'ari Madhab has something substantiating to offer the Muslims and lying against the Salafis and deceiving the people into thinking that we got problems that we don't have. ولكن الله عز وجل سريع الحساب انتظر وسوف ترى في الدنيا ثم في الآخرة إلا أي شاء الله Whether you recognize it or not doesn't matter. He's the one who's posing a serious threat to your religion and so you stay away from him. What do we see from the Salafi sect of Sunni? Right? We see, we already saw right now that the Prophet ﷺ told us that, the, that Islam has been preserved and will be preserved through the majority of the scholars' understanding of Islam. I've already explained that we look at the majority of the scholars who had the specialty of understanding the Quran and Sunnah. And then we looked at the history and we showed that the Malikis and the Shafi'is and the Hanafis and some of the Hanbalis themselves were all in agreement with the principles of the Ash'ari Madhab and the Maturidi Madhab and the Athari Madhab. But, you know, the principles that were there that we just spoke about, those principles were all agreed upon by all of the scholars who came throughout our lies and look at the videos cut again agreed upon watch how many times he said agreed upon and i'm still asking for the receipt bring the receipt history so now when you see someone who comes and tries to say that they were wrong they're either separating from that majority video cut again right you have the majority of the scholars and they're either separating from it in which case you stay away from him or they're trying to stay within it which is what the salafis are trying to do they're trying to stay within that majority who's considered ahl sunnah but so <laughs> this guy is making it seem that they are ahl sunnah jama'ah and we try to squeeze ourselves in it's as though they are the real asl and we're like these people who are just trying to squeeze themselves in by Allah, we don't believe you've ever been from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We are barra Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah assassin. And Ish Abdul Kalam, ya Baba. You think we're trying to squeeze ourselves with you? We, you, we don't even let you in. Yani, this is crazy. We are, we are living in a house and we don't let anyone into the house. This is how, this is our stance. This guy tries to tell you about us that they live across the street and we're trying to, you know, move in into their house. Yani, you, he's lying and making it seem that we're begging them, knocking on the door every day, please, please let us in. And by Allah, we are on this other side of the street in our house with fortresses around and, and guards outside. As soon as they see any one of them, they tool tell him to, you know, to go away. They will shush him. By saying that we're Athari and we're, we follow Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal when they don't, and we're going to show that now. We follow Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal and Imam Malik and Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i. We follow them and 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 we follow them. We but they're trying to say that we stay with the majority, but they're creating division amongst them. Why? Because you'll see that the, the Salafis will say the Ash'aris are not part of Ahl Sunnah, the Maturidis are not part of Ahl Sunnah. So they're creating division amongst the majority, about amongst what Islam has been. What Ahl Sunnah has been, it has been the Ash'aris and the Maturidis and, you know, the minority has been the Ash'aris. But these people came today. So he, he basically negated his previous speech. And Alhamdulillah, I told you, Wallahi, when these people lie, you, can, you cannot lie so much and not and not get caught lying and not expose yourself. So he went from saying that it was an agreement and unanimous and, and you know, majority, it was not majority, it was agreement. And he used the term majority a couple of times because it's a slip of a tongue and now he's acknowledging that there was a minority who were Atharis. So we went from being non-existent to being existent but in a minority. You see the, the, now go back to the beginning of his video and watch how many times he will tell you, la la la, it's always been the Maturidis and the Ash'aris. And these are the uh, unanimous agreement of all the thousands of scholars. And they're trying to create that division amongst the Ummah. Whereas we're all supposed to agree on the principles of Aqidah, which is, um, which, is where the, which is where it shows that the Salafis of today are actually not followers of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. They claim to be, just like they claim consensus on so many things, that the scholars have a... <laughs> the irony. <laughs> the irony. Yes, you, and you claim consensus on so many things, and you didn't pro provide a single proof. Agreed upon this. And the scholars agree. They say... I actually quoted the consensus that Imam Nawawi cited. That refutes you. You haven't cited a single ijma' to substantiate your claims. Go back to the uh, earlier part of the video to check that. So many things, and there's going to be you know many videos in the future, inshallah, showing all these things. Inshallah, there will be no more videos from you, brother, unless you want to get destroyed again. They'll say you know so much. 
They'll say so much, and none of it will be back. None of it will be back by uh, by the actual. <laughs> the irony of all ironies. None of it will be back. Just like you haven't backed it up with anything. All you've done is quoted Ash'ari scholars from the beginning of this video until now. A scholarly opinion. So all that being said, all that being said, this next part of the video is where I'm going to talk about and show one of the leaders of the Salafi sect that we have today. His name is Ibn Uthaymeen, and I'm going to compare his statements. <laughs> with some of the scholars of the Hanbali school. So I'm not even going to look at the Ash'aris. I'm not even going to look at the Maturidis because they won't accept it anyway. They think that, you know, they're, they're not part of Ahlul Sunnah because they, they think that. Yeah, and so why were you quoting them the whole time? They're not going to accept if I was to mention the Ash'ari position. So forget that. Let's take something that they say that they accept. They accept the Hanbali school of thought. They say that they're Hanbali and they follow Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal's Aqeedah and they follow this and that. Okay, we're going to take Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal's Aqeedah and compare and contrast the two and show how they are inconsistent in their, uh, in their methodology and their understanding with the scholars of the past. Over here, here we have Imam Abdullah Al Mawahibi Al Hanbali, where he, this is a scholar that I mentioned before in the previous <laughs> section. Remember, <laughs> it's, always, it's always quoted in the recycling. The recycling doesn't end. If you're not learn it and you don't pay attention yani you might get you might believe these are many alhamdulillah is honest enough to tell you that he quoted them before whether he's using that to strengthen his position or not allahu alam but it's basically the same few scholars that are being recycled or i'm they're tired of being quoted section of this video he says in his aqidah book and he's quoting the hanbali aqidah by the way he's not quoting ash'ari or maturidi or any other aqidah. he's quoting the hanbali aqidah all the way in the year 1000 just before the the salafi movement began this is what the hanbali aqidah the salafi movement began the Salafi movement began as if, as if the Salafi movement can ever begin. The Salafi movement, the Salafi movement has been there since the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The Salafi movement is following the way of the Salaf. Forget about the name. Don't call it Salafis. Don't call it Atharis. Don't call it, don't call it anything. It is following the orthodox teaching of Islam. What Salafi movement are you talking about? Has, has been. been. And, he's and he's quoting from the Hanbali saying, فَمَا نِعْتَقَدَ أَوْ قَالَ Whoever, Whoever believes in his heart, heart or even says with his tongue, Inna Allaha bi thatihi fi makanin fakafir. So you quote one Imam and wait. Whoever says with his Listen tongue this. or believes in his heart that Allah is in any place bi with his essence. Notice that word bi thatihi fakafir. That that person is a disbeliever. Let's look at what Ibn Uthaymin says. Right? Ibn Uthaymin says, and this is again what the Salafis are very famous for. Making up things and saying that and attributing it to Ahl Sunnah. He said, so you quote one Imam, you quote one Imam, and now you're going to say that this is the position of Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. Ya you don't fear Allah, not even a little bit, Ya Omar, not even this much. Ya'ani katkoot, a haja sghira kada sghira amura, hitta sghira ya'am al haq, basbusa ala al khafif, ya'ani. Not even this much fear of Allah. You quote one Imam who already we had an issue about whether you are referring to him or not based on the book that you mentioned. And, and you're make, making the statement of one imam now, uh, uh, an imam to cover everybody. This is the aqeedah of all the atharis and all the hanbalis and all the salafis. It says over here, the madhab and the position of Ahl sunnah is that Allah rose with his essence. Allah in his essence is above the throne. A wallahi bila shak. Bila shak that Allah Azza wa in his essence is, is rose over the throne. What's your problem? What's your problem, Habibi? You want to deny what Allah said in the Quran? Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, thumma istawa ala al-Arsh. You know better than Allah. You know better than the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala bithatihi. There's the key word again. Ala bithatihi. He rose above the throne with his essence. So, so we know, or we, we, we see over here, here that, that it's been the Hanbali Aqeedah and the Ash'ari and the Matu. Video edited again. And the same lie being repeated again. It's been, it's been the Ash'ari, the Hanafi. It's been the Aqeedah that we say Allah is not in any place. Allah does not take. Allah is not in any place. <laughs> Allah is not in any, Allah is above the throne. Why do you have to call it whatever you want to call it? Uh, uh, so you worship nothing? Take up space. Allah is not physical. These are things that the Aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah has been. And the Salafis came back and said that lied against the Ahlul Sunnah. It's, it's not the position of Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah has been what I just quoted. Right? And no. I've, I've given. Ahlul Sunnah has been what you just You quoted one man. My proof, friend. I've showed so much, so many examples of. From Ash'ari scholars. The scholars agreeing on this. Agreeing? Ash'ari scholars who didn't even agree because they don't even agree with the Maturidis, let alone agree with the Atharis. He says that Allah rose above the throne with his essence. Allah is above the throne with his essence. Be that. In his Number essence, two. not with his essence, in his essence. Uh, making it seem like his essence is something separate from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
You have Qadi Abu Ya'la al Hanbali. Abu Ya'la was a Hanbali scholar from the year 458. Okay, 458. He wrote a very detailed work on Aqidah, on the Hanbali Aqidah. It's called Al Muhtamadu fi Usul al Din. And in this book, he says that Allah is not in a direction. Right? Allah is not in a direction or in a place. Right? Because if, you, if you're not in a direction, you're not in a place. And if you are in a direction, you're in a place. These two things are. When you speak about the creation, Ya Mushabbih. Ya Mushabbih, when you speak about the creation of Allah, if you're in a direction, you're in a place. If you're not in a direction, you're not in a place. That's when you speak about the creation of Allah. Why are you applying the physical limitations that Allah created in the creation? Why are you applying them to the Creator? How are you applying the limitations that Allah made in this creation and you want to apply them to the Creator? This is your problem. Why do you have to come up with those philosophical statements if you're in a direction that means you're in your place? And this is how the creation works, not how Allah Azza wa Jal works. Uh, they go hand in hand. So anyhow, he's saying that Allah is not in a direction. Allah is not there or there or there or there. Allah is not in a direction. Okay, clear? Ibn Uthaymin says, إِنَّ نَفْيَكُمْ لِلْجِهَةِ يَسْتَلْزِمُ نَفْيَ الرَّبِّ عَزَّ وَجَلْ they All right, listen guys. I'm going to tell you some of the statements of the Salaf in Ithbat Sifat Al-Ulu. Sifat Al-Ulu. Tamam, I, I, I hope I'm, I, won't be, I won't read the air because it's going to take too long. First of all, Abu Ismail Al-Ansari in his book Al-Faruq in a sanad to uh, uh, Al-Muti'a Al-Balkhi. He said, he asked Abu Hanifa, uh, أنه سأل أبا حنيفة لمن قال لا أعرف ربي في السماء أم في الأرض. He asked Abu Hanifa about someone who says I don't know whether my Lord is is in the state of transcendence or is in the heaven or above the heaven or is he in earth or on earth. فقال الإمام أبو حنيفة فقد كفر. <laughs> so you claim the whole time that Imam, the Hanafis, and the Shafi'is, and the Malikis, and the Hanabila all believed, you know, this and that. Here's Imam Abu Hanifa saying that this person is a kafir. Because Allah said, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, the most merciful rose over the throne. Wa-Arshuhu fawqa sab'i samawat. And Allah's throne is above the seven heavens. Qult, fa'in qala innahu ala al-Arsh, walakin yakul la adri al-Arsh fi al-Sama am fi al-Ard. So this person who asked him, Muti'ah, he asked him, if I say, if it's if it's said that he's on the throne, he's above the throne, but he says he doesn't know whether the throne is in the heaven or on earth. قال, he said, huwa kafir. He is a kafir. لأنه أنكر أنه في السماء. Because he denied that Allah is above the creation. فمن أنكر أنه في السماء فقد كفر. Whoever denies that Allah is, is above the heavens is a disbeliever. Uh, and where others have incre uh, uh, added, لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ فِي أَعْلَى عِلِّيِّينَ And also it was narrated from Ibn Abd al-Barr in Kitab al-Tamheed, the statement of Imam Malik, Allahu fi al-Sama, Allah Azza wa Jal is above the heavens. وَعِلْمُهُ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ لَا, لا, لا يَخْلُ مِنْهُ مَكَانٍ And Allah's knowledge is everywhere and there's no place where Allah's knowledge is not there, i.e. Allah knows about it. Then uh, we mentioned the statement of Abi Umar al-Talmanki in his, in his book Al-Usul. He said, Ajma'a ahl sunnah Notice how he was telling you, Ikhwan, notice how he was telling you that uh, uh, the Atharis, uh, they claim that there's Ijma' and they don't substantiate their Ijma' with any statements while the Ijma' is what he was claiming. There was Ijma' that Allah is not in the direction, that Allah is not a physical being and this is the Ijma' these, these are the lies. These are the facts. He said, Ajma' أهل السنة أن الله تعالى استوى على عرشه بذاته على الحقيقة لا على المجاز <laughs> hey, Add this L to your resume and CV Maybe you will get hired in some sort of TV He said they have agreed أهل السنة والجماعة agreed that Allah rose over the throne himself in his essence with his essence in his essence huh? you made me say with على الحقيقة in reality لا على المجاز not figuratively not a figure of speech. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ قَوْلَ مَالِكَ السَّابِقَ Then he mentioned what Imam Malik said previously. وَأَمَّا قَوْلُ الْإِمَامِ الشَّافِعِي As for the Imam Shafi'i. فَقَدْ قَالَ الْإِمَامِ أَحْمَدْ بِنْ أَبِي حَاتِمِ الرَّازِي Imam Al-Razi said, حَدَّثَنَا أَبُو شُعَيْبْ وَأَبُو ثَوْرْ عَنْ مُحَمَّدْ إِبْنِ إِدْرِيسِ الشَّافِعِي Those two narrated from Al-Shafi'i. قال القول في السنة التي أنا عليها the statement regarding the sunnah that I am upon, وَرَأَيْتُ أَصْحَابَنَا عَلَيْهَا أَهْلَ الْحَدِيثِ أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ And I saw our companions upon it, the people of hadith. 
الَّذِينَ رَأَيْتَهُمْ Those who I have seen. وَأَخَذْتُ عَنْهُمْ And I've taken knowledge from them. مِثْلْ سُفْيَان وَمَالِكْ Like Sufyan and Malik. وَغَيْرِهِمَا And other than them. <laughs> الْإِقْرَارُ بِشَهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ to testify that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah and that Muhammad is the best of Allah wa anna Allah ta'ala ala arshihi fi samaihi Allahu Akbar and that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his throne which is in the heavens yaqrubu min khalqihi kayfa yasha he gets near to his creation in whichever way he wills وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَنْزِلُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا كَيْفَ شَاءَ And that Allah descends to the lowest heaven however He wills. <laughs> so this is the ijma, this is the opinions of the imams of the madhab that you've been lying against and misquoting this entire talk by quoting some, some random ash'ari who keeps speaking on behalf of all of these imams. And you've never quoted these imams because you have no quotation for these imams to support your ash'ari or maturidi aqeedah because none of them was an ash'ari or maturidi. As for the same of Imam Ahmad, then I also have a chain, uh, but I don't want to quote it because it's too long. It was said to him, "In Allah Taala, ليس على العرش." فقال كلامهم كل يدور حول الكفر. Some said that Allah is not over the throne. He said all of their statements revolve around disbelief. And somebody asked him about. Uh, no, we'll skip that. Skip that because of time. ونذكر أيضا قصة أبو يوسف في بشر المريسي حينما سمع يقول ووساجد سبحان ربي الأسفل فأراد أن يقيم عليه الحد لقول ذلك فقد أنكر قوله تعالى سبحان ربي سبح اسم ربك الأعلى some of them even denied that Allah they would even say سبحان ربي الأعلى because they did not want to attest and approve the transcendence of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and also ابن المبارك when he was asked أين الله فأجاب الله فوق العرش بذاته وهو باين عن خلقه وهو معهم بعلمه الله is over the throne himself in his essence <laughs> something that he kept denying and lying the whole time والله if I made this whole refutation only these two minutes would have been sufficient may Allah forgive me and he is he is separate from his creation and he is with them in his knowledge and what he means by باين meaning is independent of them he doesn't need them then we mentioned the statement of Ibn Khuzayma فقد قال قال أبو عبد الله الحاكم في كتاب تاريخ نيسابور وفي كتاب علوم الحديث that he heard محمد بن صالح بن هان يقول سمعت الإمام الأئمة أبا بكر بن خزيمة he heard the imam of the imams ابن خزيمة he said من لم يقر بأن الله على عرشه استوى فوق سبع سماوات وأنه بائن من خلق فهو كافر يستتاب whoever does not acknowledge and admit that Allah is over the throne over the seven heavens and separate from his creation is a disbeliever who should be given a chance to repent. فَإِنْتَابْ If he repents, Alhamdulillah, وَإِلَّا ضُرِبَتْ عُنُقَهُ Otherwise his neck should be chopped off. وَأُلْقِيَ عَلَى مَزْبَلَةٍ لِأَلَّا يَتَأَذَّى بِرِيحِ أَهْلَ الْقِبْلَةِ وَأَهْلُ الْقِبْلَةِ وَأَهْلُ الْذِمَّةِ And he should be thrown into a trash so that it is not, does not bother him, bother the people. Uh, the people of Qibla, the people of Dhimma, the people of Islam, and even the disbelievers who live among the Muslims, they won't be bothered by the staunch of his body. وَمَنْ يُنْكِرُ رُؤْيَةَ اللَّهِ فِي الْآخِرَ فَهُوَ شَرٌّ مِنَ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَ وَالْمَجُوزِ And whoever denies seeing Allah in the Akhirah, and you saying that Allah is not a physical being, how are you going to see Allah if He's not a physical being in the Akhirah? Whoever denies that is, is more evil than the Jews and the Christians and the Magians. وَلَيْسُوا بِمُؤْمِنِينَ عَنْدَ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ And they're not even believers according to Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah. These are the receipts that I'm bringing to the table that you don't have, Ya Umar. These are the receipts I'm bringing with the chains that you don't... And I could put this in the description, inshaAllah ta'ala, for those who want to delve deeper into this. Those are my receipts. Where are yours? وَقَوْلُ أَبِي جَعْفَرْ مُحَمَّدْ بِنْ جَرِيرِ الطَّبَرِي فِي كِتَابِ صَرِيحِ السُنَّةِ وَحَسْبُ مْرِينَ أَنْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ رَبَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى It is sufficient for a man to believe, this is a tabari, that, that his Lord is the one who rose over the throne. فَمَنْ تَجَاوَزَ إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرْ Whoever transgresses beyond that has lost and has been disappointed. And then of course we have all the statements of Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah in the Aqeedah al-Wasitiyah which obviously this individual will never approve. And he uses all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, understandings that are anti-philosophical to prove from the textual evidence uh, so on and so forth uh, 
I know time does not allow me to quote all of this. Uh, uh, you can refer to the book Al-Ulul Al-Aziz Al-Ghaffar if you really want to know what the Salaf believed about the transcendence of Allah. Al-Sheikh uh, Al-Albani authored an entire book. No, Imam Al-Dhahabi authored an entire book on the subject matter of the Salaf's belief in Allah's transcendence. That if you really want to know what the Salaf, and that includes all the four Imams, statements of the Sahaba, it begins with the Sahaba, it begins with the Prophet والسلام, then moving on to the Sahaba, and then the Tabi'een, Adba Tabi'een, and the Imma up until the time of Imam al Dhahabi, who was one of the Sunnahs of Shaykh al-Sahab ibn Taymiyyah, all of these are quoted to prove to you that they all believe that Allah is above the Arsh, above the Samawat. And then comes this Joker with this absolute zero evidence, zero receipts telling you, oh, the, the Ash'aris, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they had a unanimous agreement that Allah is not this and not that and not this and not that, and then you're just worshipping an absolute nothing. Uh, and so here, yeah. You're going, oh, you lied against the Sheikh, by the way. Wait, I need to, I have a, a footnote here that you replied, uh, you lied against the Sheikh. Allah is not in a direction from us. Wait, let me see. Uh, your negation of a direction for Allah is actually a negation of Allah Himself. So he's saying that Abu Ya'la, the Hanbali scholars, and the Ash'aris and the Maturidis all negated Allah's existence because they all said Allah is not in a direction. He says over here, إِذْ لَا نَعْلَمُ شَيْئًا لَا يَكُونُ فَوْقَ الْعَالَمُ وَلَا تَحْتَهُ وَلَا يَمِينُ وَلَا شِمَاءُ He says that because we don't know of anything. We don't know of anything that's neither above or below or on the right or on the left. Right? He's saying that he's completely drawing an analogy between what he's seen around him and Allah. Thinking and this... On the contrary, he's telling you that you, you're, you're negating Allah's qualities and attributes because you are already likening Allah to His creation. what the idea of the mushabbiha are. They liken Allah to His creation. They think that Allah works the same way as His creation. When you think that way, you come to these conclusions. No, it's when you think that way, you come to these conclusions. We don't think that way. That's the whole thing. However, Ahlul Sunnah has not thought this way. Allah said, Laysa ka mithlihi shayt means He is different to all of His creation. There is nothing similar to Him. You cannot draw analogies between creation and say that we only have seen We've only seen things. So why are you drawing analogies around us that are on our left or in a direction? Yeah, because everything you see around you is physical. Everything you see around you is physical, and Allah is not physical, so He's not in a direction. He created places. He's not within a place. So there's no direction that we can literally point to Allah, and we don't understand the how of that because we only know what we see, and we only know and we only see physical things. So anyhow, Ibn Uthaymin over here says that if you negate a direction for Allah, you're actually negating Allah's actual existence. However, the Hanbalis, the Ash'ad. Wait, I need to because I have a footnote that you lied here, and I want to see that. It's at 103109. Sorry, guys, this is important. With right his here. essence. Allah is above the throne, with his essence be that thing. Number two, you have Qadi Abu Ya'la al Hanbali. Abu Ya'la was a Hanbali scholar from the year 458. Okay, 458. He wrote a very detailed work on Aqidah, ah, on the Hanbali Aqidah. I missed that point. And in this book, he says that Allah is not in a direction. Okay. وقد وصفه صلى الله عليه وسلم بالنزول سماء الدنيا والعلو لا على وجه الانتقال والحركة كما جازت رؤيته لا في جهة. Right, Allah is not in a direction or in a place, right? Because if, you, if you're not in a direction, you're not in a place. And if you are in a direction, you're in a place. These two things are, uh, they go hand in hand. So anyhow, he's saying that Allah is not in a direction. Allah is not there or there or there or there. Allah, Where did he say that? Where, where did he say that? لا على وجه الانتقال حركة كما جازت رؤيته like it's permissible uh, similarly seeing him without a direction just like Allah showed himself to the mountain when Musa asked to see Allah that Allah is not in a direction the same way seeing Allah is permissible beyond direction right Allah is not in a direction or in a place Right? Because if, you, if you're not in a direction, you're not in a place. And if you are in a direction, you're in a place. These two things are, uh, they go hand in hand. Anyways, let me come back to this. He's physical and Allah is not physical, so he's not in a direction. He created places. So Allah is not in direction. So you are better than the Messenger of Allah, Umar. The hadith in Sahih Muslim from Jabir ibn Abdullah, the Prophet وسلم, said, وَأَنْتُمْ تُسْأَلُونَ عَنِّي فَمَا أَنْتُمْ قَائِلُونَ when you will be asked about me, what will you say? قالوا نشهد أنك قد بلغت وأديت ونصحت. They said the Sahaba said, and he was addressing over 
a hundred thousand if my memory serves me well. They said, we bear witness that you have conveyed and you have fulfilled and you have advised. فَقَالَ بِإِصْبَعِهِ السَّبَّابَ Then the Prophet ﷺ used his index finger. يَرْفَعُهَا إِلَى السَّبَاءِ He raises it to the heaven, to the sky, to the sabah. وَيَنْكُتُهَا إِلَى النَّاسِ And then he will bring it down facing the people and say, اللَّهُمَّ أَشْهَدْ اللَّهُمَّ أَشْهَدْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ He did so three times. The Prophet ﷺ pointed with his finger to the heaven and then he pointed at the people and said, Oh Allah, bear witness. Are you better than the Messenger of Allah? Are you better than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are you denying the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he chose to do in front of the Sahaba? Do you have a better understanding than Allah's Messenger than the Sahaba? Ma tastihiya akhi? You going to deny this hadith as well in Sahih Muslim? And tell me it's Sahih uh, hadith ahad? Or how you, you're going to give it your own interpretation? He didn't know what he's doing alayhi salam. The Sahaba didn't understand what was going on. This is the, this is the pathetic state of the Ash'aris. This hadith is explicit and it will drive him crazy. What are they going to do with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi pointing to the sky and then pointing at the people? Why was he pointing to the sky if Allah is not above and saying, Oh Allah, bear witness. The other hadith, hadith Mu'awiyah ibn Hakam al-Sulami in Sahih Muslim. Uh, you all know the hadith after he slapped the slave girl. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi biha. Prophet ﷺ said, bring her to me, فَأَتَيْتُهُ بِهَا So I brought her, فَقَالَ لَهَا أَيْنَ Allah. The Prophet ﷺ asked, where's Allah? Look at these guys. They tell you, ah, oh, no, we don't ask, you know, don't this and don't do that. The Prophet ﷺ explicitly saying, where's Allah? قَالَتْ فِي السَّمَاءِ She said, she said, in the heavens. And when I say in the heavens, meaning in the state of transcendence. Obviously, we all know that the heavens do not uh, uh, encompass Allah. Nothing encompasses Allah. فِي السَّمَاءِ أَيْ فِي اتِّجَاهَ السُّمُو Meaning in a, in, a, in a state of transcendence, being above. That's what it means. And that's clear. That doesn't, that's not ta'wil. That's not ta'wil in any way, shape or form. We're only using that because you want to use the term fi to understand it as though that he's being, you know, is being uh, uh, surrounded or being included or involved or being part of his creation. So we're only using that to dismiss your false interpretation that you've imposed on the, uh, the Sunnis. قَالَ مَنْ أَنَا قَالَتْ أَنْتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ He said, who am I? She said, you are the Messenger of Allah. قَالَ أَعْتِقْهَا فَإِنَّهَا مُؤْمِنًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, emancipator, for she's a believer. Two hadith in Sahih Muslim that prove that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed to the sky uh, when he spoke about Allah. As for the ijma' فَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ الصَّحَابَةُ الْكِرَامَ عَلَىٰ عُلُوِّ اللَّهِ The Sahaba have unanimously agreed about the transcendence of Allah. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ فَوْقَ عَرْشِهِ لَا يَغِيبُ عَنْهُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And that Allah Azzawajal is above the throne, above the throne, and nothing, nothing escapes Him, not even the grain, not even the weight of a grain in the heavens uh, and in the earth. فَهَذَا أَبُو بَكَرْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَرْضَاهُ This is Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Siddiq. لما بلغه موت لما بلغه موت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم when the death of the prophet ولما بلغه موت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأبي هو وأمي when the news of the death of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم reached him دخل عليه فبكى فنظر إليه فقبل بين عينيه وقال طبت حيا وميتا يا رسول الله so you know the hadith على كل حال he went out at the end and he said Abu Bakr said, <laughs> Abu Bakr said in front of all the Sahaba, "Man kana ya'budu Allah, fa inna Allah fi al-sama. Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan, fa inna Muhammadan kal mad." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whoever worships Muhammad, Muhammad has died. Alayhi salam. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah. Whoever worships Allah, fa inna Allah fi al-sama. Allah is in the heavens. Hayyun la yamut. He is alive and he does not die. Abu Bakr Siddiq was an Ashari and a Maturidi. Abu Bakr Siddiq was denying the names and attributes of Allah. Did Abu Bakr Siddiq give all the false interpretations that you're giving right now? That he is not here and if you're in a direction that means that you're in a place and if you're a place that means in your direction and if you're a being that means you are like the creation and if you're all day you're just, you know, you're just dancing around with the deen of Allah. So Abu Bakr believed that Allah Azza wa is fawq al-arsh. It clearly... Allah al-Musta'an. Another hadith from Umar. 
that uh, Khawla uh, used to, you know, come to him and said, uh, you know, she came to him and said, oh, maybe you're going to be asked about you, uh, in front of your Lord and that he should fear Allah Azza wa Jal regarding the Ra'iyah. So one of his workers, قَدْ أَكْثَرْتِ عَلَىٰ أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ uh, he said, you've said a lot, you keep, you know, you keep uh, uh, giving a hard time to Amir Mu'mini Faqara Amir Khutab, Umar bin Khattab, Uskut. He said, pay attention, Ama, uh, be quiet. Ama ta'lam an hadhi khawla radiyallahu anhu arda. You don't know this khawla, allati sami allahu qawlaha, aw shikayataha min fawqi sab'i sab'awat. The one whom Allah heard her complain, you know Surat al-Mujadila. So, do, do you know who she is? The one whom Allah heard her complaint from above the seven heavens? So here's Umar believing that Allah hears the sounds of this woman and that she was complaining from the above the seven heavens. And this is also the belief of Aisha radiallahu anha who also believed the same thing. Who said, Subhanalladhi wasi'a sam'ahu kullal aswat. How perfect is he who was uh, hearing encompasses all sounds. فَإِنَّ الْمَرْأَ تَشْتَكِي لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ فَيَخْفَ عَلَيَّ بَعْضُ حَدِيثِهَا The woman is complaining to the Prophet ﷺ and some of فَيَخْفَ عَلَيَّ بَعْضُ حَدِيثِهَا Some of her speech I cannot even hear. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلَكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي And then she said, she said, مِن فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَات That Allah Azza wa Jal heard it from above the seven heavens. So here is Aisha and Umar and Abu Bakr so far. And it's the same i'tiqad of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anha. He entered radiallahu anhu because he entered upon Aisha radiallahu anha when she was dying. فَقَالَ لَهَا أَبْشِرِي He said, receive glad tidings. وَهَذِيَ السُنَّةِ This is the sunnah. When someone is dying, you should have good assumption of your Lord. He said, أَبْشِرِي أَنْتِ زَوْجُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ You are the زوج. You are the wife of the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَأَنْتِ 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 And he kept reminding her of her virtues. ثُمَّ قَالُ وَأَنْتِ الَّتِي بَرَّأَكِ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَبَوَاتِ And you are the one whom Allah has declared your innocence from above the seven heavens. يا أخوان ويش بسوي معاكم These are the senior the senior companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then you have also the, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ to Mu'adh. When he told him, قَدْ وَفَقْتَ حُكْمَ اللَّهِ You have been in agreement with the ruling of Allah. When he gave the fatwa about Bani Quraidha, uh, عندما قال تكتل uh, مقا, uh, 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 المهم, قال قَدْ وَفَقْتَ, وفقت حُكْمَ اللَّهِ مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ You have, you have, you have uh, been in agreement or you, your ruling agreed with the ruling of Allah Azza wa from above the seven heavens. And Ibn Abbas used to say, between the Ard and Sama, Dunya, Masirat Khamsmiyat'am, between the, the earth and the Sama, Dunya is the, the walking distance of 500 years. And between each heaven and the one above is the equivalent of 500 years. Thumma qal, wa fawqa thalika, wa fawqa thalika al kursi, and above all that is the footstool. Wa fawqa al kursi al arsh, and above the, the footstool is the throne. وَفَوْقَ الْعَرْشِ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ وَلَا يَخْفَ عَلَيْهِ مِكُمْ شَيْءٍ Above the throne is Allah Azza wa Jal and nothing of him, nothing escapes Allah from your affairs. So what else do you want? This is also the atiqad of the tabi'een. Uh, Masruq uh, used to say when he was interpreting the ayah, uh, the had, uh, the, you know, حَدَّثَتْنِ عَائِشَ الَّتِي بَرَّأَهَا اللَّهُ مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعِ سَمَوَاتِ Aisha narrated to me the one whom Allah declared her innocence from above the seven heavens. وَهُوَ قَوْلُ مُجَاهِدْ وَعَطَاءِ It's the opinion of Mujahid and Ata'a and other than that. وَهُوَ قَوْلُ الشَّافِعِي وَأَبَى حَنِيفَ وَمَالِكُ وَإِمَامَ أَحْمَدْ It's the opinion of the four Imams. المهم uh, Another woman came to Abu Hanifa. Uh, she said, أنت, you teach the people fiqh. I will ask you about the greater fiqh. He said, what is it? She said, where's Allah? That is the fiqh al-akbar. Uh, uh, he said to her, come to me after a week. She came after a week. He said, Allah fawq al-sama. Allah is above the heavens. Qal, fawq al-arsh, wal -arsh fawq al -sama. And he said, above the throne, and the throne is above the heaven. Uh, and I can go on. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, said, uh, inna Allah fawq arshihi, Allah is above his throne. Imam Shafi'i. Also said also that Allah Fawqa Arshi Allah is above his throne. Imam Ahmad said the same thing. 
And I can go on forever and ever explaining to you the aqeedah of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Sahaba Tabi'in, Adba Tabi'in, that they all affirmed the apparent meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah, and not like those deviant people. He's not, He's not within, within a place. place. There's no direction that we can literally point to Allah, and we don't understand the how of that because we own. The Prophet points, he tells you there's no direction we can point. We know what we see, and we only know, uh, we only see physical things. So anyway, Ibn Uthaymin over here says that if you negate a direction for Allah, you're actually negating Allah's actual existence. However, the Hanbalis, the Ash'aris, and the Maturidis negated a direction for Allah. Yeah, liar, I just quoted to you, the, I just quoted to you all the opposite, Allah Hadiq. The next thing we have over here is Imam Abdullah Al-Muwahid Al-Hanbali, the same Hanbali scholar, he mentioned in his book that it is mandatory to hold firm that Allah is not a physical being. We believe that Allah is not physical. What does Ibn Uthaymin say? He says, if it is, if it is mandatory or if it is something that is necessary from us to be able to see Allah, that he is uh, a physical body, then let him be a physical body. There's no jazm, right? The, the, uh, the Hanbali scholar said that it's mandatory for you to hold firm to the belief that Allah is not a jism, Allah is not physical. He's saying, well, laysa fil kitabi wa sunnati. A Hanbali scholar. A, a, a Hanbali scholar. In other words, it could be, it could not be. So he's allowing for the possibility of Allah to be physical. Yes, of course, because we go with the evident meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah. We don't play around with the deen like you do. Whereas the Hanbali and the... We don't affirm what is not affirmed. We don't negate what is not negated. We hold neutral positions. Ash'ari and the Maturi, the Aqeedah, has stated throughout history that it is mandatory to hold firm that Allah is not physical. And then we have uh, Imam Abdullah al muwahhibi al-Hanbali over here saying that it is mandatory to hold firm uh, to the belief that Allah is separate from his creation. He existed without place. He created place. Same person, huh? He existed before the creation of place, etc. He says that he is not analogized with people, right? Analogies are not drawn between people and the creation and Allah. Sure. He says he does not resemble anything and nothing resembles him. Agreed. Look at Ibn Uthaymeen over here. He says, he brings the hadith that Allah, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ آدَمْ عَلَى سُورَتِهِ And he says this, this suratihi, this his image, refers to Allah. It doesn't refer to the person as, uh, you know, a good number of scholars have said that it refers to that person. But anyways, he says that that means Allah, Allah has an image. And what is this image of Allah? Well, this image of Allah is what he created Adam alayhi upon. So then he says, well, if somebody was to ask that, okay, what is that image that Allah has? What is the image that Allah has that he created humans upon? Ibn Uthaymin says, well, Allah has, uh, humans have eyes and Allah has eyes and Allah has a face and we have a face and Allah has hands and we have hands. So he draws the analogy between our body parts. This is, this is likening Allah to his creation 1000%. 1000% you're a liar Rabbil Ka'ba Rabbil Ka'ba Wal Kitab That you're a liar How is that likening Allah to his creation? Well we're just telling you We're telling you that those words have meanings Words have meanings So if I tell you right now that there's Jannah Jannatun Na'im And that there's You know if, if somebody tells me What, what do you mean by Jannatun Na'im Aw Tajri Min Tahti Al Anhar And I go and show him uh, You know some image Does that mean right now that Jannah Is like that Or am I giving him an idea I'm giving him an idea what it's like in Jannah, no one knows. But if you want to get an idea of what it's like, then this is what you need to look at. You see that you see the distortion. So you say a thousand percent. No, we're not like because we're not saying like our hands, like our uh, uh, face, like our eyes. We're saying Laysa Kamitri Shay. When you want to quote Sheikh Al-Sabib Taymiyyah, whose book, this book I've covered from cover to cover, I've explained from cover to cover, please bring the context. Go to my talk. The, the lesson particularly on this issue the hadith of, of uh, uh, Surat Adam and read the entire explanation to see what a liar this person is because we've clearly negated that we, we that Allah likened, is being likened to his creation 1000% anyway then he says yes there is definitely absolutely definitely there is a type of, 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 of similarity but because Laysa Kamithli Shay, this is where you draw the line. What's your problem? What is your problem? Don't you believe that Allah laughs? Do you believe that Allah laughs? Don't you laugh? Isn't there a, a type of uh, similarity? But does that mean that the laughter of Allah resembles ours? Absolutely not. But there is a type of similarity between Allah and His creation. There's a little, there's, there is that similarity there. That Allah has a hand and we have a hand. There's that similarity there. However, if you look at what the Hanbali scholars have said, and the Ash'aris, and the Maturidis, once again. Where are the Hanbali scholars, ya Mahandis? Where? Again, all of the Aqid of the Sunnah from the past, they've said, 
that Allah doesn't resemble anything and nothing resembles Allah. There is no shabah. There is no resemblance at all whatsoever between Allah and His creation. So he says over here, Ibn Uthaymin says, that which means that there is a similarity, but it's not, you know, complete similarity. Mumathala, like, you know, uh, an exact, an exact replica. And, and mention the continuation of the explanation. كما أن just like a zumra a zumra al ula من أهل الجنة فيها شبه من القمر لكن بدون مماثلة why don't you mention the context just like the first batch to enter Jannah will have a similarity to the moon but they are not they're not resembling the moon they're not going to look like a moon you know with a, a round the humans are going to enter Jannah looking like a, a moon a, a round circle with I don't know you know holes on it. Subhanallah. <laughs> so that's an evidence for you about how something can have shame in a shabah, but don't mumathala from the very words of the Prophet. <laughs> but you conveniently don't, you don't uh, translate that part because it exposes you. So which means that there is a similarity, but it's not, you know, complete similarity. Mumathala, like, you know, uh, an, exact, an exact replica type of thing. Abu al Fadl al Tamimi over here. Look what exact replica. Nobody ever said anything about exact replica. What he says over here, he says that Imam Ahmed's aqidah was when Allah says, rabbika, The face of your Lord will remain. He says the meaning of wajh over here, the, of face, right? That the meaning of face is not a physical face, according to Imam Ahmed, right? And the Hanbali aqidah as a whole. The face is not a meaning of a physical uh, body part, right? Nor is it surah. Pay attention to this word. Right? It's not in the meaning of an image. <laughs> Nor is it in the meaning of a physical body, body part. And then what does he say? وَمَنْ قَالَ ذَلِكَ فَقَدِ ابْتَدَعَ And whoever says that, whoever says that, and, 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 and attributes the face as a surah or as an image to Allah or for Allah, whoever says that, فَقَدِ ابْتَدَعَ Has innovated, has deviated. Okay? Ibn Uthaymin says, if you ask, what is the image that Allah has that Adam was created upon? The image. What is the image that Allah has? We respond by saying that Allah has a face. In other words, what? His face is an image. And the Hanbali scholars, Imam Ahmad, Imam Abu Fadl, the Hanbali scholars of the past have said that if you say that the face... So why don't you quote Imam Ahmad and not quote what someone said about Imam Ahmad? You claim that Imam Ahmad said this and said that. Where is the statement of Imam Ahmad? Where is it? of Allah, the meaning of it is an image, you have innovated, you have deviated. Qadi Abu Ya'la, rahmahullah, he says in his book that um, Allah, Allah says uh, the, the verse, Now this verse is it's so profound, and we're gonna, I'm going to have a whole different video that just explains this verse. Anyhow, this verse, Allah says, that Allah's hands are outspread. What does that mean, right? So some scholars, like the Hanbalis over here, says that it means we establish Allah has an attribute of Allah has an attribute that are called yad, that are called hand, right? The translation would be hand, but the meaning is not a hand. He says over here, that Allah's two hands, these, these two hands are not body parts. Okay, so what are they then? Because the only thing you know of what a hand is, is body parts. But he's negating that it's a body part. He's saying it's not a body part. So what is it? This is proof that it's not taking the hands on the literal meaning. So he says, that it's not uh, two limbs uh, or body parts. And then he I have a comment here. The hand of Allah is not a literal hand. You claim Imam Ahmad said that, and said this and said that. Where? Provide the proof. Forget about what they're saying about Imam Ahmad, 458 after Hijrah, and tell us what Imam Ahmad himself said. And by the way, look what he said. وَلَا بِمَعْنَ النِّعْمَ وَلَا بِمَعْنَ الْقُدْرَةِ And Abu Ya'la said it's not a bounty nor ability. So your interpretation is that it is a bounty or which is the, the Ash'ari uh, interpretation, generally speaking, is that it is bound to your ability. So it is neither literal hand, and that's not what the word said, by the way. It just says they are not limbs. It says that we are not limbs, and we don't attribute limbs to Allah. We don't attribute limbs to Allah. But we believe Allah Azza wa Jal has a hand that befits His majesty. So He's telling you it's not a ni'mah, it's not a qudra. So then tell me, what is a yad? What is a yad to you then? He gets the metaphorical meanings as well because he didn't believe that they were taken as a metaphor. He said they were, they were to be believed in as attributes of Allah rather than um, descriptions of, you know, some type of a physical body type of thing. So anyhow, uh, Imam Abu Fadl al-Tamimi, and he says that, uh, he quotes Imam Ahmed, he says that Imam Ahmed used to say, verily Allah has two hands, and he says that they are attributes of his essence and they're not body parts, they're not physical, etc. And then he says, uh, 
that uh, you don't you don't draw analogies to Allah's hands. That Allah's hands are you know something else. This yad for Allah, and we just mentioned before that they're not body parts. So this is a complete negation of the actual literal meaning of the word hand of the word hands, uh, because the literal meaning of the word hand is a body part. That's what it is. And if you don't negate the literal, the meaning of the word hand is a body part. So when you say uh, give me a hand, so someone has to give you their hand. Can someone uh, can can someone give you a hand without giving you a hand? And do you believe that other, like other creation, other items that the people have created, they, they use the term hands for them? Like the clock, like watches, you know, like the handles of certain things. The term hand. Why are you insisting on thinking of a creation of Allah? Why are you insisting on thinking of a human being? Why are you likening Allah to his creation? And then therefore being forced to deny. Why? Why can't you give the word hand what it deserves? Why does it have to be a, a limb? We don't believe in limbs either literal meaning of the word hand, then you believe that you're attributing a literal body part to Allah, whether you say it or not. It's like saying that... Um, the funny thing is here, you use two hands, and in the other one you refuse to translate yet to hand. So in the go back to the beginning of the video, he was trying to be slick, and he said instead of, you know, I think it was Yadullah, Yadullah aidihim, he said the support and the agreement of Allah and, you know, Yadullah al jamaah he refused to use the word hand, when he was using the word yad. And now his fitra kicked in and he's forced to use the word hands right now. So in the beginning of the video, his iman was high. His ash'ad iman was super high. It prevented him from using the, the translation of the word yad to hand because suppose it's not a hand. And now his fitra kicks in and it's basically forcing him to use the term hand because how else are you, you going to use translate the word yad? It's like saying, uh, I bought a bike. But then... And then somebody says, oh, so you bought a bike that has two wheels. And you're like, well, no, I didn't buy a bike that has two wheels. I bought a bike. It's like two wheels are part of a bike. It comes with that statement. You say you bought a bike. That must be the dumbest analogy I've ever heard in my life. Wallahi al-Azim, this is a miskeen analogy. What are you in, in, in grade, in, in kindergarten, not kindergarten, I'm mid-school. You're in high school. What are you saying? So do, do you really not know that there are, for example, bikes with one wheels, or three wheels or four wheel bikes. Did you know that they're quad bikes? So what is this? I mean, it's not even worth refuting. You mean you bought two wheels, right? And, and a seat and whatnot. So when they say that Allah has a, a seat and what? <laughs> means a body part. And if you don't negate. No, it does not mean. Affirming Allah has a hand that befits His majesty does not mean that we are believing in body parts. You're lying against us. You are, you are inventing a lie. You are ascribing it to us. And then you are criticizing us and judging us for it. All from your own mind. Nothing with our agreement. A body part, or if you don't negate the literal meaning, then you're affirming something uh, such as a physical body part uh, to Allah. Ibn Uthaymin over here says, he comments under the exact same verse that Imam Abu Ya'la commented. Remember that one where Allah says, rather his two hands are outspread? He just said his two hands again, huh? <laughs> L, L. Right? He says, Yaqulun. Again, yeah, trying to quote from Ahlus Sunnah. Make this is what they do. They they'll always say, "Oh yeah, Ahlus Sunnah to Jama'ah says this." By the way, this, so this 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 uh, uh, insect is claiming that Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin is a liar. Imagine a Sheikh whose knowledge has spread wide and far, and Allah has benefited this Ummah with tremendously. Who's authored Allah knows how many books? Who's done so much work for Islam? This YouTube insect character is coming and telling you explicitly that Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen was lying. He was lying by alleging that there's an ijma' when there's no ijma'. Yani you deserve zero respect when you reach this level, Wallah. Wallahi, this is, the, this is the epitome of aib. If you have any dignity left in you. Sunnah says that. And they're just making something up. Because I'm showing you what Ahlus Sunnah will jama'ah. They're making something up. You're showing us. You did not show us anything from Ahlus Sunnah al jamaah You've been quoting Ash'aris from the beginning of the video. Ya, ya, ya And I'm showing you what all the Ash'aris and the Maturidis and, the, and these Hanbalis that I'm quoting. Where's all? You've quoted the same six scholars over and over again. And these are not Hanbalis that were Ash'aris. I quoted Imams. I quoted Imams. I quoted Sahaba. These are Hanbalis upon the madhab of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. I'm showing, I'm showing you what, you they, what said, they said, and I'm showing you what this guy said. And, and they're, this they're, they're guy, huh? So, so, this guy, this guy, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen is this guy. لا وفقك الله لا وفقك الله وأخذك و و و و أذلك للتعدي على على الشيخ بعدما تعديت على النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلى الصحابة الكرام. 
لا بارك الله فيك Anyhow, what does he say over here? He says, يقولون أهل السنة والجماعة says, هي يد حقيقية Yeah, 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 change your voice to mock ثابتة لله That it is a literal hand Established for Allah A literal hand established for Allah Absolutely, a literal hand, that is not a limb Abu Ya'la al-Hanbali, the same scholar from the past He in his book The same scholar from the past We recycle, we معتمد في أصول الدين. He says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم described Allah with نزول, right? With with descent, descent and ascent, right? But he says لا على وجه الانتقال والحركة. That not by way of movement from place to place, right? In other words, in other words, not a literal movement, not a literal coming and a literal going, and a literal descension and a literal ascension. These are not literal terms. This is what he's trying to say that the Hanbali aqida was, the Ashari aqida was, and the Maturidi aqida was. All of us agree on this. On, on this. All of us agree. All of us. Uh, you are the a liar. All of us agree that you should. We should all agree that you're a liar. <laughs> he keep quoting the same sheikh. He quotes the same sheikh again. How do you sleep at night, man? How do you keep quoting the same sheikh and say everybody? Topic. But I'm bringing the Hanbalis. Anyways, Ibn Uthaymin, what does he say over here? He says, فَنُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي حَقِيقَةً We believe that Allah... Ay, wallah, الَّذِي لَا إِلَىٰ غَيْرُ Allah comes حَقِيقَةً Ay, naam, Allah comes حَقِيقَةً Ay, shmushkiltak Don't liken Allah to his creation, you have no problem. Allah comes literally. Allah literally comes. This is what he's saying. This one we have Imam Ibn Uthaymin. He says that, uh, you know, it's come to us before because he wrote about it before. He says that Allah's ascension is of two types. The attribute the attribute of ascension and the literal ascension where he says, that, that Allah's, you know, Allah's actual essence is what rises. And so there's that literal kind of ascension, which is movement from place to place and something that the Hanbalis have rejected. Ibn Uthaymin says over here, what the, he lies about the method of Ahl-Sunnah and I brought this screenshot from me. He lies against the mother of Al-Sunnah. Ayu, ayu, kamil, 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 kamil. the same one, but it explains this this point as well, where he says that uh, the mother of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that Allah rose with His essence. Allah rose literally with His essence. That uh, I quoted to you who said that. Uh, you know, and this is this is movement from place to place. If you move with your essence, you're moving from one place to another place, and this is something that's rejected. Movement is uh, an aspect of the creation. Stop likening Allah to His creation. Ya mushabbih. By the Hanbalis, uh, the, the classical Hanbalis, and all of the Ashari's and Maturidis. And the last thing I have here is some screenshots of uh, Qadi Abu Ya'la where he you know, <laughs> indulges in kalam. And he uses kalam arguments to prove and disprove things in his book of Aqeedah of Ahl-Sunnah of the Hanbali Madhab. And this is, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the Salafis of today, they always try and attack you know, ilm al-kalam. And they think that they know what they're talking about. Really, it goes against them because their own scholars from, you know, that they claim to follow, they claim to be Hanbali uh, and follow the Hanbali Madhab. The, their own scholars from the Hanbali Madhab went into kalam and used Stop, Ule, stop. Le Wallah, Kasaman Billah Al Azim, Habagiri Shway, you offsal Alek. Ya Rajal, Takila, Ya Rajal. You're quoting one person. One person. You're going to tell me the entire uh, entirety of the Hanaf, Imam Ahmad himself. Forget about the followers of the Madhab. Imam Ahmad, did he engage in Ilmul Kalam? Did Imam, are you trying, are you supporting Ilmul Kalam? Is that what you're trying to do? You quote, what, you know, one, one person becomes a representative of all the Hanabila, Tab Ama Hambali, in fiqh, by the way. And once again, the, the, the deceit about fiqh right now. Now, we, now you're using the term Hanbali to denote aqidah and not fiqh. I'm fiqh and, and uh, I'm Hanbali in fiqh. And I don't engage in uh, ilmul kalam. And everybody that I know from within, the people that I know, even the scholars of the past, none of them indulge in ilmul kalam. So now you're going to claim that all the Hanbalis did and only us, the Wahhabis, don't? Ya kadhab. Kalam in their own works. If you look at this, for example, if I'm going to read this right now. If there's any Salafis watching this, tell me if you understood this, right? I'll be shocked if they understood because these are, this is, you know, they have to sit, they'll actually have to sit there and read, okay, hold on, what it is, and read it like 10 times over just to get such a simple thing that it's not, it's not simple to them because they don't, this is not something that they learn, this is not something that they know, right? Yeah, why would I learn something that would, why would I learn something that the Prophet ﷺ didn't teach? Ya, 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 mudil. Why would I learn something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't teach to show you how deviant you are and how Allah exposes you deviance by Allah, I ask you. Why would I learn something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't teach? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach Ilmul Kalam? Did the Sahaba engage in Ilmul Kalam? Did anyone from the Salaf al-Salih, the early generations, indulge in Ilmul Kalam up until, up until the Muslims got exposed to the, the, the philosophy of Aristotle and Plato? And then they, you know, they, it was adopted by some of the uh, Muslim figures. And then they populated it and they made it, uh, uh, you know, relevant to Islam. And they tried to, you know, just like the, the Christians did with their deen. Why would I? Ibn Batta said from Abu Bakr al-Maruzi, قَالَ سَمِعْتُ أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ 
I heard Abu Abdullah Imam Ahmad. Man ta'ata al-kalam lam yuflih. Whoever engages in speculative, speculative theology will not succeed. وَمَنْ تَعَاتَ الْكَلَامِ لَمْ يَخْلُ أَنْ يَتَجَهَمْ And whoever engages the kalam, there is no escape that he will become a jahmi. And also he narrated that uh, Imam Ahmad said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ وَالْحَدِيثِ وَيَنْفَعُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِ Upon you is the sunnah and the hadith and Allah will, Allah will benefit you with it. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْخَوْضَ وَالْجِدَالَ وَالْمِرَى And woe to you from engaging into these technicalities and argumentation and dispute. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ مَنْ أَحَبَّ الْكَلَامِ He will not succeed the one who loves the speculative theology. Speak it about your likes, buddy. So this liar comes and tells you that the Hanbalis, the Hanbalis engage in, in, in kalam and the Hanbali madhab is pro-kalam when the Imam of the madhab himself is telling you otherwise. Is he going to quote to Imam Ahmad telling you to engage in kalam? No, he can't because there's nothing to do that. He's going to quote Abu Ya'la or someone who came hundreds of years later. And he further said, whoever engages in kalam, then his final affair will be bid'ah. Like this mubtada that you're looking at right now. This mubtada who is swimming in bid'ah day and night cannot even come out of it even if he tried. لِأَنَّ الْكَلَامَ لَا يَدْعُ إِلَىٰ خَيْرٍ Because kalam does not guide you to good. وَلَا أُحِبُّ الْكَلَامُ وَلَا الْخَوْضُ وَلَا الْجِدَىٰ I don't like this science and I don't like argumentation. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَنْ وَالْأَثَارُ وَالْفِقْرِ الَّذِي تَنْتَفِعُونَ بِهِ Upon you is the sunan and the athar from the sahaba and the tabi'een and the understanding that will benefit you. وَدَعُوا الْجِدَالَ وَكَلَامَ أَهْلِ الزَّيْغِ وَالْمِرَاءِ And leave the argumentation and the people of people and the speech of the people of deviation and the disputes. أَدْرَكْنَا النَّاسَ وَلَا يَعْرِفُونَ هَذَا We met people and they did not know anything about this kalam. وَيُجَانِبُونَ أَهْلَ الْكَلَامِ And they stayed away from the people of kalam. وَعَاقِبَةُ الْكَلَامِ لَا تَأُولُ إِلَىٰ خَيْرٍ And the outcome of kalam does not lead to good. أَعَانَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ الْفِتَنِ May Allah Azza wa Jal aid us and you from fitan. وَسَلَّمَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ هَلَكَةٍ May Allah save us from every form of destruction. Furthermore, in Ibn, Ibn Batta said in Alibana from Imam Ahmad, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ رَجُلْ يُحِبِّ الْكَلَامِ فَاحْذَرُوا If you see a person loving the science of kalam, then stay away from him. <laughs> Wallah, I gotcha. Hey. And so they give now, now listen, after I told you, listen to this now. The ruling on this without, without knowing anything about it. Right? So I'm going to read this one here. He says, right. And this is the for my iman to increase, for me to get from, you know, enter Jannah from one of its uh, uh, gates, I really needed to know that statement that he said. Whatever is needed, if it's not needed, when it's needed, but if it's needed, it's not needed, then needed with the needed. That's, that's how all these philosophers sound. And the funniest thing is that they think, they, they think Allah gave him like special intelligence. Like, look, he thinks I am so bright. My name is Umar and I can understand this stupid paragraph that is written by this uh, person. Therefore, I am more intelligent and superior to these people. And because they don't understand it, they have to read, read it 10 times and they still won't understand it. That means that they are inferior. Ya Ta'ban, we quote, Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul, and, and you bring, bring up this uh, statements of Plato and Aristotle. Who is the deviant one? Anyone can get philosophical. If the wall is right next to the curtain, and then the curtain is behind the wall, if it's behind the wall, then it's technically in front of the wall. But if the couch was right next to them, so technically the, the curtain is between the couch and the wall. But if the curtain was in front of the couch, then the wall is behind the curtain and the couch. And ba 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 ba. Ruh ya, ja ruh naam ya sheikh. And the impossibility, <coughs> the impossibility of two things being interdependent uh, on each other. So, anyhow. Yeah, anyhow. <laughs> Burr, see? You could have said it in three words. Instead, you had to read a whole paragraph. That's how pathetic Ahlul Kalam is. Or. Ilmul Kalam is and Ahlul Kalam are. And then I have one more screenshot that I wanted to mention. This is from Imam uh, Ibn Qudama. Ibn Qudama was a, you know, a great scholar in the Hanbali school and he's someone that is respected, well respected by, uh, by you know, the, all of the Hanbalis, right? Now, the Salafi sect, they act like they love Ibn Qudama because of how respected he was. 
they disagree with everything that's in Ibn Qudama's book, right? With regards to Ibn Qudama was Ibn Fawl. And we'll get to that in, when we talk about Aqidah itself. But, uh, you know, they disagree with it. This is what Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says according to his book, Lum'atul Al-I'tiqad. He says, this is, uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says that uh, the hadith about Allah, uh, Allah uh, the hadith about Allah descending to the first heaven and the uh, hadith that says Allah will be seen on the day of judgment. These, you know, these are hadith that seem to indicate that Allah is a physical body. Imam Ahmad says that... <coughs> نؤمن بها we believe in it ونصدق بها and you know we affirm it بلا كيف ولا معنى the scholars actually refute that uh, attribution to Imam Ahmad the statement ولا معنى ولا معنى without uh, uh, without a meaning the scholars actually did, do not acknowledge this attribution to Imam Ahmad you quoting you quoting Ibn Qudama about what Imam Ahmad said but you don't have anyone, any statement from Imam Ahmad himself. Why don't you bring the statement of Imam Ahmad himself so that we can put it under the microscope and inspect it? To quote someone that said that about Imam Ahmad, the scholars actually dispute that attribution. Without a modality and without a meaning. We don't give a meaning to this, to these, to these uh, words. No meaning, so we, we, what is the point of the Quran and the Sunnah if there's no meaning? Me words have meanings. Now you're negating the meanings of words. What are you saying then? Everything you're saying then is, has no meaning. Ya Rajal, come on man. And we don't have a modality to these words. This is what Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says. And remember what I said at the very... No, very that's what someone said Imam Ahmad said. Where's the statement of Imam Ahmad? What, what, what is the time difference between Ibn Qudam and Imam Ahmad? I was caught in the chain of narration that leads to Imam Ahmad. Where's that chain of narration? At the beginning of this video where I spoke about how when the Salaf say something, whose understanding of their words are we taking? So the, what I'm going to say right now is what the majority of the fuqaha have said, who, who are all you know, in, in, in agreement in their aqidah. They've said that the word, the word, the word bila kayf, it's a complete negation of modality. The Salafis of today have come and they've said that bila kayf actually means bi ithbat al kayf. That when the Salaf said, no modality, they meant yes modality. But we don't know the knowledge of that modality. They say that that's what the Salaf meant. What, what is this uh, waffling? <laughs> Bila kayf, meaning we negate modality. We don't deny the apparentness. We, ap we, we approve, affirm the apparentness of the text and we deny the modality. Why are you saying otherwise? Where do you get these statements from? Whereas the rest of the scholars have said, that the meaning of no modality is no modality. Why? Because modality is to explain how of something, the, the how of something, the state of being in which something is in. The, the how of something is, uh, you know, only asked about to describe a physical object or a physical being, right? How tall is he? How big is he? How heavy is he? How Look at the mushabbi. The, these are Look all at the one who likes Allah's creation. Physical and about physical beings. Right? They're not asked about for Allah. Allah is not physical, so therefore he has no modality. And this is what the Salaf is saying over here. So when he says bila kayf, he means bila kayf. And this is what the majority of all of the scholars from all the madhabs and those who specialized in the field of aqidah have said. Bila kayf means bila kayf. No modality means no modality. Right? And wala ma'nan because this is tafweed and we will get into that in a, uh, in a future video. And, but the, uh, the, the simple explanation is wala ma'nan. I request uh, the, uh, tr the chain of narration and the authenticity of this attribution from Ibn Qudama to Imam Ahmad rahim, uh, rahimahullah. Please pr provide that evidence among the other receipts I've required of you. Not a meaning because if we were to say, what does hand mean? You would say body part. Okay, what does hand no. mean if you're saying it's not a body part? Right? Remember Ahmad, Imam Ahmad and the Hanbalis, they all said that Allah's hand is a hand, but it's not a body part. Okay, what in the world is it? Right? And this, you ask the Salafis this, oh, it's understood from the language. Okay, what is it? What is the hand? Right? You ask? It's the hand of Allah. Allah said hand, it's the hand of Allah. It's none of your business what it is in that sense. It is none of your business to speak and delve into something that the Sahaba did not delve into. Are you more keen on knowledge on the Sahaba? Did the Prophet ﷺ use the term hand of Allah in front of him? Yes. Did they ask him what that meant? No. Why are you asking something that they didn't ask? Them what it, the only definition we can give to a literal hand is a physical body part. That's what we know of as a hand. The people who were people and came up with words for language, when they came up with these words... He was criticizing Imam Sheikh Ibn Uthameen earlier and saying, Sheikh Ibn Uthameen is likening Allah to creation because he's saying, you know, we look around us, we look around us when we, what we see of those, you know, this, this and that, and then this is how we think. And now he's, using, now he's refuting himself with the same thing that he was criticizing Sheikh Ibn Uthameen for. He was just saying that Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen was using what the people commonly, uh, you know, see and using that as proof. And now he's saying, look, 
you know, what else do we, are we going to use? We have to look around and see what the people mean by the word hand. Busted. They, they saw, saw a hand, hand and they, and they said, said, we're going to call this yad. yad. So the, the only thing that we know of as a yad, yad is this literal physical, physical hand. hand. And if and you negate you that Allah has, has a literal hand, you say he doesn't have any, he doesn't have a physical hand, then what do you say the hand means? Well, we don't know what it means. Allah knows what it means. Anyhow, this is Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal saying these two. And I just gave you the meaning of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal's statement that the Ummah has agreed upon. And the majority of the scholars have all agreed upon. From those who are specialized in understanding the speech of the Quran and the Sunnah, and if they can understand the speech of the Quran and the Sunnah, they can understand the speech of the scholars as well. And I just Lies. gave you that understanding, which is contradictory to the understanding that the Salafis and the Wahhabis of today uh, say when they say no modality actually means yes modality, but no knowledge of the modality, and they interpret it like that. And Lies. no meaning actually means yes meaning, but no additional meaning or or no changing of the meaning. You read that in the commentaries. I actually read a commentary of Imam Ibn Qudama's book. Anyhow. You read a commentary? So you read one commentary of one sheikh and then you 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 uh, impose it on all of us? Ya khi, you don't fear Allah. Ya khi, Anna, I'm surprised. How could you be a person of deen and person of Islam and be such a, such a, a, a massive liar? So you read one commentary of a book and then now we all become guilty of something that you read? Here I am negating everything that you're lying and attributing to us. I'm one living proof and evidence that what you're saying are lies and that we don't believe that. And if you don't, if you don't believe me, you can say, oh yeah, yeah. You know, Abu Musab, you're just changing things right now conveniently because you refuted me. Lie, akhi. I will prove to you my point. Go to my playlist on my channel called al aqid al wasitiyah which was delivered, the book is completed, before I ever knew you existed. And I proved that you lied to us from the beginning of this video until the end, all the way in that explanation of the Sharh of Sheikh bin Uthaymeen, whom you're refuting, by the way. All of these will prove that all you've done is lie against us right now and attribute, thing, attribute things to us that we don't say, we don't believe. But you pick, you cherry pick, conveniently select a statement of a scholar that has said this or that, and then you paint everybody with that brush and you say all the Hanbalis and all the Ash'aris and all the Maturidis believe this in an unanimous agreement on the majority that's what you're doing and Allah will hold you accountable for this I promise you Allah will hold you accountable for these lies this is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal Imam Shafi'i said a similar thing he says Amantu billahi wa bima jaa anillahi ala muradillah that that's what we believe in Allah and what has come in terms of you know attributes and what has come about Allah upon the meaning that Allah intended why is he saying upon the meaning that Allah intended instead of upon the literal? The Salafis don't say that. They say upon the literal meaning. He's saying on whatever. We believe the same thing. Literally, because Allah Azza wa Jal used those words, the, the modality is according to the intent of Allah. Why are you lying again? For Allah intended. And this we is, believe the same this thing. Is and we actually believe that. We've quoted that in the book. This is, you know, leaving the meaning to Allah. That, you know, I believe in whatever came from Allah upon the meaning that Allah intended. Okay, this is Imam Shafi'i. You have even even uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani where he says that uh, he talks about the Salafi sect and he says that that the scholars have differed with the meaning of descent, Allah's descent into uh, Allah's descent to the lowest heaven. He says, and these are what the, this is one of the things that we reject from Ibn Hajar. Notice that the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they have problems with Imam Nawawi and Imam Al-Hajj Al-Asqalani for having some of the traits of the Ashaira. And this is one where we differ with Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani. We don't accept this opinion on this matter. And that's not surprising. If somebody tells you, why do you have a problem with Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani? It's exactly because of those statements of his that are in line with the Ash'ari belief that goes against Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's why some of the Sunnis have a problem, a major problem with Imam Nawawi ibn Hajj al Asqalani. We, the moderate ones, we believe that they had some traits of the Ashaira, but they were not full fledged Ashaira because full fledged Ashaira they, they negate the apparentness of the meaning and also they give precedence to the intellect over the uh, textual evidence, and that was not the trait of Ibn Hajar and Imam Nawawi. They accepted the, the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma as the source of, as the source of uh, uh, belief as the source of understanding, as the source of Aqeedah, whereas the Ashaira used their intellect as the source of Aqeedah, and Ibn Hajar and Imam Nawawi were not like that. However, they fell into those, some of those traps of the, uh, what you call it? The uh, Ashaira, Ashaira. Because that some of them understood this statement, this, mean, this word of descent to mean uh, on its literal and on its apparent and its literal. He says, ala zahirihi wa haqiqatihi. That they are the, they are, you know, the, um, 
those who liken Allah to his creation, they are the ones who have said that we take the meaning on its literal and its apparent. And those who liken Allah to his creation, the Mushabbiha, the sect, they were not from Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah has been a difference. This is Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, who's, uh, you know, one of the, who's arguably has one of the greatest commentaries on Sahih al Bukhari, Fatul Bari, right? So this is him saying that. And then he quotes the, um, he quotes the aqidah of, of Ahl Sunnah, of the Salaf al Salih, and he says, In other words, they left it as it is. Allah said, Yadullahi fawqaidihim. They didn't talk about it, they didn't explain it, they didn't interpret it, they didn't do anything. They said, Amantu bima ja'a'anillah, that I believe in whatever comes about Allah, and that's it. Mu'minan bihi ala tariq al ijma'l as a whole, in general, they agree, they, they believed in them as a whole, right? They didn't delve into it saying, oh, he has this and that and that, and make it different parts and talk about the details of it. They didn't get into any of that, they just said, we believe it, Allah said it, we believe it, that's it. But then there's one condition to that. Munazihan Allah ta'ala anil kayfiyati wa tashbih, whilst negating modality and likeness of Allah to his creation. Negating modality, negating modality. And he says, that's al Surah Jama'ah, that this was the path of the majority of the Salaf. And Imam al Bayhaqi and others narrated this from the four Imams. That this condition, you'll see a lot of the times the Salafis will say, Look, Imam Shafi'i said that Allah is above his throne. No, Imam Shafi'i didn't say Allah is above his throne unconditionally like that. Right? The scholars didn't just say that. <laughs> he just asked Imam Shafi'i, he didn't say, like, You were with him when he said it? You were with him and he told you, Oh, Umar, by the way, when I'm saying this right now, it's unconditional. Please, uh, you know, uh, 900 years later, or whatever, 100 years later, go tell the people. Please make a video and tell them that at that moment when I said that, it was unconditional. Allah is above His throne unconditionally. They said that Allah is above His throne because Allah said He's above His throne, but not by way of literal place and literalism that we understand from this because we don't, we can't understand. You cannot speak on behalf of the Imam. He knows how to explain himself. You don't think Imam Shafi'i had the ability to speak without engaging in kalam? It's because they didn't engage in kalam. That's why they didn't have a problem. They were straightforward and we all understood what they said straightforward. You, because of the sickness of ilm al-kalam, you're forced to also interpret the statements of the scholars. So not only you misconstrue and misinterpret the Quran and the Sunnah, you also have to go to an explicit statement of the scholar and give it another interpretation than the one that he intended and claim that he intended otherwise. Unbelievable, man. Understand that. We can't, there's no modality to it. We negate this type of, you know, there, there being some type of a how to Allah. We negate any type of likeness of Allah to His creation. This is something the Salafis don't accept. They don't accept that we negate any type of likeness to Allah, and they don't accept that we negate the how. And this was the principle that Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani is talking about, from of the aqidah of the Salaf. And um, he laid out this principle that we negate what does not befit Allah in, in these two these two things, the modality and the, and the uh, likeness of Allah to His creation. He laid out the principle, and in both of those things, the Salafis go against. And I have, you know, there's plenty of examples of that, which I will, in future videos, there, there will, it will come, uh, where they, they go against the modality thing. They establish a modality and they're very explicit about it. Yes, there is a modality. Yes, there is. They don't negate that for Allah. They really? Really? I'm waiting. No, don't, no need. Go through my Aqid al wasitiya and bring them out from the book. It depends on what you mean by modality. You know, what do you mean by modality? We mentioned the how, meaning we say it this way or that way, uh, uh, similar to the creation. Never. No Salafi has ever done that. No Salafi has ever done that. They negate our knowledge of the modality. Anyhow, we'll get into that in, in future video, inshallah. And this one is Imam Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani where he says that uh, he talks about the, the attributes of the eyes and the face and the hands and these attributes of Allah. And he says the differing opinions on, uh, on how we understand them. And he mentions the third one, which is the, uh, the path of the Salafi. He says, imraruha ala ma ja'at, which means to leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. In other words, the Quran said it, so I believe it, and that's it. However, however, I believe in what the Quran said. Does that mean I understand everything the Quran said? Allah said Alif Lam Mim. You know what that means? No, you don't. So He says ma'naha ilallah. Leaving them. Look at this sickness. First of all, look at the example He gave. He's going to give you the example of Al Huruf Al Muqatta'a, which everybody knows that they there's no tafsir for them, and He's using that as a foundation to claim that even these attributes of Allah that come in the Quran. We only accept them because they're said in the Quran, but we don't know what they mean, just like we don't know what Alif Lam Mim means. Unreal. Unreal. Wallahi aib ya akhi. Who believes that? Any of you. I ask you about Allah, even if you're one of his uh, uh, followers or you believe. You, you believe this is a, a good analogy, this is a good example, that you're going to treat the explicit words of the Quran. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ uh, And بَلْ uh, مَبْسُوطَتَانِ تَجْرِي بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَلِتُصْنَى عَلَىٰ عَيْنِ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَىٰ عَلَىٰ الْعَرْشِ إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبِ يَخَفُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ You're going to look at all of those and treat them the same way you treat Alif Lam Mim, Kaf Ha Ya Ayn Saad, Ha Mim. You see how pathetic that is? Wallah, it's pathetic. 
to claim that we don't know what they mean. No, we know what they mean. We just don't have any modality about them. So anyways, he's going to say that, uh, you know, مفوضاً معناها إلى الله تعالى Let me tell you that أهل السنة والجماعة مجمعون على إقرار بص... على الإقرار بالصفات الواردة في الكتاب والسنة وحملها على الحقيقة لا على المجاز ابن عبد البر رحمه الله said that أهل السنة والجماعة have agreed upon uh, acknowledging the attributes that come in the Quran and the Sunnah and accepting them literally in truth without majaz, without figuratively, without doing so figuratively or by means of, uh, uh, you know, uh, f- f- figure of speech. Except that they did not speak about the modality of any of that. So here it tells you explicitly, al sifat ala al haqiqa. لا على المجاز which is what the entire Maturidi and Ash'ari belief is built upon it is not حقيقة according to them every time he was quoting he saying حقيقة meaning, in, meaning in, in reality in reality and he has a problem with that he wants to deny that as well قال الشيخ رسالة بن تيمي رحمه الله وأما التفويد as for the concept of تفويد meaning, meaning we leave the meaning uh, the meaning to Allah not the modality the modality we all agree that we don't delve in but the meaning he said, فَإِنَّ مِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَمَرَنَا أَنَّ تَدَبَّرَ الْقُرْآنِ What is known to everybody is, is that Allah commanded us to reflect and ponder upon the Qur'an. وَحَضَّنَا عَلَىٰ عَقْلِهِ وَفِهْمِهِ And he encouraged us to understand it and to comprehend it. فَكَيْفَ يَجُوزُ مَعَ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يُرَادَ مِنَّ الْإِعْرَاضَ عَنْ فِهْمِ عَنْ فَهْمِ وَمَعْرِفَةِ وَعَقْلِهِ How is it then that we also be are, we are being told to st- stay away, turn away from understanding it and, 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 and learning it and having knowledge of it? If, if he's saying that we, don't, we just take it, we, we leave the meaning to Allah. So Allah is telling us to reflect on the meaning of the Qur'an and then you're telling us leave the meaning. We have to know what the meaning is. وَأَيْضًا فَالْخِطَابُ الَّذِي أُرِيدَ بِهِ هُدَانَ وَالْبَيَانَ لَنَا وَإِخْرَاجَنَا مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ لَنُورِ The speech which was intended for us to be guided with and to clarify for us and to take us from the darkness to the light. If it is regarding that which is, uh, mentions the apparent nusus, uh, if, if according to them, the apparentness of the text is uh, kufr, and then we're not expected to know neither the apparent meaning or the subliminal meaning, or we expected to know the internal subliminal meaning without knowing the apparent meaning, in whichever way you look at it, لم نخاطب بما بينا في الحق. Then according to them, we're not being addressed with that which clarifies the truth. ولا عرفنا أن مدول هذا الخطاب باطل وكفر. Nor do we uh, say that the uh, the uh, ramification of the speech is falsehood and kufr. And then he goes on to basically negate everything related to the concept of tafweed. وحقيقة قول هؤلاء في المخاطب لنا أنه لم يبين الحق ولا أوضحه مع أمره لنا أن نعتقده. So according to them, those who uh, this follow this tafweed mentality of Ibn Hajar and others, according to them, that the Quran did not clarify the truth for, for us, nor did it make it evident, even though it commanded us to believe in it. وأن ما خطبنا به وأمرنا باتباعه والرد إليه لم يبين به, لم يبين به الحق ولا كشف. And that what we are addressed with and what we were commanded to refer to and resort to and use as a reference actually did not explain the truth to us, nor did it clarify it. Rather, according to them, the apparentness of the Quran guides you or denotes disbelief and falsehood. Or it wants us to understand something of the Quran or to understand something that there's no evidence for it. وَهَذَا كُلُّهُ مِمَّا يُعْلَمْ بِالْإِطْطِرَارِ تَنْزِيهُ اللَّهِ تَنْزِيهُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ عَنْهِ تَنْزِيهُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ عَنْهِ And this is something that we all know. أو تنزيهو أيوة نعم because it comes after the back. مجرور. This is something that we know by necessity that we should do تنزيه meaning we should uh, uh, raise or, or praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above. To, to perfect Allah's... Uh, uh, I, 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 the word tanzi is skipping my mind. Is basically to uh, eliminate any negativity or any deficiency to Allah. Aywa. To negate any deficiency to Allah and the Messenger. And this is, sta- this is similar to the statements of the people of distortion and the people of 
uh, denial, people of Ilhad, the people of, of atheism. Yani when you do Ilhad uh, in, in the Quran and the Sunnah by, by uh, diverting away from their meanings. إِلَىٰ أَنْ قَالْ فَتَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ قَوْلَ أَهْلِ التَّفْوِيدِ الذين يزعمون أنه متابعون متابعون للسنة والسلف من شر أقوال أهل البدع والحد. So it becomes clear that the statements of the people of Tafwid who are claiming to be the followers of the Sunnah and the Salaf are from among the most evil statements of the people of innovation and the people of disbelief. <laughs> the end of the speech of Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So that right there should put an end to this uh, uh, nonsense that you're putting forward. A meaning to Allah. This is a refutation to the Salafis when they say that when the, the scholars of the past used to leave it to Allah, because tafwil is to leave it to Allah, they say, what are they leaving to Allah? We said, and the majority of the scholars, and you know, all the scholars of the, the four madhabs have said, the majority of the scholars, all of the scholars of the four madhab, look at the lie. That it means to leave the meaning to Allah. Because if I said hand, and I tell you it's not a physical body part, then you don't know what the hand means, and you don't know what it means. And the same thing with eye, the same thing with face, the same thing with, you don't know what it means, so we leave the meaning to Allah. However, the Salafis say no, they established the meaning. Yes. In other words, they believed it was a body part. How big was it? Why does it say, why do you have to say a body part? Why are you adding words that Allah didn't use, the Prophet didn't use? Why? Why are you using the term body part when you don't have any evidence for it? Why can't you affirm what Allah affirmed for himself with the meaning that Allah intended without doing the modality of it and just leaving it like that. Why do you have to resemble Allah to his creation again? Yeah, what mushabbi. size was it? How heavy was it? Look, look at, it look, look. look at the tashbih. Look, look at the tashbih. That's all what they said, we leave to Allah. And they said, we leave the modality to Allah. We leave the knowledge of how to Allah. That's what they, they, that's what they claim. However, Imam Ibn Hajj rahimahullah, and along with the rest of the said, tendencies. we leave the meaning to Allah. And this is the same thing that Imam Ibn Qudama, who was a Hanbali scholar and one of the most recent. Again, Ibn Qudama, Ibn Hajar, all of these are convenient. Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, known for being what? He's known as Shaykh al-Islam. Shaykh al-Islam is telling you that this is uh, from the worst statements of Ahlul Bid'a wal Ilhad to do the statements of Tafweed. So stop saying all the scholars. Respected Hanbali scholars as well. This is also what he said. When he said, and he was a Hanbali. Bila kafin, wala ma'na. Without a modality and without a meaning. Because we leave the meaning to Allah. We don't know the meaning, right? Anyhow. And then I just wanted to talk a little bit in general about Ibn Uthaymin over here. There's a statement in his book where he says that those who do tafwil, what I just mentioned right now, leaving the meaning to Allah, he says that uh, they're not able to refute people who claim bad things about Allah. So if somebody makes a, a, a lie against Allah or something and they say something bad, we're not going to be able to refute that person because we say, oh, we don't know the meaning. So if you say you don't know the meaning, then you can't refute this. You know, it could be possible that there's this bad meaning as well. This is what he's saying. And that's a very powerful argument. This is a complete misunderstanding of what the tafweed is. Tafweed is to lead the meaning <laughs> to Allah whilst negating. Sheikh Murat Amin didn't understand tafweed. You do, Mr. 16-year-old. Whilst negating tashbih, likeness to Allah, and negating uh, kaifiya, immodality. So when you negate these two things, video edited again because Allah alam what he's blundering there. And there's nothing bad that you can kind of attribute to, to, to uh, those attributes like that. So you negate any type of deficiency for Allah whilst affirming the, 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 the wording that came in the Quran and you don't talk about what it means and you don't talk about anything like that. So You make no sense. You affirm but you don't talk about what it means. So you, we are supposed to accept the Quran but we don't know what the Quran means. So you say in the Quran is not This book there's no doubt in it. And you're negating in the Quran, this Quran, guys, is to that which is most straight, that's what you're negating? Really? Oh, that's what tafweed really is. But he's claiming that tafweed is something completely different. That, I, don't know, I don't know who does this. Who, who does this tafweed where that he's claiming in this book where you just don't know and you don't negate anything, anything deficient from Allah? If there's something you know, deficient, we negate it. If there's something that contradicts the Quran and Sunnah, we negate it. So this idea is unheard of. And he's just you know, claiming that uh, you know, people. Shaykh Ibn Uthameen doing a tafsir, doing a sharh of the Shaykh Rizab Ibn Taymiyyah that is approved by so many. This statement, by the way, is not just Ibn Uthameen. If you read any of the shuruh of the Al-Aqid al wasitiyah you will find all of the words revolving around the same thing. So uh, claiming that Shaykh Ibn Uthameen, just like those uh, foolish Diobandis, those two clowns from Bradford, he's doing the same thing. You know, they, they get a statement from Shaykh Ibn Baz, they make you feel that Ibn Baz is the first one to say this, Ibn Uthameen is the first one to say that. All lies, these people live off lies, they base their deen on lies, they are just as bad as the Shia when it comes to lying. Pathetic. We'll just say that. And then he brings a statement where some of the scholars have said the path of the Salaf is safer and the path of those who came after the Salaf is more, you know, wise. And he says that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah responds to this statement. He says, It's some idiots said this. 
referring to the great scholars of the past who have said this statement, and it's only because they don't know. And then Ibn Uthaymin has his little commentary there where he says, That yeah, Ibn Taymiyyah is right, that the one who says that is an idiot. Like, anyway, it comes from their misunderstanding of why that statement exists to begin with. Why is it moral? Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah had a misunderstanding, Ibn Qayyim had a misunderstanding, Imam Ahmad had a misunderstanding, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Abu Hanifa, all, all of them had a misunderstanding. You, the bright one, got the understanding. Wise to follow interpretation later on, whereas it's safer to stay away from interpreting such and such verses uh, of the Quran or attributes or whatnot earlier on. Why is that the case? During the time of the Salaf, it was easier for them to just believe it and close their eyes to it and that's it. When the, the people later on came and you had to translate the Quran into different languages, what happens if I translate the word hand, the word yad, into the word hand? It makes a person who speaks English. But you've been doing that the whole time. Think Allah has a hand, a literal hand. And you tell him a non-literal hand and he's thinking, well, what the heck is a non-literal hand? We don't say non-literal hand. What's a non-literal hand? And he can't figure it out. Right? What's and, it and it makes the person confused that oh these Muslims have believe in a God. Nobody's confused. Are you trying to justify the statement? So you're trying to justify the statement that the uh, the the alamu ahkam, the way of the khalaf is alamu ahkam. No one gets confused. You know how many people become Muslims and have no problem with this issue? I don't know if you're even involved in da'wah at all. Do you know how, how many reverts I personally know? who came from Christianity, Juda not Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever, into Islam, and they have absolutely no problem with this issue. You want to save the lay person? They don't have a problem. We don't have a problem with this. You know how many reverts believe exactly what we teach? And they, 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 they're not getting confused? God that has a face, a hand, a this, a that, a shin. Um, he has, he has all these, these things, things, but none of them are literal. literal. So then what in the world does it mean? And it gets them confused. So why is it wiser to interpret? Because as the generations left and went farther away from the Prophet ﷺ, Look at the philosophy, man. <laughs> people became more incapable of understanding these deeper science sort of attributes of Allah. And so You're an example of someone who's incapable of understanding. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So yeah, that applies to you. So look at this now. People now, as يعني, Islam is only good in the beginning. The Quran and the Sunnah were only good in the beginning when people were smart. Now that people are stupid, the Quran and Sunnah are not enough anymore. We have to come and fix the deen of Allah. We have to, uh, we have to supplement and complement the deen of Allah with additional external... Oh, they just happen to be from Plato and Aristotle philosophies for us to complete the deen and be able to give da'wah. Otherwise, the lay people will be confused. You know that you just destroyed your entire da'wah with this statement of yours and I just destroyed you with this particular statement of mine? I destroyed your argument. I'm not, it's not a personal between me and you. Meaning the truth destroyed the falsehood that you're presenting. You just literally just said, you just insinuated in the most clear way that the Quran and the Sunnah are only sufficient for the early generations and afterwards you need something else to be innovated into the deen to, to save the people from the problem of disbelief and from not understanding the name and attributes of Allah. Unbelievable. You are more careful than Allah and His Messenger. You are more careful than Allah and His Messenger You want to save the lay person. Because it became less and less common for the lay person to be knowledgeable enough to understand these types of things and to understand what uh, you know the difference between an attribute is and a body part and why the attribute, uh, why the attribute, you know, things like basically all the details to do with aqidah. The lay person doesn't go into it. So to save the lay person from believing that Allah is a physical body, the person who just picks up the Quran and starts reading a translation, a lay person, he doesn't, you know, he, he's... he's uh, uh, so if you read the Quran on your own, it's a problem. If you read the Quran and understand from the Quran exactly what Allah said, then you're misguided. You need an Ash'ari Maturidi scholar to break it down for you. Using philosophy. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah al azim illa Allah al sitting in the masjid and he just wants to read the translation of Allah's word. And he reads the book and he sees that Allah has a hand and he starts to think Allah has a literal hand. To save him from this wrong aqidah and this wrong uh, belief, we go to a Wrong aqidah that you get from reading the Quran. What are you saying, Omar? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? You get the wrong aqidah by reading the Quran. By the way, even if he's not reading English translation, if you get an Arab, a Christian Arab, a Christian who once believed that Jesus uh, was Allah or Jesus was the son of Allah. If he reads the Quran, he's going to get the same meaning. He's going to read Wajh. He's going to read uh, 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 Ayun. He's going to read Ayn. He's going to read, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, uh, Subhanallah, the Yad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to read all of those. Yawma yukshafu an saq. He's going to get the same meaning. So not just uh, 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 
an English speaker, even an Arabic speaker will get the false aqeedah according to you by this merely reading of the book of Allah. So you need to save them. Interpretation, which is permissible. And we're going to get to that in a different video. It's totally permissible to do, uh, to do um, interpretation when there's a need. Uh, uh, it's totally permissible to do interpretation when there's a need. Which means that the, to them the need is all the names and attributes of Allah. They will do ta'wil, not interpretation. It's actually misinterpretation. Um, anyways, so to save him from falling into tashbih of Allah with his creation. You're so kind. He says, you're so sweet. Of those who came later of interpreting is more wise. Why is it wise? To save the people. Oh, but it's safer cute. To avoid cute, that cute. if you're somebody who's capable. That's why as the time of the Salaf, closer to the time of the Salaf, they were, you know, they were closer to the religion. They had more knowledge. They had more understanding, etc. Those people were able to understand. So anyhow, the one who said this statement is not an idiot. And he's actually a very wise person who said this. So anyhow, that was that. And then he it's mentions over here that... Uh, even if he's not an idiot, it's an idiotic statement. And he is an idiot. FYI. And sorry, you're an idiot for believing it. And supporting it and propagating it and for even giving this example. Oh, you read the Quran, you're going to get the idea that Allah is like his creation. So let me uh, save you. D d don't read the Quran on your own. Uh, let me do a, a misinterpretation of the ayat and then tell you this is what they mean. Oh, am I going to quote the Sahaba? No. Am I going to quote the Tabi'een? No. Am I going to quote the Atba'u Tabi'een? No. Who am I going to quote? Oh, uh, well, uh, somebody who came hundreds of years after. And thought of a better way to explain them. Yeah. Mm, nice. Beautiful. Uh, Ash'aris and Maturidis are not considered from Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is what Ibn Uthaymin is saying. Remember what I said about the hadith before where they try to create division amongst what Ahlus Sunnah is? And Aww. all the way up until Ibn Abdul Wahab's time, uh, when, you know, when I showed you those quotes before, that it, when the term Ahlus Sunnah is used, it's referring to the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. This was what Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah is. Right? right? And Ibn Uthaymin is saying, saying no. no. Ash'aris, Maturidis, they're not part of Ahlus Sunnah. You're not Why? Habibi. Even if you beg because for it. about the Salaf. He says that the Salaf. He lies. The Salaf, he lies. Uh, the, he's, the, he's saying now that Ibn Uthaymin lies about the Salaf and the Salaf is lied about the Prophet and the Sahaba and the Salaf. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I quoted the, the Sahaba for you. Salaf and the Prophet and the Sahaba, they all used to believe in uh, and affirm the attributes of Allah ala haqiqatiha. Yes. On its literal. Remember yes. what Imam Ibn Hajar rahmanullah says? Those who... Uh, yeah, no. Quote it. Imam Ibn Hajar 852 years. <laughs> Quote Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani who had Ash'ari uh, tendencies 852 years after the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba and say his statement is c covers all of them. لا مرة ممتاز أنت رائع. Take things on its literal and apparent. Those are the people who you know. The, the, the Mushabbiha they claim they claim to follow the Quran and Sunnah better than everyone else. They say, look, we're following the literal of the Quran. The Quran said it. The Quran said it. Ya Akhi, the Quran said it. This is why they're a replica of, of of that same sect from before. There's no difference to them. Anyhow, he says على حقيقتها. We take it on its literal. Okay. And then he says ولهذا يخطئ من يقول إن أهل السنة والجماعة ثلاثة. صح. He says for this reason. The one who says that Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah is three, the Ash'aris, the Maturidis, and the, uh, the, ha the Hanbalis, the Salafis, right? Whoever says that is mistaken. Why are you lying saying Hanbalis? What does he say? He doesn't say Hanbalis. He says Salafiyun. Salafiyun, Ash'ariyun, Maturidiyun. He said Salafis, Ash'aris, and Maturidis. Why are you saying Hanbalis, Ya Kaddab? Why do, you keep, why do you keep deceiving the people by adding the word Hanbali every time you can to make, it, to make that distinction? Ya you don't have any shame? No difference to them. Anyhow, he says, Ala haqiqatiha. The Ahlul Jama'ah is three. The Ash'ari is for the Salafi, new Salafi movement. And before, uh, you know, they started saying things like, we take it on its literal, and Allah is literally in a place. Statements that are, you know, that, that lead to, uh, you know, bid'ah, saying that Allah has a face, and it's an image, etc. These types of things. So this is some of the inconsistencies of the Salafi madhab, of the Salafis of today, the Salafi sect. What I've done in this video, what I've done in this video, and I'm going to try and recap it a little bit before I close this off. What I've done in this video is I started off by explaining the importance of understanding the Quran and the okay. different things. I'm going to skip all this because he just repeats the things that I've already refuted. I'm going to actually end this video by saying that Allah is... I'm going to end this video by telling you the aqidah of Abi Hassan al-Ash'ari, rahimahullah. The aqidah of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, which... which all this, <laughs> this whole sect is based on. Uh, we have to speak about the mu'taqad uh, of the Imam ala wajjil amana. And we should avoid adding or deleting anything of that. And we have to refer to his latest, the last uh, uh, position he held based on the book Al-Ibana fi Usul al diyana that he authored. And he said, Rahimahullah, regarding the sifat in the book. So Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari, who was once a Mu'tazili, 
Then he became the founder of the Ash'ari Madhab, which people followed him on. Then he himself abandoned and repented from and declared that to the whole world in his book. He said, Rahimahullah, وَقَدْ قَالَفَ الْمُعْتَزِلَةُ لِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَإِجْمَاعِ الصَّحَابَةِ وَدَفَعُوا أَيِّ أَيِّنْ يَكُونْ لِلَّهِ وَجْمَعَ قَوْلِهِ the Mu'tazila have, have opposed the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the consensus of the Sahaba and they negated that Allah Azza wa Jal has a face in spite of Allah saying وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَكْرَامِ and the face of your Lord full of, of honor and nobility remains وَأَنْكَرُوا أَنْ يَكُونَ لِلَّهِ يَدَانِ and they denied that Allah has two hands مع قوله even though Allah says لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ to the one who I've created with my two hands وَأَنْكَرُوا أَنْ يَكُونَ لِلَّهِ عَيْنَانِ And they deny that Allah has two eyes, even though Allah says, تَجْرِي بِأَعْيُنِنَا It runs under our eyes. وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَى عَيْنِ That you may be raised under the care of my eye. And we affirm the ayn, and we affirm that it means that Allah Azza wa Jal was taking care of Musa alayhi salam. وَنَفُوا مَا, ما رَوَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنْ قَوْلِ And they denied what the Prophet صلى الله وسلم declared in his hadith إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَنْزِلُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا That Allah descends to the lowest heaven. وَقَوْلُنَا لِهَاؤُلَاءِ وَالَّذِي, والذي بِهِ نَقُولُ وَدِيَنَتُنَا أَلَّتِي بِهَا نَدِينَ And what we say to those people, and the statement which we say, and the religion which we, you know, adhere to. التمسكي, التمسكو بكتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم That we hold on tight to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَمَا رُوِيَ عَنَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَأَمَّةِ الْحَدِيثِ وَنَحْنُ بِذَلِكَ مُعْتَصِمُونَ And whatever has been narrated from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Imams of the Hadith, and we hold on tight to that. This is where we have the Isma. وَبِمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ بِنْ حَمْبَلْ نَظَّرَ اللَّهُ وَجَّهُ And what Imam Ahmad was upon, may Allah brighten his face. وَرَفَعَ دَرَجَتَهُ And may Allah raise his uh, degree. لأنه الإمام الفاضل الذي أبان الله به الحق عند ظهور الضلال because he is the noble Imam whom Allah used to bring about and to clarify the truth when misguidance became prevalent وأوضح به المنهاج وقمع به بدع المبتدعين and Allah used him to clarify the methodology and to to demolish the uh, innovation of the innovators وزيغ الزائغين and the deviation of the deviants وشك الشاكين and the doubt of the doubtful ones فرحمة الله عليه من إمام مقدم وكبير uh, and so may Allah have mercy on him of, of what a great Imam that he was and upon all the Imams of the Muslims وجملة قولنا and in, in general we say إن الله تعالى استوى على عرش Allah rose over the throne كما قال تعالى الرحمن على العرش استوى like Allah said the, the merciful rose over the throne وأنه له وأن له وجه بلا كيف that Allah has a face Without the modality. Notice he didn't say bila ma'na like this uh, miskin says. This liar who kept ad adding this bila ma'na to the entire ummah. He is the Abu Hazar Ashari himself telling you bila kaif, not telling you bila ma'na. Which is what we Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe. Kama qala ta'ala wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Wa anna lahu yadan bila kaif. Allah has two hands with no modality. كما قال تعالى بل يداه مبسوطتان rather both of his hands are stretched out وقول تعالى لما خلقت بيدي وأن له عينان and that Allah has two eyes بلا كيف without, without modality كما قال تعالى تجري بأعيننا وأن لله علما كما قال تعالى أنزله بعلم that Allah has knowledge as Allah said he, send it, he revealed it he, he sent it down with his knowledge ونثبت لله القوة and we affirm the power for Allah سبحانه وتعالى كما قال تعالى أولم يروا أن الله الذي خلقهم هو أشد منهم قوة and uh, do, do they not see that Allah who created them is stronger than them in might ونثبت لله السمع والبصر and we affirm for Allah hearing and seeing ولا ننفي كما نفت المعتزلة والجهمية والخوارج and we don't negate and deny like the معتزلة and the جهمية and the خوارج did وَنُدِينُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى بِالْأَبْصَارِ يُرَى بِالْأَبْصَارِ And we believe, it's part of our religion to believe that Allah will be seen with the eyesight. يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ On the day of judgment. كَمَا يُرَى الْقَمَرِ لَيْلَةِ الْبَدْرِ Just like you're able to see the moon, the full moon on the night. In the night, when the full moon is, is evident. وَيَرَاهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers will see Allah, who is a physical being. يَا عُمَر أَمَّا الْكَافِرُونَ فَمَحْجُوبُونَ عَنْهُ As for the disbelievers, they will be veiled from being able to see him. 
المؤمنون في الجنة when the believers will see Allah عز وجل in جنة كما قال تعالى كلا إنهم عن ربهم يوم إذن لمحجوبون the disbelievers will be veiled from Allah on that day وأن موسى عليه السلام وأن موسى عليه السلام سأل الله عز وجل الرؤية في الدنيا and that Musa asked to see Allah in the dunya وأن الله تجلى للجبل فجعله ذكر الله عز وجل الله عز وجل showed himself to the mountain the mountain fell in ruin and according to him Allah is not a physical being فجعله ذكر وأعلم وأعلم بذلك موسى بأنه لا يرى في الدنيا and Allah informed Musa according that he will not be able to see him in the dunya ونصدق جميع الروايات التي رواها أهل النقل من النزول إلى سماء الدنيا and we believe all of the narrations which were narrated by the people of transmitting transmission regarding the descendants the descent of Allah to the uh, سماء الدنيا to the lowest heaven وأن رب تعالى يقول هل من سائل that Allah عز وجل asks he says is there anyone asking this guy tells you it's an angel it's an angel who asks on behalf of Allah so the Prophet ﷺ does not know how to describe Allah does not know how to speak about Allah he has to say something and intend something else. أعوذ بالله من من الزيغ والضلال. وسائر ما نقوله وأثبتوا خلافا لما قالوا على الزيغ والتعطيل. And the rest of what they have said, and we confirm that, we affirm that as in opposition to what the people of deviation and the people of distortion and denial say. ونعول في مختلفنا فيه إلى كتاب الله وسنة نبي وسنة على ونعول في مختلفنا فيه على كتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم and then we refer the matters which we differ on to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وإجماع المسلمين and the consensus of the Muslims ما كان في معنى وإجماع المسلمين ما كان في معنى and what the consensus of the Muslim and that which would be equated to what would be in the Quran and the Sunnah فلا نبتدع في دين الله بدعة لم يأذن الله بها we don't invent and innovate into the dean of Allah an innovation that Allah did not permit ولا نقول على الله ما لا نعلم and we don't say about Allah that which we don't know ونقول إن الله يجيء يوم القيامة we say Allah will come on the day of resurrection كما قال تعالى وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا ثم يقول ونرى مفارقة كل داعية إلى بدعة ومجانبة أهل الأهواء and we see that we should stay away and separate from every call to innovation you Mr. Omar and to avoid and stay away from all the people of desires and I should drop the mic because that's enough said that right there is Abu Hassan Al-Aj'ari, which your whole name and your whole aqidah and your whole paradigm is based on. And he himself is telling you that you are tripping, my man. And all of you Ash'aris are tripping. And this video, inshallah ta'ala, bi'idhnillah, will be your destruction until yawm al-qiyamah. May Allah consider it a type of ilmun yuntafa'u bih. Knowledge that the people will benefit from and sadaqa jariya a recurrent charity because I am in dire need of Allah's mercy and Allah's reward. Hada wallahu alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala bin Muhammad subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ulaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.